competitive one this season, not Premiership. So the field of players they would have to prepare for is like a lot less expectable, right? You don't necessarily know everybody you're going to play in Div 1 because there's always newcomers coming in mm -hmm. from Div 2 and below. So you're not, you need to be prepared for anything. And if there's a good sniper just suddenly in Div 1, then you need to be ready for that. So I would imagine they have some experience against that sort of play. And obviously, like I said, crayon sniper is a thing. They certainly wouldn't be too afraid to try even like more varied things by and that sort of thing to try to deal with it. Now, we did just get word of the uh, map pick process uh, finishing up. And I guess part of that process is going to be our second map process. We're going to start on Sunshine, and then Granary will be our final one. You mentioned Badlands. Uh, map will, match will be starting soon. So, Eepley, uh, a final prediction from you. Um, I think this is probably going to go into maps to Ascent, honestly. Sunshine and Process, they're, they're just too, too scout heavy in the finish. Power combo is just going to pound. Uh, dumb from you? Yeah, I would think so too. Those all strike me as maps that Ascent is really good at. Okay. Uh, excellent. Well, we're going to throw it over to our casters right now. Plunk and a Disky. Take it away, guys, on our first map here, Sunshine. We're back. Hello. Uh, it's me and a Disky. Uh, we're watching Big Block and Ascent on Sunshine. It's been, you know, you seen the game yesterday, it was a 4-3 descent, so, you know, they, they can, you know, go against them. So, it's see how it goes. Don't know whether, I, I think this is still a uh, setup time. It, it looks like it's just going to get a reset. A reset? Oh, feels bad, man. Hi. Hi. We're on camera again. We Hi, camera. This was backup. So, we've, we've seen these, these teams match up in a group stage just before. Uh, but they've played Snakewater, uh, one of the weakest maps of Ascent, uh, as, as I know. And it was a very close game. Uh, I'm expecting a similar matchup today. Yeah, I mean, as soon as we said it's not happening, it's now happening and they've resetted. And we're on Domo right now, quick as hell. Mac is actually pushing from Flowers though, so let's see how this one goes. We see just sticky spam going on right now. Domo just got the team on him. Yeah, we do see a big bomb coming out. Mac going down left. Trade Domo, both demos are gone side. Connor going down. Zebo, what is he up to? Arms cleaning up the damage as well. It's just not looking a good mid from both teams. They're losing players left and center. It's only the two scouts, Arms and Kredu. Taking a fight, Arms going down. Ah, it's two scouts right now. And oh my, Ah, what are you doing? Get off what you're doing. Stop the Gregs, please. That was a huge scrappy fight from both of the teams. Bodies just dying left and right around the red Tetris. But Ah coming in strong towards the end, just getting a 2k, securing the mid for his team. Ascent uh, seemed very disorganized in that. But it looks like we'll be pausing again. Again? Medic. A restart, question mark? Is that another round or? Okay. Pause doesn't. Guys, my sister's running the land. She's not really good at this. This is the first time. <laughs> she's just she's just getting new at this whole thing. You know, just... Yeah, please be nice. Yeah. I'm trying to see what's going on from the chat. Uh, is a uh, big block uh, using very naughty words to the ascent players. Oh, it looks like whoever is dead can. Yeah, there is a uh, wrong config on the server, and they are gonna have to restart. Kind of cringe though. I'm wondering if it's gonna go, if they're gonna let uh, big blocks have to mid, because you know that was a that was a normal mid fight. They've they've won it. If they, I would be surprised if if the round just got reset. Right, right in there, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's no point of replaying a mid. I mean, maybe it is, it is the first mid of, you know, a best of three. Maybe they want to get all the, you know, this is the, the weirdest tactical pause they can get. It's just taunting at mid. So that's one way to do it. But, you know, if they don't, if they need to do the mid again, a center going to need, you know, rethink their strategy for that. That was a very chaotic mid from, from a cent because they just went balls deep and basically and just left corner unwatched and uh, it was one of the uh, one of the big block soldiers just sneaking through over and getting easily on Connor he was just being alone and they, ju they just let their medic pretty much unwatch the entire mid and I don't think that's gonna work against especially teams like big blocks they seem to be playing acro as well so your medic is gonna go down if you if you're not watching after him yeah and as I said as you know, I said really are an aggro team as I deeply said the some are kind of un uncoordinated right now, so if big bloke are aggressive and you know they're being out aggroed by big bloke, then they have cohesion. It's just going to be a downfall, I suppose. Oh, if they oh if they pause the pregame, pregame pause. There we go. 
I think they've got mid. I don't know. What are they actually up to? Okay, so it looks like Ascend is going to forfeit mid. And we are going to be starting soon, hopefully. The config is still being changed. Land, by speak. the way. Yeah, uh, not the best start to <laughs> the second upper bracket. You know, we were mentioning that we want to catch up to the schedule, and it looks like, you know, it's uh, there. there is always something that's going to happen at LAN. You, this you is can't LAN. be ready for everything. You never catch up to a schedule at LAN. Never. Especially in Somnia. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, 65 LANs, by the way. 65 LANs. 65 LANs. One person responsible for the servers. What can you do? So, again, that's my sister. What have I said? Oh, I'm so sorry, man. She's a Minecraft server admin. <laughs> This is the first time doing TF2, guys. Be nice. Yeah. <laughs> They're not even doing it anymore. So there's not really much to literally talk about other than taunting players and sticky jumping. Yeah, we see Piggles on a sticky jumper just jumping around the map. Probably just scouting out spots. Ah, man. You find those wall bugs on Sunshine, you know. For my, my med sauce. So nah, yeah. Piggles is weird. I love him, though. What, so how long is this going to take? It looks like they're changing the time limit back to 30, and it's just going to be a free mid fight. Well, I owe she's joined the server, so the dad's in the server. He'll the tell dad's them in the server. He'll, he'll, he'll get them right. He'll discipline them. Oh, Kelvin question mark? Oh, well, that's one way to do it. So how do you think this is going to go? I think Sunshine's definitely going to go to Ascent. Like, it, it, it's very well known that Ascent is really good at this map. Uh, but the other map being, what was the other Process. Map? Process. Uh, I, I think Process can go either way. Uh, it's just very unlucky that Cranary is not going to be the second map, and it's going to be a decider. Because I feel like on Cranary, uh, Big Pokes could actually pull an upset. But Process is one of those maps, if you just have, you know, scouts on a beam, they're just going to clean everything up at the end of the day. It's definitely the strongest scout map. Well, you did see Ascent EU tie with Ascent NA on Sunshine last time we casted them. Yeah, but Sunshine is very yeah. notoriously known for being an American map at the same time, right? That's what, yeah. In etf 2 all map pool, we have the Sunshine going out and in and out and in. It, it, it's never been just settled. I mean, for the past couple of seasons, it, it was, but it, it was going out and in of the map pool, left and right. But in America, I think they're just playing Sunshine all the time, basically. Yeah, I mean, Americans don't really like change forehead. That's true. Unless, you know, the lake dies because uh, no one plays, because the first place invite team is uh, Dodgers. Sent in a best team, by the way. Oh, yeah, a Sent in a best team. That's why they're here, you know, yeah, they're here to re represent. Mm -hmm. Here to represent, and they're smart enough to have a fundraiser. Unlike other gamers in the North American community, no names are being dropped. But you know, I'm just, just saying. I think we know where you're getting with. They, they like the color green, okay? Green and black and coheed. <laughs> it's very specific. <laughs> we, we are going to we are going to deep with this. Uh, am I? <laughs> if I if I if I be any more vague, I'm pretty. To be honest, I'm not even being vague. I'm surprised the game has not gone live by this, by this point. It looks like everything is ready on the server, but we just see people chatting. I love talkament chat, don't you? Oh yeah. Is this talkament or tournament? To be honest, talkament. Next up is going to be a radio cast. <laughs> We're just going to do, you know, podcasts, just talking yes, about yeah. the game without actually showing the gameplay. <laughs> I65 podcast. That's what the grand finals is going to be. It's going to be two or delay, but just uh, podcasting. Just play BYFC. What are they actually doing? They're just cutting a bit. They're not actually doing it. Fine. I just want to pick a player and just talk <laughs> about him for a bit while we are waiting. Uh, Credo. Credo. The Finnish aimbot, as they call him. The Kovac Extraordinaire. Oh, yeah, I forgot they're sponsored by Kovac now. So the first two maps that we are playing are basically the best sniper maps in the map pool. We ha you have Sunshine with these insane sniper sidelines, especially on mid. And Process as well, which is a very open map. And it looks like we are going finally live. 
yeah, they're probably just going to... They said they're going to fall front mid, so... The rollout's going to be pretty... Yeah, good. we see Domo just walk into mid, basically. He's a good man. Is he doing the Luma? The control point has been no, contested. I mean, Matt can do the Luma. He's got no... I mean, they don't have any time to lose. They're just going to take mid right off them. Not much to do. No traps have been set. I would be able to say that, but Matt's bad. I don't want to... It looks like a sentence yeah, just going, going deep into mid, right after they finish capping. Yeah, Matt. They don't want to give this up easily. Yeah, it's... It looks like they're just taking it right back to them. Am on the soldier, cleans him up. Aeon going down, he's going to chase the scouts. Soldier's bombing in, they're going to need to get out of the castle. Both scouts are weak, Am's getting Zodiac now. Soldier's bombing into the medic. Oh, that was Connor so just survived. No, Pegel's just surviving, so no, it was Connor. Am. Connor survived on barely. Maybe 20, 30 HP and left, just barely misses his last platform. It was very close. But it looks like they gave up the mid, you know, like nice boys they are. But instantly, as soon as the mid was cap, they just flooded in and uh, just bullied. They, so like, up they also have Zodiac Sniper right now and NG. Arms is in, he's on Arms is super deep. Yeah, right now. Polygon jumped in, he's in dungeon, he's gonna need to get out though. Arms, um, he's taking his way in. The nice wee chip shot, they used Uber. Piggles does have a slightly better Uber, but he used later, so they can probably chase them out in a second maybe. But they do have a gun there, but mind you, it's only a level one, it's down now. Just spam it out. It looks like Ascent is just gonna trade away, go and just try and rotate, heal up in lobby. We see Arms just alone already. In top right area, just trying to get the chip damage in. Oh, left Polygon. going down. Polygon's getting that. So Arms' little bait kind of work. And everyone's crit on the rest. So much damage, but there is no one to follow it up. Arms is in. Oh, my, he's on. Oh, Connor. It's all by Connor. Well, there you go. There's your. Meanwhile, Arms. Zebo gets an insane air shot on last. Even Big Mac. I've never even seen it. Players are walking on point. Connor's going for the minute. Oh, gets Connor it. He gets it. Cap. What's. Uh, I mean, Connor did something. <laughs> in the last push, he, he yeah. got two kills. I'm pretty sure he's outfragging like half of his team <laughs> on Medic. He's outfragging a lot of the big block. He's very, you know, he's very known for that, just going for these flash fights. You know what? They work though. He's going to be cool and he's frag vid. But Matt going flowers this time. Probably Domo going choke. No, he's going to also flowers. Sticking off the choke right now, waiting for players. Scout taking some chip damage. Soldier taking some damage as well. Paul going on top of Gaffey, going in for that bomb. Doesn't quite hit drop, but there is. Both scouts on, he's going to get down just like that. All the players got that AF with a bomb and left cleaning up as well. What is happening? You can see AF and Cafe taking a fight. It's only Credo up. Arms going down to left right there. There was a crazy mid from left there, but it looks like big blocks are just reading th these mids. Like something that Ascent NA couldn't do yesterday, where they were just falling apart against these Ascent EU mids. It, t today it looks like big blokes are perfectly countering everything that Ascent is doing. Uh, we saw, uh, I think it was Crayon, just jumping into Valley, countering Zebos like late bomb, and then you had two scouts ready in their own Valley just for the, just for the Polygon bomb, and just got him out of the fight straight away. Just like that, we do see Crayon up in his favorite class, Sniper, level two gun up, arms building. It's just kind of waiting for the push in. They do have. But the Uber ad is bundling uh, for the Thieves, they're going to be coming in. Uber using it, they expected the sentry gun, Mac bombing in, sentry go down, Cradio on the heavy as player, they're doing all the damage. It, he took, we have Cradio on snipe, uh, heavy, sorry, Connor going down, that's the heal down, Zebo getting two frags right there, Cradio on the heavy, he's just cleaning up all the stuff, stuck damage right now, Piggle is the only one that left. Alive. I, I've said this yesterday, you, you just gotta respect when Cradio goes to, goes to heavy one when they're holding glass and you know with that Kovacs practice he, his tracking is up on par with maybe quad even better now and it, you just can't really escape the bullets from this minute again left he's also going to be nagging spamming out uh, on patio he's just kind of waiting to see what he can do he's going to jump in they, oh double one so try and get that Zebo getting clear on. I think it was a nice wee small wee shot there but Zebo was 7 HP in fact no Creon no Creon died Zebo lived what? I thought he was going to trade. I thought he was going to trade. Big folks really wanted to refight that, and they just lost Crayon straight away, so they had to give it up. But it looks like it's just going to be a nice, even stalemate between mid and second point. Both teams with their overcharge ready soon. 
Yeah, they're probably just going to try and sack soldiers in, maybe even scouts, just try and get as much damage done as possible. Maybe in a force. I think they're going through Valley right now. I see Max firing off a few steps. He's four scouts and right it's off the It's almost Zodiac. getting pickles. Yeah, he's almost getting them, but Zodak there to help. He's made to need though. And they've got one soldier down. Crayon skip jumps in. He's on Connor, and he couldn't get any rocket off, but left coming in as well, just hitting only one rocket on Connor. Yeah, Connor's it's just wiggling himself out of situations, but uh, Ascent is losing so many players. They're so weak after the Uber. We see Uber exchange here. It looks better for the big boats. Yeah. Oh no, and Connor was caught out. Try to go dungeon and separate for this team. And that's the heels down. You've got a 20 second respawn. But and Big one can on the point. Oh, can he win it? Oh, come on. No, don't be mega cringe. 4 HP, 4 HP gone. No, he's not going to get it. Zodiac's going to get him. Defend the point, Kappa. They're going to rush right in. They have a heavy spawn. And they're almost back up. They're going to bomb in. Matt caught in the corner. Polygon hit near shot on him. Boy. Getting half as well on the splash damage on the wall. The, this push has just been swapped. We have a scout in the point, getting a bit of cap time on. Cradio on heavy still. As you said, respect it. That was such a huge save from the Ascent guys. Especially from their soldiers. Zebo was deep bombing into their combo and Polygon was just cleaning up the frags. It super crisp, nice, rock, nice rockets. Two kills there. Crisp indeed. Uh, but I see, see maybe struggling to try to get out of the uh, second. Or last, sorry. And Big Wolf are just putting the pressure on. They have Uber, they know they have Uber. They're going to a dungeon. Matt bomb in. Big damage in the spawn. Oh, it gets huge. the arms and Domo. Zebo going down as well. They start the pipes on Kedu and they get the point. Big Wolf taking a round on a set of you and that's tying it up. 1-1. One, one. They, I, I'm pretty sure Sen was not ready for that push. They were expecting them to push top left or to uh, far right. But Ubering in straight from lower and jumping your demo so deep and getting two picks right after you pop, so good. Because Sunshine Blast is so hard to push. But when you get two picks straight away, it's night and day difference. There you go, you just proved the key to right. Spam again, Matt. Just a fast demo stuff. You see the left up top of Tetris right now and see what he's up to. Not really much, but a spam. No soldier jumping. Try to get a rock up to him. He loses them, jump at the cafe. Not really much. Crayon going in for the medic. Hits one rocket. Gets some corner like that. Crayon and Arms getting both Crayon and Zodiac. Three players down on blocks. Uh, they're good. I think Arms is chasing. He's going in deep. Going in for Matt. Gets Matt just like that. Connor out. It's. Pickles and Aff are out, so they d still have Uber, but they're going to stay at last, keep it nice and safe. Ascent finally changed her mid. Zebo was playing way more passive with Polygon. They were dealing their jumps, and Zebo was actually not playing from Valley, but went over to the cafe area at the start. But it looks like they just can't defend their medic, and it's just going to be an easy retake from Pickles. Uh, but Pickles gets forced by Zebo. That was a very good jump. Uber's forced, it's going to be 20%, 25 ad. It's not much they can build it. It's just going to be probably another stalemate. Not really stalemate, in fact, probably, never mind stalemate. I see left is jumping in. Can't see it, I'm going to look at your screen. He's on top of Tetris, he's 25 HP. I'm getting him, denying him like that. The, what, the big blokes are walking in, they lost the soldier. The games are okay, disputed. Zebo is down. Zebo just spawned, in fact. Kedu getting Zodiac and Aff, just like that. The cleanup crew, uh, that shouldn't, they shouldn't have done that, should they? Polygon, he's in on Matt. Can he hit the rocket? No, he gets arrowed. Oh no, but it doesn't matter. They're going to go in. Matt hit the pipe on the Polygon. Arms getting back in the end. Or Connor going down, unfortunately, at Crayon. That's such a huge chase, but Zebo's already hiding on last and he's ready to go in with Arms. And he is in. So you see Arms. Zebo is there. He's top HP on the point. Doesn't matter. The scouts have spawned in. They're just going to try and collapse on point. Ah, ah. Kedu is 6 HP, 5 HP, he's going to be 30 HP, he's going to get out, he's not going to take the fight, it's too risky. He's just going to eat the bottle and bail, like at that point when you're alone on the last 6 HP, you can't really do much about a hitscan class. He actually got very lucky to get out of there, but that was super aggressive. And the fact that they got Pegos so late in that fight means that now they're working with a 40% add and pushing into this last, unless big bulks are going to set up, you know, the good old boss on last, it's going to be... An easy round for Ascent, I think. It might be, but they've got the uh, engineer. They got the engineer up, smacking him with a big old metal thing. I don't know that uh, they might be pushing through dungeon. We do see players down there. I don't really know. I think they're just waiting. They have Uber. Arms might be taking energy. We do see that Uber being popped on the demo. Sentry gun going down. Arms is on the point. Going across on the piggles. We do see everyone collapse another the medic. Defended medic. Big whoop. No heels. They need to do something here. Uh, <laughs> 
Sam's completely destroyed there by rockets and stuff like that. Do see Matt getting air shot there by Polygon, getting a clean up as well. They're just going to take us another round. That's what I was saying. I think the level, it was just a level two gun ready on the last. No much other, of, you know, off class. And you, you really want to switch over to heavy uh, when your gun goes down, so you have that extra health pool that you can work with against enemy Uber players. But that was a very nice clean up towards the end uh, by Polygon getting a two or three K there. I think it was a three K. Polygon with rockets, he's hitting them today. He's, he's on his good mood, he's in a good mood. This mid, I would like to see the mid. I see the mid now. Cool. Let's see if Zebel plays the same way. He played, as you said, bomb passively last time. Yeah, he's still waiting. He's kind of just waiting. He knows someone's probably in flowers, maybe. Again, they're playing passive well, passive right back. He jumps up at it, Tetris. He knows where uh, he's going to get jumped down, spammed up, so he's going to suck a rock off. Not looking too good. Slower mid this time, both teams know. And I think we're losing two players right now. D now, Creon, Lev, and Mac going down. But there is a huge chase on Piglos. It was Zebo and Credu just going absolutely ham, just going forward, you know, holding on the W button. Like, ah, tried to go in and get the corner. But now they have full over though. I think they didn't come next on him. I just stupid. So they are getting chased down the ring. That was probably the most passive mid I've ever seen SN EU play. They just had their soldiers sitting. In, in the cafe area, and everyone just playing around this one big blob. And the big mistake from big blokes was that they were just too passive, not jumping into the blob of players. You know, you can just do a double Sully bomb, push over with your demo, and collapse on them. Yeah, they're, they're running aft sniper. They have a sentry gun as well, polygons in the dungeon. Make the bomb. They use Uber, get the sentry done right away. Creon getting Peru, that's Zebel getting. Oh, Piggles and Creon. This might be another round to ascent. Not talking yet. Aff really weak. Matt, no heals on the side of the boat. Uh, big bloke. Damage is coming out. Ascent just needs to stand on the point. Matt's still alive, and that's a white, and that's another round to ascent. They also very questionable last hold. I mean, they now they switch over to heavy as well, so they had, you know, more of classes on last. But Piggles and, and Crayon were just caught out with, with the Uber. They couldn't rotate through the spawn because Domo was sticking up the spawn door. And then they're just stuck on this top, top left area getting cleaned up by, by Ascent Flank. Yeah, uh, Ascent seem to have, uh, they're, they're shaking off their, their aggressiveness. It looks like they're trying to play a bit more passive. And they'll see how they play it just as passive as they did last round. Domo not hitting the pitch stick left, back up in Tetris. He's going in for an uh, aggressive bomb, weak Tetris, or maybe a bait bomb. Looks like it was, it doesn't matter. Zebra going down, left goes down as well. Domo getting Piggles, Piggle going Crayon down. The damage out in this mid, Ascent are on top. Crayon spotting the scoop behind. I think that's a white, what a mid from Ascent. Mac was just so deep and he was not getting shot at at all. It, it, from my point of view, it looked like Ascent completely ignored him and Connor was just dancing around his bombs. And it, Zebo looked like he was very disconnected from his team that mid. But it was good enough distraction, I guess, for, for his team to, to just finish up what he started. But he was just going way too far forward ahead of his team. Again, another last, but Ascent have a nice Uber advantage. Again, Aff, you know, they have a, yeah, Aff back in Sniper. So we on Engineer, we're going to do some Polygon spotted out in Dungeon. The Sentry Gun is down, they have Uber done. Domo going for Matt, hitting the pipe and the stick, connecting them both. Zebo is down, they've lost key players inside the big boat. Piggles is also down, Heavy's down, it's only a soldier with Zodiac left. They're going to do some arms to the fight, and that's another round. Ascent with the aggression. I think literally the last three rounds looked exactly the same. Ascent winning the super slow and super passive mid, and then just rolling into last, you know, getting crucial picks at the start of the, the Uber push into last, and, and just cleaning up the rest of the players. Yeah, it seems like big boat don't really know how to counter it. They seem to be, you know, Kind of confused, Mac bombing in, you know, players left up top. He's they definitely have to change something, doesn't it? Yeah, they're going to need to do something. Let's see if they actually do something. In fact, we do see a soldier bombing in over there, top cafe right now. Get a wee bit of spam off on it, the shot in the shed, sorry. Domo going down first like that, but Piggles is down right off the bat by Zebo. What a pick. There's no heals on the side of Big Bloke right now. But I think Ascent are going to take it back, you know, keep it nice and passive. They know they can hold this. Arms get a little bit too greedy there, pushing on left. Connor dodging and weaving all of these pipes. There is a scout on him, a pipe on him as well. Doesn't matter. He's going to get cleaned up. Credo there on a mat. Not hit the pipes. Connor dodging everything. Credo just, oh my. Connor got run over there basically by everyone on, on the big ball team. 
and just dodging pipes left and right. I don't think Mac did a single point of damage to him. And the only damage that he took was towards the end from left, and that was just an easy one rocket surf. Yeah, that was like 50 damage then. He just avoided it easy peasy. Like, I mean, S4-1, they've got the Uber ad again. It's only 50% this time. So I think they're going to be stacking the points and pushing it. Maybe even just take a lobby rapid like Mac. Nice I mean, why would they say that? This is on so far deep in, in lobby. Yeah, well, I think they'll expect them. It doesn't matter, they're pushing it. <laughs> they're not expecting that. Pick them up, it doesn't matter. Oh, straight away. Yeah, it's not so far. They have half on heavy, though. They kind of learned that they need to res you know, they're going to need to respect the heavy with a Tommy Slab. Center can already re push this probably. They have the players, they have the heals. Kreiru going to, uh, nearly going down, Zach Zebel going down, though. Maybe not going to the push. They maybe try to bit off the more than they can chew. But y y you can tell that big blocks are trying to adapt to these last holds that didn't work before. We had Crayon set up very acro in the lobby, trying to cut off the flank as they are pushing in with their team. And they were just able to hold this top right area from their perspective. And I mean, they lost Pegos straight away because he got focused on like super hard. Your medic's gonna die eventually, unless he's going all the way back to spawn, especially on Sunshine last. But it looks like Ascend is getting ready to repush on this 50% out. They've spotted Sentry, they have a sniper. Again. The Uber's already popped in. Yeah, the Uber's all popped in. Sentry gun down, the pipes on the mag, they're going to need to stick, they're sticking off spawn, pipe on the medic again. Sentry's need to play the point now, they've got. Yeah, they've not really got the use. Everyone's kind of spot up. They're all on the right side, aft, doing the damage Zodiac as well. Domo just getting Zodiac in the end, it's not looking like the way. We do see Domo jump out at the point where the pain train doesn't matter. Aft. Connor is wiggling his way out, and Lev just got very unlucky with his rockets. And oh, but that Uber last push was so weird from a send. They literally only flashed Domo there, and no one else, you know, got a bit of the flash, and everyone else died. And it was just Domo and Connor just sitting alone on top right area, just trying to, you know, do something. But by the time the Uber was over, everyone else on the team was was dead, and now we see. Big folks just pushing on the Uber. Pigles almost dropping with 4 HP. Zebel doing his job right there. I said I'm going to get out. But they but get the Uber off. Yeah, they get the Uber off and they have big ad now and they'll probably take it back in, in fact, which they are. They're going to the Zebel jumping in, right on the Pigles off the bat, doing damage, doesn't matter. He's going to go down, but they're going to use Uber on the side of Ascent. They <laughs> just collapsed in on them. They're all down. Only Aff is alive with Buff and he's just in flowers. Ready? I think he's going to wait for a wee flank. I think he just wants to try and back up to Smith. Maybe he does. Yeah, I think he is. But the Sen is smart enough to, you know, leave Polygon on top of the bell tower. Polygon's up there, but can he get it? I think half might be getting him. He does get him. He's pulled. He's like great up there. Doesn't matter. Sent back in. They never got the back. Just They just delayed or push a wee bit, I suppose. By not much, but, you know. That's not cookies. Ooh. Anyway. And it's just going to be another 40% out for us and EU pushing into this last, you know, as we've probably seen like six times today already. Six times today, but this time, hopefully they're a bit more coordinated and not split up. Like last time, Domo was on the right side, everyone was on the left side, they all just walked, just clapped in on three of them, and they had to back out. Uh, I think they're taking a right side once again, Uber and used, flashed on the arms, and sticking off the sentry, arms clear on the sticks, he's getting capped in on top, no one's doing anything, so much what was that all about? Arms doing some, all the players are just going to need claps on the play, Pickle to stop. Bomb from the Ascent oh. soldiers just jumping into the combo, I think they combined just got a 4k towards the end there, just literally 2 plus 2 rockets combined getting 4k, just from Polygon and Zebo jumping together, getting the heavy medic demo and everyone else. That's crazy good clean up. And it's the same formula Ascent used in the last few times they pushed last, except this time they're a bit more coordinated. Feels good, man. They can Feels do good, stuff. man. And let's see how Ascent do this. Maybe they'll pass it again, maybe not. Seems like they're probably not going to be left as on their cafe room. Okay. Spamming a few things. We do see Zebo jump in. No, it's Polygon, sorry. Polygon going down. Air shot on well. Zebo. Oh, left. What a lad. Greg's Mac, Ah, Piggles, I think Piggles greater than fact, Zodiac and Leth are the only ones alive, not looking too good this mid. I'd be killing him, I'd hit the kill by the Leth is still sneaking up behind. Oh, Kredu spots him. Kredu hit, oh, nice wee rocket there, but Kredu's gonna get the final shot on him. Another wipe. You know, sometimes you are hitting all these directs, but that's why the scout class, you know, it's all about the scout class. I think Leth hit like 
three crazy directs at mid, and I don't think he got a single kill off. Please buff Soldier, please. One point of damage did it. That's the buff. That's what I propose. Or Nerf Scout, one of the two. Mm. But, sent. Another Uber ad, another push into last, and this will be the last round. Domo getting flashed, Juju sticking it. Sticking the sentry, they have a heavy up, going for Matt. Matt taking damage, all of them are at the back of their spawn, missing the pipes. Heavy is really weak, 60 HP, just need to get him, his switches off and spawn. Not looking like the strongest mid, Creon getting Kredu, Aft cleaning up Zebo and Arms. It's only Domo left alive, it wasn't. What was that? <laughs> It, uh, again, Ascend is just dropping players uh, while the Uber is going on. I, I think big big bots just have a really good funk when this Uber comes in. And I think it was two players just dying straight away while Domo was getting single Uber into last again. Yeah, it seems like the flashing is very sporadic. Like, you know, sometimes Ams will be flashed, sometimes we get Domo. But Ascent, no, nine minutes on the clock, Ascent are four rounds up, you know. They this is this is the time where you absolutely have to make something happen. We yeah. we'll see them pushing through the stroke area. Trying have Kredu sniper though. Can he get the scout? Has a 140 body shot him. There's a soldier on uh, Tetris. Doesn't quite get him. He's still in forward spawn. <laughs> the stick, sticking him off. Do a back spawn. Go back on scout. Sent. They still got like 25% Uber. If they're really fast with it, they can take the second point. But I think Ascent is going to try and stay in. They're already on 90%. Yeah, I think they're probably trying to test it to see the stick. Oh, that was nearly. Now, both the teams have Uber now. They're going to try and go for the medic. Left, they can try to corner. Uh, no, corner uses. Going on the demo. The demo split from the combo right now. Can he get him? Misses the rocket. Just flashed on time. Left and done. Oh, <laughs> running out of ammo there. That was so unfortunate. Feels bad, man. That's one thing that you have to watch out for when you're playing Pocket Soldier. You oh, Creon! What is he up to? Doesn't matter. He's going to die. Saying you run out of ammo very easily when you're playing pocket, you know, spamming all these drugs, and then when you're taking a trade, you, you kind of have to be mindful of, of, of your ammo count. Sent, you know, the, the next deals. Oh, Polygon! Hi! Aff in, they're going to need to try and do something now. They do it, they're spawn camping them, it's like Mac getting some spam in the cafe, probably trying to trap them off, they're out of time. Nerf the medic, please. He's just going to take the med right back. And the sentry just runs away. I, I, I mean, that was a fight that they could take. It was a 4v5 fight, you know, these scouts on the beam. But I think at this point, they just want to play it really safe. They just don't want to mess up anything. This is playoffs. This is LAN. You are not going for these, you know, funny plays anymore. Yeah, it's not best of ones anymore. You play everyone half funny PM. But speaking of that, the Ubers have been traded in the ring cafe. Left going in for that big bomb, doesn't quite see anything. Back and choke. Creon still in cafe. He's not going to be doing it. He's like, nah, not the day bag. Nah. So, I think that's, they're probably just going to wait for Uber again. Kredu is in Valley with a soldier. He might take a wee bomb. Everyone from Ascend is moving to this cafe area, and it looks like they just want to take mid straight away like that. But Zebel's behind. Oh, what is happening? The collapse, Polygon, everyone's on them. Damage left, right, and center. Zodiac is the only one alive. Again. Arms and Critic were just picking fights one by one and just taking, you know, the big folks one by one there. And it was just an easy collapse, really. It, it was a very questionable hold of, of mid. I think Pickles got left alone at one point, and he just. As soon as Arms sees, you know, Medic alone with no one protecting him, he's just gonna go for it. Yeah, and Ams baiting him, the force comes off though a little bit. I think that was a pussy pop, but you know, they're gonna need to take on the entire team now with it and over and a heavy. Sentry down, left is down, arms on the heavy, on the medic as well. Can he get this 3k? Gets the 3k! He's on the point now, just like that's a white and that's a sent. First map to them. And that's just a showcase of the finish. Power combo of Credu and 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 Arms there. You see a lot of these fights are initiated by by the soldiers and Polygon and Zebo, but the easy cleanup from Credu and, and Arms always going there. But more from the analyst desk over over there. So take it away, boys. Thanks so much for the uh, commentary there, Adiski and Plunk. And uh, awesome first game as well. Um, you know, the big bloke lands. Uh, they got off to a decent start. Uh, we were talking, you know, in the midst of the match. Seemed like uh, Ascent struggling a little bit on the first couple of mids. Eepley, do you want to extrapolate on that a little bit? 
Yeah, no, it, I feel like so much of the big bloke's success in the kind of first five or six minutes or so really did just come down to like the ascent mids were pretty atrocious. Obviously, like there was the first one and then they yeah. kind of lost it and then like the set kind of repushed and whatever. We then went into like the second mid and they just didn't really have anything like figured out. Their aggression didn't really work. They couldn't really initiate particularly well. It was almost similar to, um, it was one of the Sunshine games yesterday. We saw Ascent play where they kind of, yeah, the soldiers didn't really work it out. Yeah. Um, but I mean, literally the second the Ascent kind of worked out, you know, I, I believe like for, for a few minutes, they basically just said, right, we'll jump straight at us. We'll just shoot you. Like yep. we have really, really solid DM. We'll just deny you and then we'll push forward as a team. And then the second, you know, they started like playing a little bit more chill, not kind of rushing things. You know, Domo could start walking forward. Domo was like absolutely pounding after yeah. that the first like, you know, seven minutes. Both the scouts were just kind of like owning as well. Like yeah. it did just seem like a case of, you know, up until about six minutes in, Ascent were doing better in almost every situation other than the mids. Mm -hmm. And then once they started winning the mids, it was like, you know. I mean, there, there were a few things we, we saw kind of good from uh, Big Bloke Land still, you know. They, they had some ni nice little kind of scrappy fights. They had some nice little last holds. But ultimately, I mean, they, I think they lost about two or three lasts literally just because they would play with their heels and Mac playing to really, really hard rotate the opposite side. But they would rotate so early that the Uber's still up. So Domo would just walk across, just nuke them, like, incredibly easily. And I, I believe it's literally every single last hold where they'd lose Mac in the first 10 seconds, they would just lose the point, right? Just because of how Sunshine works. Now, the uh, casters did mention, um, and obviously the result shows that as well, that the big bloke land, um, those guys could have uh, made some defensive adjustments. Um, Dumb, you know, what's your feeling on that subject? Were there some things that you noticed, you know, kind of, Playing off what Equally said as well, that the big blokes could have uh, made some adjustments to extend this game a little bit longer. Yeah, Ascent was like allowed to just play their game. I think there was one last push that shot it really nicely where they just took the team fight, both teams traded two, and then immediately Ascent repushed again. Both teams traded two again, and then it ended with a scout and, uh, and Connor again taking just a 2v2 on the point, and Connor was the last survivor. And in that sort of situation, uh, Big Block Land just was never ready for that repush to come in, and then and the third one on top of that as well. Ascent just was allowed to take these like second entries into fights time and time again, and Big Block Land needs to be ready for the sudden aggression Ascent is capable of to uh, just stand a chance at all. Yeah, let's take a look at the stats as well. There certainly was some strong performances from the uh, some of the Ascent fraggers, and uh, number-wise, yeah, look at that. Uh, the scouts 26 frags on Ampus, 24 on Kredu. He also having just seven deaths. Um, some thoughts from uh, what you see here, Eplay? Yeah, well, I mean, Domo, as expected, like absolutely pounding out damage, doing such a such an important job for his team, where he's just kind of owning things. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, Ham's in credit between them. They got 50 frags that game, less than 20 deaths combined. And, it, you know, we, we talk about how um, how certain maps are kind of more favored towards scouts and certain maps are kind of more favored towards some of the other classes every now and then. Um, I've heard stories about it. Uh, Sunshine does tend to be, you know, people consider it um, somewhat similar to Process. Process is yeah. really, really heavily scout-centric, and Sunshine being that kind of thing, um, it, it can also be really, really scout-centric. And it did just seem like, you know, it took them a little bit of time to, to get that space from their soldiers. Um, but once they started, you know, having their, their bombs kind of, you know, start working more effectively, once kind of Polygon and Zebesai started making their things work, Crater and Amps just had all the space in the world. They managed to play just aggressive enough to secure the frags, but close enough that they kept Domo alive. And it was just basically kind of perfect, really. They just kept building themselves advantages. Uh, anything you see here, uh, Zum, in, in this set of stats or uh, something from the last set that you'd like to point out? Uh, I think that one that stood out to me was just the demo man stats in general, that uh -huh. the teams just have this like super demo tank style that is not too uncommon these days, but just the extent of it was really impressive here with how much damage both demos took for the team and dealt. As a result, I'm interested to see how the heals would like compare as well with that in the, probably the next screen here. Right, yeah, uh, getting into the medic stats here. And we can see 13 charges over for uh, Connor, which is sort of uh, to be expected considering the uh, the score line and the amount of deaths that we had here. Also something that stands out here to me is average time before using is really, really low in this game. 20 seconds yeah. of Big Block Land and 15 about on Ascent. Just really shows that the moment any of these teams, even Big Block Land, who had much less chances, either of these teams, when they had the chance to go for something, they didn't waste any time to do it. Both fairly aggressive teams. Obviously, Ascend just did it with much greater efficiency and came to those situations, especially out of later mid-fights, a lot more. So, obviously, they had more chances to do it, but ultimately, both teams just really didn't want to get any chance go to waste. 
Now we scratched the surface a little bit of the, uh, on the topic, but yeah, Sunshine and Process, pretty similar maps. Um, Eppley, do you think that there's some key points that uh, a big uh, bloke land could take away from Sunshine here and, ad and um, adapt to a process? I feel like they've got to really look at their mids. Um, you know, Ascent really worked out their mids like, you know, within like the first two. And then from there, they were just winning mid after mid after mid. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like you can play process mid in a similar way. You can go for kind of super high deep soldier bombs. You can go for kind of, you know, aggression over point or kind of, you know, more or less like pick a side if you really want to. Um, it can be fairly similar in, in terms of how you treat it. But ultimately, they need to make sure they're doing something significantly different. If they're just going to try and go forward and be a little bit too one by one, a little bit kind of not quite focused on what they're doing, like Ascent will just like, you know, completely pick them apart. Realistically speaking, we could be seeing from Ascent, and I'd almost quite like to see it. Um, you could see something like super old kind of nerd rage days uh -huh. where you see like a like the sniper to mid. Um, he basically plays in a choke point. You play with both scouts. Obviously, the other side would be on scout. They could play on the rock. They could play like above sewer. You could have one soldier just kind of standing like wherever. Like they could play super, super passive if these big bloke players are just going to keep jumping in one by one. So it's something which they've kind of got to expect. And honestly, against this kind of team, a sense can be feeling confident. If we don't see a sniper mid at any point in this game, I'm going to be incredibly surprised because this is where a sense start practicing their sniping. They start practicing these mids for some of these later teams a little bit later on the day. Yeah, certainly the possibility of a Kratu uh, sniper throws things for a loop a little bit because in that last map, you're like, oh, the scouts play so good from Ascent. Oh, the soldiers play so good from Ascent. Uh, the demo played so good. And now you have this other element thrown in, uh, as well as the fact that you're in a map that is uh, kind of similar. Um, some final thoughts, um, Dom, real quick, as uh, we get ready to jump into process here on what Big Bloke can do. Yeah, ultimately, I would say it's still a really hard matchup. Maps are similar enough that it's going to be a tough one for sure. Uh -huh. Ascent had, like, over the past few seasons, like a roller coaster of experience with process of all. Maybe they catch them on a bad day on, on process specifically. It's not always been the strongest recently, but if they made the adjustments here up to land, then it should be just another really good game for Ascent. Excellent. Well, we are close to uh, getting underway with map two of this matchup between Big Bloke Land and Ascent EU. So we're going to throw it over to our casters. Once again, it is Plunk and Adiski. Hi, we are back. This time on Process, Sunshine's better map, better cousin, better looking cousin, and better playing cousin. Same map, basically. So what do you think, Adiski? What do you think is going to be this map? And an older cousin, uh, as you forgot to mention as well. This yeah. map has been around for ages and it's very favoring towards a sniper game plan and we already see no it was able to switch over to sniper for a second but the teams are already rolling out and what are we looking at at the first mid point? So we're looking at Mac in the first mid and Mac very fast getting two sticks not really connecting any of them I see that any case completely destroyed there by Domo and his sticks they're going to be back out they've lost Mac you know just play it nice and safe you know but Ascent look to be not caring. They're going in. Polygon <laughs> on top of the second spire. Bombs in. Uh, Zebel bombing in. Rockets. Polygon needs to do something. He's not getting in. Zodiac on him. Arm's going to get Zodiac back. It's never mind. Arm's just going in. He's going in hard with Kreiru and doesn't matter. Ascent are falling. They're playing a bit too aggressive. And this is just too scrappy for his own good. This is pretty unheard of from at least the European gameplay. Mac just gets destroyed, and th rightfully so. Big blocks are just going back to second straight away, trying to stabilize. But Ascent just keeps on pushing, losing Connor straight away, basically. Like, he, he was just jumping through choke and just getting pretty much mulched by, by two big blocks soldiers. Uh, but at the end of the day, they chase down Piggles, and they end up with a tiny, tiny Uber advantage. And they get stabilized on mid anyway, so it's not like they lost anything. Yeah, you know, weird for a first mid, or first minute or two, but it might be the uh, set up for the next, uh, you know, couple of hour or so, or half an hour, and left with Insur, he got caught out by the rest of the Ascent team, two of them to upper IT, and Big Bloke look just outside one, they might just not even bother, you know, to get spammed, they're going to get spammed in, Polygon jump, Zebo's going to catch them out in fact, guess Al! Combined with combined with Kurdy, they get a Pegos as well, so now it's gonna be a full Uber at but no one's capping second. Yeah, no one's capping, and it looks like a center here at the spawn camp. Everyone if they get left, it's gonna be a wipe. That's a wipe completely. That's a very dominant round there from Ascent. It's just pure aggression, like not even having Uber just walking through chokes like you know, like I feel like they just wanna show off that they don't fear anyone this one. They've had 
a pretty stuttery start. You know, in the coops they finished fourth seed. Now they are trying to climb the ladder back up and show that they are no, you know, easy business. Yeah, I think they're trying to show their, their true, their true selves. You know, Domo with E three sixty showing off me a wee bit flashy there. Right? Let's see how you do this now. You know, E three sixty and when I'm at this point, they play the game. Looks like big one half there on their right side. Uh, both scouts are coming in. Just spam, spam. Both soldiers jumping in right now. Pickles goes. I think he's cratered or hit the kill bait. Doesn't matter. Greg uh, half and left. Going to get uh, both soldiers right now. Matt got the merit. It's a pipe, doesn't matter. And the soldiers are all bombing in. Everyone's clapped out. Domo's the only one left alive in a scent. It's, again, everyone's all over the place. And they kind of, in this weird area, where they all just kind of bunch up and end up fighting. When you're pushing the far right on, on mids that Big Box did, your medic's gonna die if you just stay there for too long. The scent just saw the opportunity, bomb both of their soldiers in. And, uh,. You can't do anything if you're a Pickles at that point. And they could, they, they did scrap it back. They, they got control over the mid uh, just by pure aggression going corner there. So now we are having a second mid fight here with basically even movers and even players. The left just going in deep straight away. Yeah, goes in deep, but it doesn't get Zodiac. I think uh, Rebel, his polygon went in. Pickles going down, Zodiac down. Bob did work. It's they do have heals on Ascent right now, it is easy to remember, but Ascent are getting half on arms. It's only two up, Kredu and Connor, and I think they're out in fact. Uh, no, oh yeah, Connor's there. Kredu, is it blue? Yeah, he's, he's a blue. What? He's waiting for Piggles. <laughs> but he's not, he didn't choose very smart of hiding spot really. Yeah. Now he's getting caught up by two soldiers. Yeah, he's got he's just gang bang. But I, I think Ascent is just going to be happy with this 50% Ubra as Connor gets out on his own. Yep, Connor now has a nice comfortable advantage. Really comfy. He can do what he wants. But big blocks are just rolling through to choke. They they don't care that it's an Azuber right now and I don't think it's gonna pay out. Yeah, they're gonna need to be used though just to keep the nice and safe. Although Connor now to get his damage so it's wrong. Arms getting half and left. But in sewer, Piggles dodging and weaving. He stayed a lot alive a lot longer than I expected. Arms body blocking a scout, pistol whipping him just like crayon. 34 HP, got enough for a one jump, that's my shot, and Domo gets the final pipe on him. I'm pretty sure I'm just got launched by a sticky <laughs> in, into, into Big Box there in the sewer, and he just hits every shot on, on Pegos, just kills him straight away, and then cleans up Zodiac, but before Zodiac died, he could kill Honor there, so uh, the Ubers are going to be pretty much even, but a sense of during that midpoint. Push them back at the second. We do see left kind of jumping in, get a wee rock up to them. It's actually very surprising that Ascent just gave up on mid like that. It was very even fight there. Yeah, uh, I don't know what's going on. Maybe they have some uh, strategy that they're thinking about. They got the big brain plays, arms main calling, so you never know. Something mental can happen. <laughs> but Mac <laughs> dying to a trap. What looked like to be another try push, Mac just dies in the Al Qaeda area. I, yeah, I think they were trying to bait them in through their, their baiting strat, and look at that, turned out they lost their demo. Then Polygon jumping in. They're going to use. The trade is happening in, in choke from both teams now. I don't think big folks are willing to give up this midpoint, but they kind of have to. It's just overwhelming numbers of, of the red guys on, on mid right now, but we see left just bombing in the deep roads to clean up with Freddy. Yeah, the scouts in Ascent doing some work, doing that Zebo as well. I think there's someone's no, they're not a second, I thought someone was running in a second. They're three down, they're gonna to need to get out here. Someone more was up right. Get out to last. That's second to Ascent now, you know. The Uber is even, so it's gonna be, you know, maybe a dry push. Oh, we know. They're already far right, and they're, they're so deep. Like, the second barrel is capped, and they're already so deep in last. Like, I'm, 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 I'm just walking all over the place with his beam up his back. Not anymore, though. Uh, he's gonna spot up there. He's gonna get one of the soldiers on the left. And demo as well, and that's another round to Ascent, just like that. Ascent is showing that they don't really need an Uber to push, basically, at this point. They they get a pick and then they see an entry and they're just gonna go for it. They really like going for the small advantage, like they're working off there and it's like, even if it's one of their pick, they'll still push in. Domo way faster to mid. 
and Mag. Oh, I think Max. Oh, Max. They're playing on it. Max playing on it. It's a for them. Once again, we have Creon sniper to mid, though. That's an interesting one. He misses the shot on it. Uh, hits the shot on it. Uh, he's been spotted out by uh, Devil right now. Hitting the Kukri out. Doesn't get. Scout, Scout comes back. Helps uh, his fellow soldier out. Uh, but Connor's just left alone. Again. This is a reoccurring thing where everyone's rushing the enemy sniper and they're playing so aggro, but Connor is just left alone. Basically, 1v3 against fragging classes. But. But another thing that we did not notice is that Pigos is on crits. Ooh, cringe creep. Cringe creep. I see that. I mean, they could probably take it right in the last. They're going to take it right in the last. have an engine. So Get a heavy first over the crits, you know. I'm definitely going on the Mac come here. Yeah, the Mac cam. The first sticky is always crucial on demo. You no, got it. No, why are on the Zebel yeah, cam? So. Mac cam, Mac cam, please. Mac cam, please. Mac cam. Uh, they're going to use soon. They're over, we're watching the Zebel cam. Matt cam. What is this happening? Matt cam. Oh, I'll just watch this. SMH. I was watching the. I'm going to watch yours then, right? I'll see how this goes. Hits any second. Oh, 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 oh no. He misses, it. <laughs> he misses the other stickies out. He's just going to try and get the sentry gun still up. Just so they got to dispense. So, for the people who think he goes right now in chat. Mac literally had his first sticky on top of a barrel <laughs> right in front of him. Yeah, it was wrong. He's going for it. Oh. All bit over. <laughs> Left went for a wee meme spoon there. But, uh, you know. Gets cleaned up by Zebo. So Ascend is pushing out of this one area with full bird man. Connor is getting bombed, but rightfully so back into one. It's safe little shape. Yeah, both both down, so there's no you know, sacks. They're, the they're very safe. Just kind of walking a second now. Maybe even taking mid. Left did get four spawns, Creon and he's got his spawn delayed. But Mac is ready to use his crits again, but the Uber is ready for the sun guys as well. Is it being popped? Yep, the Uber has been popped, crit popped as well. I think the match is going to be sticky jump. Oh, fucks his head! Oh no. But, you know, the boss of demo, Zebo, a little bit too deep. He does get left, though, he does get left. Zebo trading and then. It looks like Ascend is just gonna leapfrogging into the second point as well. You see, they just have one player advantage and they're just ready to go forward. Yeah, well, I mean, Max is spawned when the spawn is not, they will stop, and I think they're still just uh -huh. they're coming up. Control point has been contested. Take it. There is traps, They've, no one's called, I think. Maybe Connor's. I think Connor's spawned. This Crits Creek play is not really paying off for big bugs because. From what I noticed, they only get to use their crits by the time Ascent already has Uber, which could change right now. But look, again, they're trying to rotate, find a find a spot where to crits from, and by the time they do that, and they're ready to actually use it, Ascent already has Uber, and now they're just stuck holding class. With yeah, they do have a Tommy Slav heavy, so that what crits could be. Oh yeah, Ab is definitely getting crits. Yeah, and it's Uber does come out. The crits also coming out. They're going to pop the heavy rapidly. Like it doesn't matter. The crits is too strong to deal with when you're being flat. Fifty four damage to face the cap. Secret man, throwing a jump. Ab stop top. But the sun is still pulling true. I mean, Mac goes down, Pigos goes down. Everyone's ah. going down, and that's another round. That's right. I couldn't even see what was going on there. I mean, they tried it even before crits there, and it looked like, you know, you have up on 450 HP on a on a heavy weapons guy up top, and there is no way that he can die, and then suddenly all of the blue team is dead. Yeah, suddenly he drops down to 100 HP, drops down somehow. Uh, oh, a Stormo Rapido. Matt, he's, he's going in deep. Spam off Sewer, expecting Matt to come out there. It's nice early damage on, on the Blue Scouts, and that's always going to hurt when you're, when you're trying to get the top area. And we can see Bomb from Polygon had an insane air shot, almost getting a double <laughs> up in the skybox. That was crazy rocket from Polygon. Yeah, Matt is actually pushing a wee bit more aggressively. He hits the air shot on Zebo, completely denying the bomb, and he's merry and cool right there. And I think they're just going to get out of the loft, both soldiers in the mid. They still have Crayon on Sniper, they have a scout way behind. The control point is being captured. I've seen it somewhere, is there? No, it doesn't. I don't know, someone might be. going for a cheeky pick here from Sewer. He is. I don't think the VI is there above it. The med has been used. Both teams are using Uber. Peon is still in. I don't know why we're on that camp. And really weird Uber from both teams right there. Not the best. You know, 
Be on stock, Matt. In the trope, doing damage. There's no one there to really clean it up. Unfortunately, that was quite a bit Sent again, bullied out of their own trope. That was an insanely good push from from Ascent, like really good entry and. But Zebel and Polly just died straight away, and and Domo going down as well. I I'll be surprised if they can hold a second point here. Yeah, with the demo down, Max still up, although quite weak. He's still in trouble. What's going on? I'm sure they're Pedro going down. I'm getting left. Beyond, they take a frag. Uh, Zebel going down. So it's it's not the you know weird what they're doing. They're trying to take defend it, but it's not. Really bad. <laughs> Domo going in for a big play, and he's going to get shut down immediately. Zodiac is down right there. Soldier are in, trying to do damage. He's going for a weave. Pickaxe there, a bit of minecraft action. Dodging and weaving, he gets out. out. How does he get out? How? How does that happen? Oh, come on. Was it out for Zodiac to beat him like five shots in a row? Come yeah. on, let's hit up the view. Oh, yeah. Uber's going to be moved on the side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like just right there, Connor just got it. Why'd you shoot the medic? Mac is so deep. He's he's just in the secret area with Lev and it looks like it's just gonna be another Oh one. he got his people at spawn demos beat and what that was a smart play for That me. was such a good aggressive last push there. I mean it, they they were trading Ubers and just Ubering Mac there, getting credits straight away and in, in like a, a lucky Uber trade scenario and then falling back and then Mac towards the end of the Uber just jumps behind with his soldiers and just makes it pretty much a sandwich push at that point where you have three people pushing from back and three people pushing from front you can't really do much when you're ascent. I think Dolma knows what Max up to in it is the way but the no control damage from each team. Uh, looks like we have both soldiers going in for a high bomb instead of a set. Nebo completely going down <laughs> as much as Polygon wanted to he never got it but everyone's collapsing on the side of Big Wolf and the right side it's only a scout it's only Ark and Pig was left five and the both scouts are just going to clean them right up another strong that that was a good pick. You have two solis, you know, just distracting, making the initial damage and drawing attention. Then you have Domo just walking over, getting two kills there, and the rest is up to your scouts. That, that, that that's textbook TFT. There is nothing else you can you can say about that. I don't know what Domo's up to. I think he's built. <laughs> but you know, what? they have Af on sniper. Not the best pick right now. You know, they're not probably going to be using them. But they use in right now, they're not going to use in there. They use in now, they have a heavy. They're just going to try and stick you up as many pathways as possible as the scouts are on the point. Just getting them there. Aft down, Mac down, Piggles down. There's only two up, and that's another round to ascend. As you said, this is that was a textbook round. That was a textbook round. I mean, one mistake that Big Bogues did is that they had like four players in spawn there when holding class. And that's something you don't really want to do because once that uber demo comes through and stickies up your spawn door you are not getting out that easily and they couldn't really contest the point and by the time they started getting cap from the ascent guys then you kind of have to board and you have to go through the carpet of sticky bombs is that an airstorm play on there i pretty sure it was anyway wait stop and, and another big bomb coming for the soldier piggles going down like that it's normal going down unfortunately and it's not looking good for the ascent it looks like the big force has uh, wisened up to their uh, Strategy and the uh, and the left is on the chase, just absolutely destroying arms. Connor thought, oh, he's not going to make it. Oh, he has the kill by yeah, uh, yeah. not giving them the frag. I mean, I'm pretty sure it comes to us. Yeah, but you know, not not a frag. frag. You're not going to be a but, you know, that was get a hit sound. Yeah. I mean, Big Wolf definitely knew what was going to happen this mid. Double soldier bomb. Every past three rounds, it's been a double soldier bomb. Way better adaptation to these clean mid fights. I mean, it's crappy. I, I don't think I've seen a clean mid fight this game so far. It's always just two or three people staying alive at the end of it. It's, it's never been a clean, clean wipe. But now it looks like a 30% add because Connor dying so late from the mid fight. It looks like they're positioning themselves like on a push from the one area. Yeah, I, I think they may be going one in fact. Oh, they've got the bombs now, but that doesn't matter. They're going straight for Domo. Domo's oh, almost going to fall out. They're going to go out. They're going to go for the now. They're going to go for the sentry gun going down. They're going to tank it for before they get to the run out. Taking Connor's on 20 HP, barely gets through and pops it off. Yeah, just so long. 
flashes like it's a flat as a pop. Hits two, three rockets in the heavy, stuffs it, craters on the ground. Uh, not much Big Boat could have done there, to be honest. I'm surprised. Uh, control point has been contested. Oh, never mind. I, I thought Big Boat said more people up. I, 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 it was a smart decision to give up second as well. I, I thought more people got out. I'm just, just a dumb old boy. He's a bad man. And the sign is just wrong. Uh, I mean, in the Corbin 6 fight, yeah. Big Bolts are not present. They're happy with their own joke area. 12 minutes on the clock, and I think I sent what another uh, 5 minutes, another 5 minutes on them. So we do see Lem jumping in there, and as well as Peon, they're both jumping in. Okay, Corbin gets from left. Oh, what are they up? Peon, 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 going down, Polly going down, and Matt there. Uh, not Connor's just left alone again. Just you know, running away from a mid fight with tail between his legs. But it was really just a good initiating fight uh, from the big folks. You know, they're still so jumping and hitting crazy rockets on the scouts. They're basically making the arms and trading with Bale straight away. But they were out of the fight before it even started. Yeah, now there's, a bit, oh, well, there's going to be a trade right now. Both, both men facing use at the same time. And just about how many flashes left they just last. Switch sides. Yeah, left is the last. But they're going to, oh, the you can cap this out. No one's going to back on it. It's only a one cap. <laughs> and left just single caps <laughs> last. What a play. I, I mean, that was a smart decision to block the second there, but you really have to stay on a point if you're blocking the point. That's that, that's the point of blocking a point. You have to stand on it. And Ascend kind of got too greedy and went for the frags instead. And left was just ready for that. Yeah, and the fact that they never had anyone on last, just waiting. And we see Credu on Cyper this minute. I'm gonna be on the his cam. Oh yes, please. Uh, Domo rolled out. He never had a fast one. Max is getting fast. Let's see how this one goes. Credu cam, please. Domo stand still. We have soldiers bombing in. Cro oh, gets the body shot on uh, Zodiac there. Creon down. And gets the headshot on the medic. Uh, Max only left alive now. That's a wipe. Now that's a clean mid. As I was saying, you don't get many clean mid. Th this match, that was the queen mid. You know, getting the entry pick when you have a sniper instantly pays off because then you're playing a 5v6 and you have that long range kind of damage potential. You can just sit back in your choke and just chip damage the enemy team. Yeah, I mean, did his job though. He got the, he got the medic. Heard he's already peeking rollout. He's peeking. Can he get the medic? Oh, <laughs> Peggles with own. his fast sensitivity <laughs> wiggling out. What's he's like two inches per 360? That doesn't matter, they're going to be using him right now. <laughs> Peter getting spammed out, suffering. But well. Uber's already used some last. Yeah, and it's just a free cap time. Yeah, Brown. exactly. And another headshot coming out from Kedu. Another headshot in the heavy. He, he's going to get another headshot. Maybe, oh, what? Come on. He's oh, never had it. You've ruined it. Well. I'm sorry. That's, a shot. That's another one. There you go. You just have to hit a couple of headshots there. I mean, your, your team's pushing with full Uber out into us. Your job is basically only to just hit two or maybe three headshots there, and it, it should be around secured at that point. Up was on heavy, but unfortunately just stuck in inside a spawn door and couldn't do much. And that was just a clean, very clean round from from Ascent. And, and, and soldier going in fast for Domo right off the bat. Trying to pack, but I think Domo got it. Maybe he's still staying on sniper. Yeah, and oh, oh, left nearly got the mean spoon on it. One of the scouts of Mac doing big damage. On it, but doesn't matter. We see arms going in and polygon with the rockets as well. Matt getting arms. It's uh, this mid. And I'm surprised Big Box are taking this mid. I mean, 3v5. Thanks, Doc. They cap it out, and then I'm pretty sure they are just forced to get out here. Yeah, because Crater's going to be watching Choke now for any of the pesky remaining ones who want to try and push up peak. Uh, maybe not. Maybe he's just kind of jumping about, wasting time. But we know. But we do see left jump in. Any just huge pop. body shot. Yeah. It's yeah. 150 on left. Polygon going to get him. Freon's going to jump on Pedro. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Whips at the pain train trying to get scared of him. Uber on the side of Connor. Matt, Matt taunting. taunting before he dies. Uh, when you see the taunts, you know, before you die, that, that's basically a sign that you're they, they, they pretty much given up. Yeah. Uh, I would give up in that situation to die. Yeah. You know. Uh, Kade is still on Sniper, uh, they never went for corner, so just jumped from top spire, never went for corner. Kade, oh, Minecraft, Minecraft left. Gameplay. Iron Pickaxe. I, I don't think I've seen Kade hit a single headshot that mid, or following up to that. Yeah, he never. Zebo on scout. 
Zebo on Scout just getting absolutely farmed and walled over by Av. I mean, Av was pushing there with like Connor. six self left. Mark, what are these pipes he's hitting? He just hit a pipe on Connor, then Domo. What a... No, this might be the comeback, but there's only seven minutes left. Did anyone order McDonald's? I, I only see Big Mac on my screen right now. Mm. Big Mac, Big Mac ED. No, no follow up ones, I think. The trap didn't do much. I'm on three camps. I'm going to look at you in the morning. So, you know, I don't know what a Sentinel will do here other than wait for the push in. They've got Uber Disad, they've got an Engineer up. Shadu is not on it. He's on Engineer, he's not going in heavy, but he probably will split once and lost it. You know, I think there's going to be another Kex Pacol for us here, probably. You know what I mean? They've got the Pomsen ready, I'm pretty sure as well. They've got everything set up to hold this out. If the gun goes down instantly, the Uber is being popped off. Connor is nowhere near his Uber, but Freddy's already up on a heavy. Unless they start shooting Freddy, Freddy's just going to clean everything up. Left going in deep, he's on his scout, he needs to go for the medic, he's only 60 HP though, he doesn't quite get any rocket connecting with Connor. He's got full Uber now, and everyone in the side of the big block is down, half, and Piggles are going to need to get out and build some Uber. And it looks like Amps and Connor are just deep into this PC area. Oh, they're, going to they're, flank just, them. they're just going to go for the big flank. They're, yeah, all they're going, going all the way behind. This, this, is, a, this is an arm solo Uber, let's go, he's on Mac. Taunts! Taunts. <laughs> They're going to chase the turn through IT in it now. He's on Piggles, 60 damage. Piggles only 60 HP. Soldier coming from behind. Getting but the this is trouble. Away. Connor is in so much trouble. Oh no. And Piggles actually gets a saw towards the end there. They're almost with the Uber charge ready. They can fight the Smith. Oh yeah, the they're. Scouts and Uber? Yeah, they're taking us right back in with the Uber. But oh. the Scouts get dropped. Bruh. That is, Bruh. That is a bra. And they'll just use for nothing basically. Oh no. It looked so good at the start of the fight there. You have two scouts ready to block the point with your Uber ready. But I think that was just Time tiny, been. like a millisecond miss, uh, miss timing where both of the scouts ran in when Piggles was at like 99%. That was just very unfortunate. Also, Arm's getting way too greedy. Yeah, well. As pale. He's just showing up for the camera. Yeah, he's not, he's, it's show match. You know, he's on his upper bracket. I'm a free camp. But it looks like they're, they're in mid again. Um, getting left, he's on it. Domo is just bombing in, hitting pipes and stickies. Polygon is down, everyone is sort of weak. Piggle's down, Ams is on him. Crayon is bombing in. Connor dodging and weaving, everyone's going on him. It doesn't matter. Scent holding. For a second there, it looked like Zebo went to his old, old ways, playing buckets order. He was just standing next to Connor, basically just shooting floor around him. and splashing all of the scouts, soldiers, and other nasty stuff that was coming at him. Um, and left. it's full Brad. I mean, already getting one pick, getting a second pick from Kredigan. It's just going to be a clean push, I feel like. Yeah, but walking in with Uber right now, they're just going to try and keep the points. Get the sentry gun down after. <laughs> oh, the med's been trapped in a corner, can he get it? He's completely ignored the medic, unfortunately, but it doesn't matter. The team is there back, what Piggle down, Cleon down, Zodiac down. Zebo and Kredo are getting tight there by Mac. Uh, this may be a hold, but this is still very doable, yeah. Yeah, it's, oh, this is do No, Mac is. Connor is walking. Connor, forward. let's he doesn't go. Care. Oh. oh, but Big Mac. Big Mac with the easy cleanup there. Uh, on last. I, I mean, Connor was. He had the W key. You have to respect Connor, right? The demo is like 40 HP, and if you hit him with your crossbow, that's basically a GG. and. Mac, I think, just had one sticky and one pipe reloaded, and he hits both of those, basically just saving the rounds straight away, but there's four minutes left and three rounds to go if they want to get anything out of this yeah. fixture. They do as on Sniper, though. Ah, doesn't really get any shots off, two shots. Can he get a scout? Nope, he cannot. Maybe he'll get something like that. No. Oh, he gets oh. Mac! As soon as he's spamming the sticky, there we go. Everyone's kind of in this area again. Barrel, you know, all bundled up. <laughs> it's not been good. Connor is down, Kato's the only one left alive in forward spawn. You know, Big Block just kind of cornered them off and just put them in this little section. Kato going for a hero shot. He's being chased down by Zodiac, doesn't quite get it. That's a mid. That's a mid. I mean, Kredu hitting the shot there was really nice. I mean, Mac went down straight away at the start of the fight. Oh, left. But then there was no one left to protect Connor. And Connor just going down with basically Domo at the same time, and that's how you lose the fight. I mean, it's very nice that uh, Kredu can hit these headshots, but sometimes you just have to protect your medic. 
Lathers, yeah, Lathers a bit too greedy, but they now they have the Uber. They are one soldier down. They're like already that. pushing into last. Yeah. Sentry's probably going to go down within a second here. Maybe not. They're still using. They've used a bit yeah. later. They didn't need to use for one Sentry, but you know, <laughs> oh, poor Matt. They need to go for. They need to go for Connor right now. He's dodging and weaving all the sticks. Hits 52 damage. Doesn't matter. Zebo, Mac taunting in his death one more time. Kade doing 360s. Ah, uh, I think they know that they've won this now. Yeah. I think this is where we're officially. Entering the garbage time, but Sabo ch chases down Pagels. Crayon's in oh, it. Oh, just for the logs. Yeah, Crayon's in forward. Uh, Crayon's in forward spawn. The sniper. He's waiting. He's, he wants. He wants something for the logs. So the most entertaining thing about garbage time oh. is and you is probably gonna be Ams just getting beamed and just walking forward. So I'm just gonna be on an Ams cam from now on. Yeah, him back spawns after that. He hit one good shot. Got the do he got double. I think he got double. He's probably gonna got him. He was a soldier. And they just want to use the super aggro in the choke. Ams is already on Pegos. <laughs> Connor coming in with the saw. Uber chain. No, it's not Uber chain. That's when you have two men at isn't it? That's a pop strap. I don't care. Polygon's in. Gets left. Domo just. You know, oh, Max on Tide Turner. He's got his demo night out. He knows it's garbage time. Let's see what he can up to. He spots, he spots something. He's going for it. He's going for the corner. It's a melee fight. Oh, fortunately, people are there and do not respect the demo night. They just want you know keep their med alive even though they're going to win. CP that got keep, you know? Guys, yeah, remember that competitive league? The oh, medieval competitive league. Yeah, no, fucking competitive league that we don't need. Did that actually happen? Yeah. I'm not joking. Zodiac. Look, Domo just bombing out the spawn, and that's just going to be another round to ascend. You know, it's Darby time, one minute left. One minute left, 16 for Sam. What can you say? It's just very dominant performance towards the end there. Uh, if they give I wish a few pints, I think it can be reversed. It can be six to big bloke, but you know. We still see Big Mac on, on the demo night, you know, enjoying. Enjoying, enjoying himself in the land environment, zero ping, demo night. That's what else do you want? That sounds really good. I want to see one kill, just one kill. He's on. Oh, oh so close. Doesn't get the demo. But Crayons and Snipers, they're, they're just here for a laugh now. He's waiting for the recharge. Oh, it's not going to work. And everyone's just going to go down. for the pistol. What was that damage? Oh, another pickaxe. You mining for diamonds tonight, Polygon. GG's call in chat, 10 seconds left. I mean, pretty expected result from this matchup, you know. Ascent very, very much so expected to win this one. Coming in way stronger and looking way stronger than they did yesterday. We saw a lot of dry pushes coming into basically any point at a game, and just overall a very strong performance. Well, we are not the big brain gamers. The big brain gamers are over there, so we should throw it to the They're big over brain there. gamers who do the analysis. We just show it things. It looks like the big boys are ready now, so we'll hand it over to them. All right, thanks guys. Adiski and Plunk doing a fantastic job on the commentary. And uh, well, yeah, as they mentioned, um, probably the expected results, both of you guys nailing those predictions once again. Getting back into it, you know? Yeah, yeah, into the swing of things. Um, that second map though, we did see some rounds for um, big, uh, big, <laughs> big bloke. I don't know why I, I want to say like, I wanted to say Plunk. No, big plunk. big plunk land. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Every land. He is going big on the casting. But um, let's talk about it a little bit. We'll we'll start with big bloke land. Um, what what were your thoughts there, Dom? Were there some players that uh, you know you wanted to shout out some of their performances or just some encouragement for them as they move forward in the lower bracket? I think at the, be at the beginning they struggled a bit with the aggression from Ascend and eventually they switched to the sniper mid, which is something Ipili said Ascend should probably try with how the mid at the beginning of Sunshine went out. And in the end Ascend did as well, like both teams struggled with each other's aggression at different times mm. and they both busted out the sniper double scout thing for the mid fights at different points in the game. So it was interesting to see both teams try that to just slow down the other team a bit on the mid fights to get a better start into the game. Uh, and Ipili, same question to you. Um, there's some people from Big Bloke that you want to point to and some encouragement you can give them. Yeah, there was there was some good stuff from some of the players. Like it wasn't a case of you know they got like completely rolled. There was some really good things. Specifically, um, Af was really hitting some of his shots. That was like really really impressive. We saw some good things from Mac, but um, ultimately I feel like. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of the success of the Big Bloke team uh, was because Ascent kind of built themselves uh, up an early advantage uh -huh. in terms of rounds. And at that point, I feel like Ascent felt not 
it, it wasn't that they were playing necessarily weird for the sake of playing weird. I felt I feel like Ascent they let them have the opportunity to try some of their weirder stuff. Some of that, some of that right. kind of, you know, more trying to go for like weird backups and trying to go for, you know, like weird, weird, weird recontest, you know. We saw them play at least a few times, a kind of sniper double scout mid. We saw them try like some different things in terms of like last pushes and everything like that. So I feel like um, it wasn't that Big Broke Land got completely annihilated, but it was a scent feeling really, really confident the entire time. I firmly believe that if maybe there'd been like another round or two kind of closer, we would have seen very, very different things from Ascent and they would have been way more kind of willing to uh, to kind of dominate and take things all the way to a win limit. Uh, another quick strat that uh, we saw in that map that I want to just discuss real quick, and, and that was the defensive crits Krieg. Uh, we saw that earlier and um, uh, in, the, in the bus crew uh, versus a, a quarantine match. And I'm um, just curious if that's, you know, something that is going to be a new trend. You know, is that something that you've run into, Dom, where teams are, are doing this defensive crits, you know, figuring out that the Uber is going to get kind of held back and then um, to use it to counter? In this case, it was the heavy weapons guy standing up top. Uh, is that map specific here? Maybe just a few teams playing with it? What are your thoughts on that, Dom? It's definitely not too, too common a thing of all in, uh -huh. in the scene right now. It's just something people like to uh, go to when there's really not much else you can do on last anymore yeah. because in most situations when you're on a disset hold on uh, at last point like this on process there's just little chance for you to actually get your uber back in time when you lost mid with your medic mm -hmm. so you, you need something a gun is helpful a pyro can be helpful depending on the map but sometimes you need that bit more on the crit squeak is just up faster than the normal uber yeah. so it always can just make just that bit of a difference and if you like really have success with it you can just keep that crit going all the way maybe right and just roll off the momentum yeah that's a great point uh, let's take a look at the logs here and uh, see what we can find out about uh, some of the performances of the ascent players they certainly uh, put on a strong showing Oof. ow that's <laughs> yeah that is brutal i'm seeing first of all uh, ams 41 frags credo 37 so i mean we did say good things about the finnish power couple uh, yeah. And turns out, yeah, that is actually quite filthy. That's like, what's that? That's 78 frags between them. That's actually just dumb. That, yeah. Yeah. No, that that's certainly pretty absurd. Uh, I mean, even just kind of the way that the damage numbers are stacked up there, where you got five players from Ascent on top, and then the next five uh, are from Big Bloke, and, the, and then the Medic, you know, which would be expected towards the end. But even then... Connor out damaging uh, yeah, significantly right. out damaging yeah, Piggles as well. Much. Yeah, no, Connor's really on it. He's really got yeah. that DM on today. Yeah, your thoughts, uh, Dom, on what the screen shows us? I mean, it was a fairly one sided affair, right? One of the rounds was uh, a sneaky backup that Ascent just let happen because they were a little bit caught unaware. So, really, there was only one round where Big Bro Plan really had a good last push. And those last pushes were always a lot better for Ascent, a lot better figured out. Whenever they used the U to last, they got so much mileage out of the invincibility. They already had point halfway cap when people started to contest them. So it was just a matter of levels here. Right. And I'm um, not sure if we have the medic logs to look at, if that'll tell us more about um, Connor and Piggles here. And uh, there we are. And uh, actually, yeah, three crits creek out uh, from Piggles, including the one trap. Anything else that either of you would like to point out here? I mean, again, just average time before using being incredibly low. Yeah. Two really aggressive teams going at it. and. Ascent clearly coming out on top every single time of these fights that they were taking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was more or less everything really. It was it was Ascent were in control of the situation. You know, um, th there were these few kind of crits attempts from um, from Big Bloke Land, but realistically there was kind of one which was just a little bit too slow. There was like the defensive one on the heavy, which you kind of mentioned about, and I feel like there is there is some value to that specifically almost only really with the heavy um, on process last because you can't really afford to use crit stickies because you need stickies on the point when you're defending yeah. like that. The heavy could have worked, but ultimately all that happened was, I don't know, like they ended up doing three times damage to a bunch of people who were invulnerable. They kind of got a pick up on, um, on the side, but it seemed like it was more of a desperation spur the moment kind of pickup rather than like, oh yeah, this is something we really planned and we can kind of, you know, do something special with it. So, I mean, you know, shout out for like going for it. Always, you know, if you find yourself running out of ideas, it's much better to come up with something on the spot, but it, it just wasn't something which is uh, enough to rival the power that is the Ascent EU roster. Yeah. And so we're still waiting for word uh, on who Ascent EU's uh, next opponent is going to be. Certainly seems likely that it's going to be Seven, uh, based off of who Seven's opponent is and uh, just the history from that group stage. Um, Dom, do you have any thoughts on what um, Ascent EU might want to you know, sharpen up a little bit further or just kind of generically what was really strong in this uh, matchup that uh, Seven might have to look out for? It's going to be interesting. Last match, obviously, yesterday, what they played was really, really late, but it was close nonetheless. Obviously, 
sure either side can claim they were tired, but in the end, obviously yeah. both sides were. So it's going to be interesting how this game will match up once they're now playing much, much more to the best of their abilities, not being as tired from the full like 12 hours of playing. Yeah. And Ascent had obviously a good start to this. Obviously an easier opponent than Seven will be for sure, mm -hmm. but they, they need to keep the confidence up this one. Uh, any final thoughts from you, um, Ipli, on how Ascent EU uh, is looking as they head into the upper bracket semifinals? I think one thing which is really recurring every game I'm watching from the Ascent EU scouts at this LAN is, I don't know what it is, I don't know if I'm just suddenly noticing it now, but they actually, Ams and Creative, have like the craziest pistol accuracy yeah. I've seen in ages. Like. I'm really enjoying the Kovacs meme, right? 100% really enjoying the meme, but it's actually crazy how much they're hitting. Like, I'm pretty yeah. sure I saw, like, a Kredu pistol at one point do more damage than, like, an enemy heavy. He's literally just, like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how that's, like, possibly working. Maybe it's just, you know, they're really, like, starting to feel at this land, but I really, really think that the, um, the Finnish scouts are, like, really looking on form. The only thing I think they need to be a little bit aware of is not to get overconfident, you know? Mm -hmm. This was a good game, really dominant performance, fantastic. But some of the later teams, you know, you've got to give credit where it's due. You've got to give the respect yeah. and you've got to, you know, trust to kind of play your game. Don't get over the top. Yeah, maybe maybe hit a little bit of that Kovacs aim trainer, you know, for the next match. Yeah, we are going to have a little bit of a downtime here. We are on schedule in the good way that, uh, you know, we actually have some extra time here. Players will be able to, you know, take whatever breaks they need, grab a quick snack before our next match. So it actually will be about uh, 40 minutes or so. Uh, we won't be seeing Ascent EU in our next coverage. They will be taking on likely seven, as we mentioned. We're waiting to hear who Ascent NA will be facing, but uh, we are anticipating to cover that side of the bracket next. And uh, once we get there as well, we'll probably have an update for you guys on how the lower bracket is going. And some of those teams did see that bus crew picked up their first win in the lower bracket. Uh, we'll uh, you know, have to check back and see how they're doing. So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, um, please stay tuned, of course. You know, keep the stream running. If you, if you need to go run out, get some groceries, make yourself a snack, now is a great time to do that. Because it's going to be about, uh, you know, about 40 minutes or so before we're back, bringing you guys some more insights on what to expect with our next matchup, the upper bracket semifinals, as the action heats up here on I-65. So please don't go any, uh, anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We will be back.
Yow. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting ready to go with some more TF2 action here shortly. Joined by Alba again and Kermit. Kermit, welcome to the panel. How are you doing? Uh, not bad, not bad. Just wolfed down my lunch and came here. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Well, caught, caught some of the action today, not a lot yeah. of it. but. Well, you were also okay. uh, casting yesterday and yep. uh, got to see a little bit of our teams here. We're into the uh, second round here, our upper bracket semifinal, sorry, third round of uh, yeah. upper bracket. And um, Faint Gaming versus Ascent. And a, what are some of your just initial reactions about this matchup we have here? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Like, I think in Ascent and A were looking a bit shaky on Gully Wash, I think at least. I don't know what maps they're playing right now, but on Gully Wash, they were looking shaky earlier against top five. It was like, I think, I don't know actually what the final outcome was, but top five were ahead, at least for a while when I was watching it equalized out. But they, I don't know if it's land there or whatever. They were just not as strong as they seemed yesterday, especially when I watched them on Viaduct yesterday where they absolutely destroyed top five. And then in the rematch, it's don't know what happened to the ascent of yesterday. Um, Alba, your initial thoughts as well on this matchup with these two yeah, teams? Yeah, I, I heard uh, Ascent and A, they played uh, top five, as we said. Uh, uh -huh. I, I believe it was 4-1 in both maps. Uh -huh. uh, so I think it's just a case of, uh, you know, top five in general being better at five CP maps. Uh, but going ahead, uh, going into Faint Gaming versus Santana, I think it's going to be a really, really close match. Uh, I would be surprised if it's not three maps. Mm. Um, and just overall, Kermit, you know, as uh, the uh, the teams are getting whittled down and we're getting yeah. further into this land, um, has there been anybody that uh, you've been surprised about or just kind of any of the teams that you just like to talk about real quick as... We're moving forward mm -hmm. in this tournament. Hey, you know, rooting for us in any, just the role they've, they've yeah. come from, you know, all the way from North America. They've been, uh -huh. they have been playing really well. Like, uh, I just, I'd like to see them do go far. But seven have just looked solid in uh -huh. every game that I've seen them in so far. So it, it's look at like I'd, I'd like to see a seven and a ten any grand final. I'd like to see if that's a possibility. I'd like it to happen. <laughs> yeah, still a, a definitely a possibility. And I, f I think actually that would be the uh, matchup if Ascent and A were to win in their yeah. matchup here uh, in seven. Those two teams could meet in the uh, winners' upper bracket finals. Yeah. So we could get that uh, little little preview, and then you know we'll we'll see what happens down yeah. the line. Um, Alba, what's your uh, initial thoughts on this matchup? I mean, you know, getting a little bit more in depth with these two teams. Um, you know, Faint Gaming uh, did have some really strong performances in uh, the group stage. Um, do you think that this, you know, could be a 2-0 win for them? Or do you think it's a real closely uh, uh, matched up? You know, this is a, a matchup with, you know, Ascent and A traveling over here. This is something that we've never seen before, you know, a BO3 between these two teams. Yeah, I, I'm honestly going to be surprised if it's going to be two maps. Um, uh -huh. Can't really predict which team is going to win it. Uh, I think Faint has had really, really strong showings, uh -huh. uh, drawing with, uh, with uh, uh, Seven earlier. Uh, yesterday and then uh, uh, these two teams when they face each other in the in the invite bracket or in the invite group uh, I believe Ascent and A won 4-1 or something like that mm -hmm. uh, so that don't, that's the only record we really have uh, going into this matchup uh, so Ascent and A probably has a small upper hand but I'll be surprised if it ends in two maps and uh, stylistically Kermit is there you know been any large differences that you've seen between Ascent and A and kind of just Norm, you know, quote unquote normal TF2 play, um, or just also any surprises from the players? It, I'd say, like, what I'm not, again, I don't know 100% what maps are playing, but yeah. if for some reason Viaduct is, is in this best of three, uh -huh. like, it's definitely going to be an any sided map, and then, like, we will probably be more likely to see the, a third map at that point. But generally speaking, both teams seem kind of similar. They both look like strong soldiers, strong scouts. I think like maybe I'd give the edge to Ascent any like on the scout front maybe, but the soldiers huh. it's kind of even like with Genk and Pappy versus um, Laz and uh, J. Yeah. yeah, like they both seem they're both just incredibly strong teams. Very like they just seem stable. They don't seem to have been like flustered at all at any point, uh -huh. regardless of how any of their games or results have gone. And uh, Lucas Tank has been a, a huge performer for Hank Gaming. Um, how, how do you feel that he matches up against Bot Mode? Do you think that that's, that's a key um, clash between these two teams, the demo men? Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, I feel uh, Bot Mode and Lucas is uh, are on the same level. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking with the Ascent guys uh, earlier, they're, they're watching out for Lucas. They know he has the firepower behind him. So it's going to be interesting to see that matchup. Um, and now Kermit, you know, it seems like, I mean, 
I-65 is is the end of the year's TF2 action. You know, mm -hmm. of course, you know it's like we have leagues that are you know ongoing right now, yeah. both in NA and in, and in Europe. Um, but uh, this is what uh, a lot of players look forward to, and uh, it seems like we're we're seeing a few interesting strategies that have uh, been come out. Um, you know, some crit streak plays as well as some off classing. Is there anything that you've noticed in other games that you think perhaps these teams might have noticed as well and might whip out here? The one thing that has stood out to me like the most just is when you mentioned Crit Creek, it was like Aura Electro, like uh, using the crit, like I, th I uh -huh. can't even remember who it was against, I think all I remember is I casted it. Uh -huh. But like the, their use of the Crit Creek, like no, like yeah. I feel like most teams like to play so slow and stalemate these days that a lot of teams just get completely caught off guard by like a Crit Creek and if the, the, like one good crit will just completely change like the pace of a game basically and like it will be either a round instantly off the back of one good crit or it could just be constant uber, advan uh, uber advantage on the crits for one like the team using it and they can just then leapfrog points like constantly like, it just allows like a lot of aggression that a lot of teams seem like they should be able to deal with but just won't quite expect and it'll catch them off guard and uh, Alba, you know, kind of similarly, uh, historically speaking in, in Team Fortress, the North American community has been viewed as um, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more higher paced. Um, I said NA also, you know, people thinking about that uh, when they come into this land. Uh, for faint gaming, do you think that uh, the answer is just more aggression or to let a set NA play into them, deal with the bombs, deal with the aggression, and, and then counter afterwards? I think the important part for faint is to, to continue with their game because uh, they have a very solid game plan uh, where they utilize their soldiers, Puppy and Gink, very, very well. And they have Lucas following it up, dealing tons of damage. So I think the important part is uh, that they, they keep using the tools that they have and keep, stick to their game plan. And uh, we did just get word on what the maps uh, were. It's going to be Process, uh, Goalie, and then Badlands as uh, the potential final decider. Uh, any thoughts, uh, Kermit? Now uh, immediately thought of, uh, I, think, I think it was Ascent, uh, EU versus Faint in the regular ETF 12 season. Uh, it did not go quite so well for Faint Gaming. Like they had a lot of problems with mainly, I think, Lucas himself with um, positioning and stuff on the map. They were constantly caught off guard, and they were just they just lost engagements and stuff. They just shouldn't have lost because they didn't know where to hold. But I was talking to Seeds yesterday, or I think it was yesterday, and like they they've been practicing the map. Like they've li like drilled every position into Lucas's head that he won't be caught out of position now. Uh -huh. So if we do go to the map three, like. Faint should be looking a lot stronger on it than they, they have in the past. Mm, that's good insight. Um, Alba, your thoughts on the maps? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we have uh, Process and Gully, which are both kind of a little bit more puggy maps. Uh, they favor both aggressive and slow playstyle. Uh, but between these two teams, I think it's going to be uh, leaning towards the aggressive playstyles from both teams, and it's going to be it's going to be a nail biter. Well, we do have uh, just a few more minutes until we get uh, into the game here. Um, Kermit, you know, your first time on this panel. Yeah. I just uh, wanted to ask you, you know, overall, uh, your your thoughts on um, just the Insomnia land and, and how it's been for you. Yeah, it's been really good so far. Like, it's been a lot of good games as well. But I wanted to quite before it slips out of my head, mention that Gully Wash, just for this upcoming game, uh -huh. where it's like a really projectile class focused map, I feel that it could maybe go a bit more the way of Faint, just because like the mids are really, really demo favored, and then like soldiers are just really strong. It's obviously bot mode's incredible on demo, but when you're against Lucas, you know, it's like the MVP of an entire LAN previously. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a hard, a hard matchup. But um, yeah, no, the LAN itself, yeah, had good time, good games, good people. Yeah. yeah. You, you be able to uh, check out the exhibitor hall a bit? I, I have just like barely scratched uh, the Yeah, well, I, I've had the whole afternoon off today, oh, okay. no casting for me. So yeah, I've literally just come back from the expo hall. It's, it's, it's been okay. There's a very good, nice, uh, like, retro section just full of, like, oh, um, nice. SNES games and, like, Sega, old Sega games from, like, the early 90s. It's yeah. very cool to check out. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, we got a great crowd here. Um, audience has been fantastic for the Team Fortress. Actually, the we're, like, full up right now. People yeah. hype for this upper bracket matchup. And, um, of course, BYOC is um, always a lot of fun. People people throwing down, hanging out yeah. late as well. So. Um, hopefully these teams, you know, have had a chance to uh, get some grub, um, get some rest, and uh, let's just, you know, get down to it of, of who do we think that we're going to win here. Um, Alba, what, what, what's it going to be? I think I'm going to give it to Faint, actually. Uh, but it's going to be three maps for sure. Okay. Hmm. Um, do you agree with that, Kermit? I'm torn. I'm really yeah. torn. I'm, not, I'm really not sure. Like, Hard um, words. Process and Gully is the first two maps. I could see maybe Process being a bit more Ascent favored than Gully Wash. 
I, I think faint, and then Badlands is just a toss up really. Because I've not really seen either team play them that much at all, so yeah. I, it, it, it could be like one. I'd say it would be like one one. So it will go to the map three, and then third map, no idea. Do you do you feel like uh, Badlands is is still like the epitome of TF2, or do you think it's kind of a classic that uh, stylistically people have moved away from? I feel a lot of like people, like a lot of newer players especially, uh -huh. do not like the map. Personally, I still love it. I absolutely yeah. love playing it on like every class, especially just because Scout isn't quite as strong on it as it is like uh -huh. compared to like Process or something. Like yeah, it's just a lot more fun to actually play on like Soldier. You you can just get more done and not be punished quite so hard. Um, there was something else I was going to say. Yeah, I think just for Euro Pride, I'm going to say Faint to take it, oh, especially okay. with best player in the game, Ayat Gink, on the side of Faint. He, he's, he'll go big. I'm, I'm predicting it right now. Yeah, throw it, throw hopefully, it hopefully not cursing him. Hopefully he will. <laughs> but I'd like well, to see Well, you know, there's the caster's curse, and then there's, like, the analysis. You know, it's like we say things, and then they become true, right? You know, so yeah. hopefully that'll uh, be how that works out. Um, Alba, you know, do you think that uh, the soldier matchup is going to be real uh, even? I mean, again, that's something that uh, North American players like, you know, uh, Europe's had time to catch up. But I, I remember I-46, it was just like American soldiers were, were so aggressive. And I, I think that Jay and Laz do kind of bring that high-flying bombs. Um, but uh, Gink and uh, Pappy have been performing. Um, anything else you want to say about that? I think they can definitely go head-to-head. -head. Yeah. I think if you just line up all six players on each team, they all go, like, they can all, uh, you know, beat each other. Uh, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a nail butter for sure. Very tight match. Yeah, certainly. Um, so who's gonna win the first map? Let's Kermit. Process. Process. I will say ascent. Okay. And you, Alba? Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Kermit. It's gonna be uh, ascent first map. Okay, excellent. Well, let's get it over to the casters, and that's gonna be Cerny and Bum. Take it away, guys. Welcome back, guys. We are going to be heading into Process as our first map. I'm joined by Cerny, of course. How are you doing, man? Doing good. Feeling, feeling confident about this game. Yeah. Process, a, a, probably a favorite of many players, I'd argue. A modern a modern map. It favors scouts. People love scouts. That's <laughs> yeah, well, Process, absolutely a favorite of Ascent NA. I'm expecting Ascent NA to take <laughs> this first map as well. Yeah. I believe this is one of their best maps. Reasonable. I would expect Faint, as our analysts have said, to come out ahead overall in this best of three, but Ascent looks so good on Process at the moment. They do. I mean, they're, they're lucky that Product isn't in this because... That would be devastating, I think. <laughs> but yeah, that's the closest thing. As we're now headed into the first round, actually, ga uh, gamers already rolling out. Let's see what these teams try to do for this first mid. Lucas really fast on the right side here, just exchanging a little bit of spam before Ascent finally actually comes in as well. And just a little bit of spam exchange, you know, nothing much happening yet. Ga gamers are just scouting each other out, just looking what's happening. Yeah, or Jay less. going in with the first ball. Yeah, Laz also trying to get onto uh, to Lucas there. Does not manage to synchronize anything, though. And that's both soldiers down. Yeah, and Faint are just rolling this forward. Pappy manages to catch bot mode off in the choke with help from Lucas as well. And Lucas is going deep. He wants to get in onto skis here. Skis getting sped out by Yike. There's so many Faint players on his tail, though. They're already straight into last skis. Just manages to get the resupply bind off in the door. So he will survive with 80% Uber. But Faint are already in there, just locking down these spawn doors, pretty much spawn camping. Jay, though, switching onto Sniper. Seeds is in such a precarious spot. He has to use this Uber off on last when mid is isn't even capped, Cerny. That's they were they were hungry. They wanted they wanted that skis kill as as badly as they could, and they just could not do it. That's gonna bite them in the butt, cause yeah, here's then come out with their Uber, uh, gonna protect their second point, gonna mulch mulch this team of faint in the choke or anybody that's stuck in it at least. And yeah, that's just three players down. Absolutely, way it's too greedy. Committed so hard. Yeah, putting six players into last pretty much without even capping off the mid. Definitely not something you want to be doing. Seeds now does have the 25% advantage after skis used back out into second. All the respawns coming up now. We have ourselves in a 6v6 situation once again. Just chilling around this choke until Seeds gets his Uber, I assume. It's very reasonable to assume, yeah. And Faint do like to play aggressively, so wouldn't be surprised if they immediately try to take it in. Looks like that's exactly what they're trying to do. Uh, Ascent already well aware of that as well, but backing off immediately, giving them a little bit of space in the process. But 
Actually, yeah, they're just biding their time. Mm. Yite taking 1v1 with Gink. Gink's going to win that one out. But in this uh, kind of stalling situation, we have had time for Skis to get his Uber up. So uh, no Uber charge advantage proceeds anymore. And they're a player down as well. Well, yeah, both teams. But both teams are player down. So probably won't be seeing much, though, as bot mode peeking in the choke. Laz is trying to get in from far suicide as well. Luke is a bit far forward ahead of the rest of his team. Jay coming in at you with the big bomb. But in return, Gink has gone straight into choke and forced skis off. Really great from Gink there. Seeds has not had to use yet at all. We'll see what Pappy wants to make his team do with this advantage. They don't have Lucas. That's, That's the big cool. thing. That's the big thing they were talking about. They want to take down Lucas. They want to make sure that he is not around because he is apparently the most threatening player. Oh, Yite. Yite has used and this he is very far to get behind. all the way in behind. They just weren't looking at IT for one second, and he's bringing everyone back to last. He's dancing and juking, going up him. top, and he does God. get taken down by Classy, but that was five people going back for him. Really delaying Ascent, and now they are going to be able to be building that Uber all this time. Ski's already up to 80% off the back of that huge 100% ad that Seeds has, and he uses straight through the choke. Lucas goes in so deep! Does he, hit, does he actually kill someone? Ah, oh, he doesn't get it. He tried. It was an attempt made. Yeah, they are going to have to bat, cap this point and get straight out, though. Gink bombing into the choke. The medic did not quite come through. He bakes the bomb out early. Now Pappy has to try and follow it up. Skis does use to that eventually, but with Lucas and both soldiers down, Ascent are going to roll this in quickly. Yeah, that's what they're, exactly what they're doing. By the way, the entire time, Jay on the sniper. Oh, Jay's on sniper. I hadn't even <laughs> noticed. That's, that's something I've been, I've been, I've been paying attention to. Because Jay, notoriously known, having a very high sensitivity. Yeah. Not the player you expect to play sniper very often, but he's been making it work, I guess, for for a bit now. Let's see if he can actually make something happen here for this last busted wide open for his team. Because that Uber disad is gonna make it hard for them to push Poppies down on the side there. That's pretty. That's pretty crucial pick from Slamnish. But yeah, Jason's oh, gonna get spammed out. using all the way into Ooh. Bobby with Tomas. There's a big solo on Toto here, and he's not getting anything with it. Lucas bombing forwards, catching him in the choke off this advantage. They are gonna be able to cap up second, but now Skis, obviously the Ubers have flipped into his favor. He has 90%, and all of a sudden are charging forwards. Faint gonna I'd try and leave through one here. Lucas just managing to not get caught in the shutter, and they are back to last. Plus he's setting up the sentry already. Basically, a full reset, except now the Ubers have flipped, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a send. Yep, they're gonna take it in through lobby right away, gonna get try to get onto that sentry as soon as possible, it's already down. Just gonna have to clear out that point now, clear out those players. Uh, let's see if they actually manage to do that. It's just a really scrappy fight. Gink, the first player to actually go down on the side of Faint here, and uh, Yike finally dying on the side of the scent. People going so low, they finally take down Thomas on the heavy, and yeah, that's gonna be first round. Yeah, great, playing the point early on in that last push from Ascent. Just keeping the keeping the pressure on it non-stop. Toe obviously trying his best on the Pootis to shut all those players down running towards him, but in the end, the battle of attrition goes in Ascent's favor. And we are going straight into the second mid. Let's see. Maybe things are going to go a little bit differently this time. Let's see what these teams are up to. Uh, early bomb in by Laz, oh. I think. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get onto Lucas there. Doing a bunch of damage, but does not manage to kill him. That pressure, though. Oh, all of Faint just standing on their own suicide. They're getting rushed into by everyone on Faint. Just this powerful force coming across the point. Happy is going to go for a big bomb in on Skis. Doesn't manage to take anything down, though. But now all of Ascent have terrible positioning in their choke. Oh, no. Botmode's going to get caught in here by the looks of it. Yeah, he's yep. going to go down. So with a demo pick, you're definitely going to expect to see Faint run through this choke here. Yeah, so that's what they're trying to do. I just, I'm just always scared whenever I see a bunch of people like bunched up in one place and I'm watching Lucas because oh, okay. oh he gets so close to getting the pick onto skis but he does manage to surf around goes back to lobby keeping safe gets the pack and now it looks like both teams with 100% we're gonna see another stalemate playing it very traditionally yeah. very very slowly no taking no risks well Let's see how they try to break this. Maybe we're going to see a little bit of a sack come in here. I Oh, Gink's Ooh. up on Spy. I was Is just about to say, I expect to see Gink going Sniper. Sni Gink's been playing quite a lot of Sniper today on Process, having a lot of fun with that. But now he's on Spy instead. This is very unexpected. Spy obviously works a lot on LAN. People love to use it on LAN with um, all the noises going off around you. It's obviously a lot easier to get that decloak in without being heard or spotted, but 
a scout run straight past him. That was close. Making it scary. Playing a horror game, essentially. He's just trying to, you know, evade these jump scares of uh, Sen players bumping into him in a minute. Basically instantly killing him if they do find him. They oh. look like they're aware. Yeah, I think they're aware. Gink accidentally let the shutter open when he was trying to avoid Yite bumping into him. So Yite is now definitely on spy check. Slanish on the sniper here, trying to poke, uh, peek for choke a little bit. Does not get a shot off, though. Oh, no. Oh. Gink has been caught. He opens the shutter yeah. right as Yite's looking at him. That's a dead giveaway. But, he's alive. Yeah, but he's alive and he's wasting time. How useful is a, is a spy that everybody knows about? Yeah, there's not much use in wasting time when you're 1-0 down here. So Gink will eventually just let himself die. And now Slemnish looking to take the uh, angle into choke. Lucas is showing him his head, offering it up on a plate as long as uh, Slemnish... Oh. But he gets Pappy gets instead. Pappy instead. That's still, that's still a crucial pick here. Yeah, it's two down for Faint, so Ascent definitely going to be moving in here. Laz exactly has some pressure on from Sua. Yikes running all the way in through the choke. That's an Uber out from uh, from Seeds there. He gets popped off earlier than Ski. Ski's finally responding with an Uber on his own, and the exchange is just on. Obviously, Ascent with a way better Uber here, going to be aggressing immediately into mid and trying to just pick up some Franks. Thomas, the first one to fall down. Jay essentially trades for that one, though. And uh, Slender's still on a sniper. He's trying, to, he's trying to just get some cheeky snipes here in the middle of the fight. He's standing in the middle of the fray, trying to make something happen. Didn't quite work out. Yeah, and great it's a reset. job from Faint to force everyone out. I liked what Ascent were doing. Oh, oh, Lucas going down to Slemnish there. Slemnish going to take a wider angle immediately. Both of these soldiers bombing so into him, trying to punish him for going in for that play. All of the oh, no scopes. Has he missed one so far? Excuse me. But Gink and Classy getting the kills. Oh, bot mode! That was a nice shot onto Gink in mid air. Now both scouts running forwards, though, gonna take down Slemnish and Skis. Yep. Thomas and Classy are just destroying all of Ascent NA right now, and it's a full wipe. They're gonna roll this into last. There's no, there's nobody contested here. The soldiers just now respawning. Poppy already trying to spawn camp here on the point as well. That's gonna be around in the favor of Fane. Evening it out already, Cerny. We're 10 minutes in. The EU crowd Got giving a, us a, a big cheer for the EU team, of course. These are the two powerhouses of their respective regions. Debatable whether or not Faint are the best team in Europe right now. They're and certainly looking so. Looking yeah, strong. they're looking great this land, but here we come into the third mid. Let's see what these teams are up to this time around. Whew. All right. Again, both teams taking a little bit slowly here. Uh, looks like Faint were a little, little bit spread out on their rollout there in general, so. They're gonna be taking it slowly. Last, looking to bomb in now, just faking it, just faking a little bit. You know, Jay meanwhile trying to go in. Gink finally going high as well. Just a bunch of fake bombs being exchanged. Nobody's, nobody's wanting to commit to anything so far. Everybody's just like sitting back, just you know, chilling. The center are on the point. They're just getting the cap time. Lucas finally taking down Yite as the first player here, and all of a sudden immediately backing out of choke. Is all the way in behind. He's blocking off this exit best he can. Lucas, oh, Lucas in, in the front as well for a big oh, ball. Oh! Jesus, down. That's amazing, Gink getting a pickaxe kill as well in the fray. This is nearly a full wipe as Slemnish has to run all the way back to last. Probably going to switch on to Engineer and just try and get that level 3 set Actually, up sniper. straight away. So yeah, Slemnish on the sniper, see if he can get a cheeky drop as they try and push in. But Faint, with the full Uber charge advantage here, haven't capped middle yet. So it might be delayed a while. If Skis can juke around long enough, just stay alive. He might get his Uber on this last push, and that would be definitely putting himself in a good position to hold last. Depends on how long Faint really take here. If they make use of their, uh, you know, their ad quickly, it's gonna be gonna be rough for Sin. That's that's for sure. It's gonna be rough for them. Um, they do have a sniper on Jay now, and uh, the NG as well. They Uber in immediately. Faint here. Yeah, Lucas is in deep. He's in very deep actually. Immediately, just trying to shut down any players that are trying to hide. Down. Gets taken down though. That's a that's a pretty big problem when you're faint and trying to push a last point. You don't have your demo man. Yeah, that's that nice too. That was a really atrocious Uber. Unfortunately, Lucas bombing the wrong side. The sentry was on the other door, so he doesn't really get much. Gink hiding here though. Will oh, get he speed. gets that massive. At least they get that. And Seeds is already way out to mid, so he's gonna be able to utilize that 50% advantage another time. It's obviously gonna grow ever bigger while Skis is in the respawn queue and now all of Faint respawning as well. They're going to be looking to come into second whilst uh, no heals are up on the side of Ascent. And just now, Slendish still on the sniper by the way. He's, he's very committed to the sniper here. 
Maybe he's gonna make something happen this time around. He he does uh, peek into a sewer where faint are. He, he's like it's almost like he knows. Mm. <laughs> he's looking at he's looking if he can maybe pick somebody up here. Lucas again, you know he's he's very aggressive, so it could it could be his downfall. Uh, immediately jumps in as well. Slamish trying to hit him. Lucas also going deep, but does not manage to kill someone. Everyone, everyone going so deep in the faint there. They're just throwing themselves straight forwards. Although in the meantime, Laz has got the force onto seeds, so. Ski's actually now going to be in the position where he has the advantage. Both soldiers down, but Lucas also down on the side of Faint. Gink just trying to... Oh, he's doing so much damage in this one area. Classy also trying to block people from running out, but he's too far ahead of his team. Classy going to get taken down by several Ascent players. And this is going to be... Faint are out to mid. Yeah, they're going to be they're going to be pushing out here, trying to retake their second. Faint trying to recontest a little bit, actually. Very, very aggressive again there by... Uh, by one of your soldiers, I mean, yeah, it was Gink, I believe. Uh, just moving forward, just trying to slow down Ascent as much as possible. That being said, they're moving for IT here. Uh, I guess it's a little bit of a different mid approach and Ubering in immediately, just taking it into the players. Faint well aware, well yeah. aware of what's coming their way. And Gink was hiding for the force, but after Ascent just used into mid without needing to be forced, that let Gink have an opportunity to go behind and he's just Messing around behind an IT right now. Slemnish takes him down. Venture got faint and Ubered right back into middle. Papi and Lucas going deep again, but not catching the players that they need in the Uber bot mode. Going to be fighting Lucas. Actually winning that one out at the moment. Papi has to come and assist. But in the meantime, Laz has got straight onto seeds. So this is a great opportunity for Ascent. Lucas and Papi bombing forwards again. Oh, Lucas getting taken down in mid air. Slemnish playing up classy as well. However, Thomas is still okay. <laughs> he gets piled down. <laughs> Everyone going for the six-man sack there onto Skis. Skis lives through all of it. So Ascent going to be rolling into second and have a sizable advantage for last as well. All of Faint just about spawning now. Their scouts are the last ones to spawn, so that sentry's not going to be up for a while is another thing to note. So yeah, they're still choosing to go with an injury regardless. Thomas on the heavy as well. Or the Putas, as uh, people like to call it much rather. It's, it's probably the official name for the game at this point. Um, Ascent looking to probably take it through lobby here. At least they're all bunched up in there. So it's safe to assume that they, they might try that. There you go. Yep, they Ubered in immediately. Classy on the sniper as well. Oh, Botmo gets dropped from the Uber though. Tomas really gunning him down with the heavy weapons guy there. And all of Ascent just ditch that push entirely after losing bot mode from the Uber. G G did try to go behind and got cleaned up by Yike, but... It's not going to be a big loss uh, for Fane here, and it's going to be enough for them to maybe push Ascent back a little bit. Ascent already backing off. Jay and Ooh. Laz both getting some bombs, and Laz does get the force on seeds as well. Yite and Laz both go down for it, so Fane are going to want to at least punish this a bit, or try and get in onto skis before he can get his uber. I'd expect to see Gink hiding again. That's usually been what they're trying to do. But Pappy is actually the one going straight forwards into middle. He wants to absolutely put the pressure onto Ascent before they get this Uber charge. He knows they're going to be getting it soon. Yeah, he knows that he's got one of the best medics when it comes to building, but not, not even a uh, disadvantage like that can be made up easily. And yeah, Ascent obviously aware of their ad here, going to push back immediately, faint. Not going to take any risks for that. Oh, hold for a huge bomb with this. He's straight in onto it. Oh, oh my god, Lord. he gets Papi and Tomas, but Seeds has already managed to escape to last. Gink going down as well. Now Seeds just has to oh, stay no. alive while this second point gets capped from Ascent. Got his heavy Lucas friends going back down him up. Well. Oh no. Oh yeah, no, this is over. Yeah, this is definitely a round for Ascent. That was really well played. Even if they shut them down. Yeah, 2-1 there for Ascent and A, taking the lead once again on process. Halfway through the game? Halfway through the game, yeah. We are at the halfway point, so it's going to be needing to be faint getting the comeback on now to take the lead for this first map. Obviously, as our analyst was saying, uh, faint haven't been too comfortable on Badlands until recently. Obviously, Kermit's Insight saying that they've been really drilling that into Lucas. So hopefully, if they do get to the third map, they'll still stand a chance. Exactly. Now, yeah. Yeah. on this third mid. Let's see. Again, both teams playing very slowly. Not used to seeing that last going high here. Just scouting out, essentially, trying to see what he can do. He is behind, but he's also very low on health. And Geek and Classy are both dead. So Feyna gonna be backing off, maybe into last here. Yeah, he's, he's gonna be wreaking a little bit of havoc on the back line. Jay already following up with the rest of his team. Lucas yep. doing a nice job of staying alive, getting bombed by Laz and hitting it. 
Neat little surf straight out. So he's going to keep his 85% advantage as he goes to resupply as well. So it's looking like it's going to be even for last. Pappy might even try and get his team to re-push second here. Yeah, they've got all the spawns in and Pappy wants to go fast. But Jay, oh my god, he's in with the drop onto Seed. Sinks up two rockets. We was hiding just above rollout and now Ascent get to use their uber off in return lucas still trying to put any damage he can out onto the side of ascent they're all going to back out to mid just to try and stay alive keep this uber charge advantage barely yeah barely, barely. but damn what a what a drop unfortunate that the uber didn't work out for them but yeah they all of faint was still pretty far back when the uber was used they did a good job of all splitting up and looking for clues and none of us managed to get the frags that they needed to roll that into last. So lucky for seeds that his drop didn't mean much there. Now everyone's just getting ready to even this back out. Stalemate for mid. Faint holding very, very far back. This isn't like them. We'd usually see them putting the pressure on Choke already. Maybe they expect Skis to have a slightly bigger add than he actually does. Or maybe they're actually expecting this IT push that Ascent look to be mounting right now. Moving forward, hmm, yeah, that's exactly what they're doing, actually. They're going to go in for IT, uh, with Batma being the sole player in the choke, and just backing out again. Okay. Oh, Laz again onto Seeds, but Lucas takes him down with a neat air pipe as well. So, judging by how Pappy's been dealing with these situations before, they might even just go straight in. That's what they're doing. So Pappy oh! gets one nice rocket onto Skis. He gets another one, but Skis living on 50 HP. We'll go back and get the pack. Nice pipe there by Batmo on, on Poppy, by the way. He surfed that real nice. Jay's in now, trying to counter sack. Didn't quite work out in his favor. And yeah, we're at an equal situation, both from a player standpoint and an Uber standpoint and a stalemate standpoint and everything. These yeah. teams are evenly matched so far. And Faint wants to just take this straight in through the choke. It's a double scout Uber onto Classy and Tomas. Skis pops his off as well onto bot mode and Slemnish, keeping them both alive. Neither team flashed more than the other, so it's a completely Null and Void trade now, both teams just using it off. No one's got an advantage off of it. So we might be seeing this just slow down unless one of these teams wants to go for a dry push. It's a little bit of a reset here again. Well, Jay's in deep though. He jumps in fast for choke, finally taken down. He lived for very long there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if a Sen tried to slow down the pace of this game a little bit now. You know, you've got like 10 minutes left. Sure, it's a bit of time, but they are ahead. They're in a driver's seat. Yeah, so. they are 2-1 up. Papi and his team definitely need to be the ones in the driving seat to try and get this out of this stalemate. And that's exactly what Papi's doing, looking for an opportunity through Sua right now, taking a little 1v1 with Laz, going to back out. Also, Jay on the sniper again. He's going to be looking for, uh, for choke here. Does not hit Thomas, unfortunately. And uh, now they're aware of him. They're going to play around that. They're going to try to position themselves so they do not get their heads taken off immediately, instantly by a class across the map. Ah, oh, yes, sniper is fun. That being said, Lucas just dies to bot mode's trap, and uh, that opens up. That opens up the second point wide open for Ascent. Immediately, Lucas down, no demo. That's going to be bad for them. And yeah, they're going to be moving forward. Uber does come out of sight of Seeds there. Ski's quick to respond with his own, and the exchange is on. Yeah, the Uber's Double fading, chance. and now both Pappy and Laz behind each other's teams. Laz will get taken down first, and Slemnish has to go and chase back for Pappy. Actually, Classy's getting himself behind as well onto mid, so this could be a crunch from both sides in the choke here, but it doesn't work out like that as Lucas and Pappy both getting taken down. Ooh. Tomas getting sniped from uh, the choke by Jay, and now Faint have to run out to last. At least Seeds is staying alive, but it might not be enough if the respawns don't come in in time. Slemnish already taking this forwards into last. Not looking good, it's not looking good at all. Especially like Lucas is still, you know, he's just now respawning, he's just now coming up, uh, trying to protect this point. It's gonna be enough probably, yeah, to hold a scent back for now, but they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to hold on to this hard. I mean, they do have the Uber ad, so it's gonna take them a while. Again, Jay's still on the sniper as well. So is Tomas, but if you're, if you're trying to push with a sniper, you're essentially a player down, right? Unless he gets a frag, unless he gets an opening. You're, you're essentially just banking on your sniper, doing the work if you're trying to push last here. And I think that's going to hold Ascent back for a while. They're going to try to get Jay to have some sort of angle here. It's the only thing he can really do. Yeah. And just to bring us back to that mid stalemate that started this all off when Jay went on to sniper, both teams played it exactly as they should. Seeds went up on the pipe next to the choke. It's the absolute hardest place as a medic to get sniped from because 
he has to go fully through the choke to get an angle onto you. So then Ascent immediately responds to that by trying to get in through Sewer, obviously, and baiting uh, one of the faint players into the stickies, how they originally broke that stalemate there. Lucas gonna Let's get an Slim. opening, yeah, picks off Slamnish here, and it looks like Gink and Pappy trying to make some space, see if one of them wants to go for a counter sack, maybe. Or just maybe get, get Tomas into it, have a little bit more of an angle now, you know? There's a, there's a player less stopping you from it. He does try to go into a little bit of 1v1 there. Jay gets sent up though, so he's not gonna be able to hit him. It's really just down to the sniper duel at this point. Yeah, we see Seeds obviously in his second home inside the dispenser. He loves sitting in there whenever really there's does. a sniper. Ooh, Jay's being aggressive and roll out there. Gets taken down by Gink though. Went for the hero probably just gonna switch off a of sniper now. I wouldn't be surprised. And uh, yeah, mass on the sniper. Gink's gonna open the door. Oh, up oh nice shot. Yikes. That's a nice shot right there, and that's going to be enough probably for Frank to just try to move. Oh, him. and they bait Maybe? Laz into yeah. bombing them as well. So now Laz gets taken down by Gink and Lucas in this one area. Pappy's already made all the space on second. Scared everybody out from Ascent. And they're going to be able to cap this second point up. Tomas already taking a peek into middle on the sniper. See if he can get anything to roll them even further ahead into mid. Anybody's being too aggressive, trying to be too cheeky here. Also, just like to mention this, I don't know if we've mentioned yet, uh, Poppy's on the on the battalions. Ooh, he's actually nice. on the backup, so I wonder what he's gonna try to do. Ooh, nice headshot onto onto bot mode there by Tomas. Uh, seeing if he can follow it up. Not quite, but he's going to stay alive, get spammed out a little bit. Sent very, very wary of uh, Tomas now after after that uh, second push. After he basically allowed his team to actually come through. They're scared of the Australians. I wonder why. But he's going to need to do more than that, and he's going to need to do it fast. With six minutes left on That's the true. clock, they are still around down. So Faint have to really find some way to get into mid here, and I reckon that's what Pappy might be trying to do with his battalion's backup. We might be seeing some sneaky banner plays. Either a banner sack, which is really good with the battalions because you take so much less damage when you're bombing in. You can really live for longer and get more rockets out and try and force off that medic, or we might see a... Um, no, that's the frag we're looking for. Absolutely, that's exactly what they want. Once bot mode is down, this is gonna open up the trade for sure in the choke here. That's what they're, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to take him in tow, again, also trying to get some more angles. Maybe you can follow it up a little bit. This team slowly poking forward. They're getting, they're getting bombed, they're getting spammed, but... Yeah, they don't really want to do much with Tomas on Sniper. Tomas, the combo scout, obviously, being on Sniper is not useful for when you want to be taking Ubers in. But now, that scaredness of them all just clumping up in the choke and getting caught out means that Lucas does end up going down, which is great for Ascent. Yite has also managed to sneak his way by into lobby. I don't even know if they've spotted him. Gink looks like he's looking around, but he might just spawn camp Lucas here. Yeah, yes, he gets the two shot onto oh, Lucas, no. so he's gonna be down even longer now. Ascent forcing off seeds as well. This is going absolutely brilliantly for them. Skis hasn't even used his Uber charge in return. Yike finally going down after he spent so much time behind. Yeah, the dominoes are falling in favor of uh, Ascent here. Every they've lined it all up and they tipped over the starting piece and everything is just falling right the way it should. They're yeah. trying to take a second here. Uh, Poppy does pop off the battalions actually to keep his team alive a little bit here and help them against the impending Uber that is probably going to come out of Skis very soon as they're caught in this IT actually. Yes, yeah, he's only here with Slemnish. He does get Jay here to back him up now. Now they're much more likely to go through and they do take all the space. Poppy's just watch and see if he can get any spam off that might slow them down, but they're not going to slow down at all. Here comes the Uber through number two, through rollout. They haven't even used yet. They finally pop onto bot mode as he takes the sentry down. Slemnish right up in front, doing the bulk of damage onto Faint. They're all locked inside the spawn rooms. And stickies from Lucas have been dead. Ascent can play the point now if they wish, but Tomas is just getting all these kills. The scout's coming forwards and Seed uses off his Uber charge to chase down these last two kills into IT. It's two scouts versus one, one scout. Slemish. One Slemish, okay, he does die. They're gonna be trying they're to gonna get skis here. here as well, it looks Are like. Yeah. Yes, oh my god, this is exactly what Faint need for the comeback. If they can roll this coast to coast with three minutes left. It's crunch time. They gotta, they gotta get it, they gotta get it going. Jay does try to uh, sack for Lucas there as well, does not manage to pick him up, and Fennec is gonna be rolling forward, everybody's dead. Yeah, they're gonna be spawn camping this here, they're putting all the sticks up on on the forward spawn. Pappy's standing in front of the doorway, saying you shall not pass. All of a sudden they're gonna decide to back spawn. 
Skis eventually joins them onto last. So now with seeds with 100% Uber charge advantage, we just need to see a good Uber out of faint. We need to see Lucas bomb and get the sentry. And we need to see them locked in spawn, unlike last time when Lucas unfortunately bombed the wrong side. Looks like they're gonna be taking the right side this time. And yeah, the sentry goes down immediately. Jay on the sniper still, okay, finally switching off. Uh, the Uber now rotating over to the left side, laying a lot of damage into people, but... And Tomas is just playing the point all through this fight. Tomas right. does actually complete <laughs> the coast-to-coast -coast for faint. 2-2, bringing us up to a tie on the first match. If any team gets a round in this 2 minute 30 remaining, they're going to be the ones to take process. Possible. It is absolutely possible. We've seen comebacks at this stage from uh, the Many French team earlier in the day already, so... yeah. yeah. Let's see the fifth round, probably the final one. I'd be surprised if we see more. Let's see what these teams do this time again. Again, very paced. Not not much trying here. Gink to mid actually gets, gets a headshot onto Yait immediately to open up the mid. That's a player down on the side of Ascent. It's going dangerously low though. Jay Ol's getting picked up on the sidelines. And Ascent, while they're far forward, there are also two players down. And Gink is hitting shots like crazy. This man doesn't miss. And bot mode's getting taken down in sewers as well, or in IT, sorry, from the aggressiveness of Pappy. So they're all going to be moving forwards. Faint have the momentum, but will they be able to get this round off of an even Uber situation with just 90 seconds left on the clock? We'll have to see. Gink very aggressive immediately. The first player to actually enter lobby, they're trying to get a, a little bit of an angle here, trying to just kill anybody, I think. He's, he's out for blood. He's tasted it. He's had a little bit of a taste, and now he's like he's trying to go for something. Yeah, sniping to mid is something that Faint have been trying quite a bit recently, and if Gink's going to be hitting shots like that, they should absolutely do it more, because that was a great mid fight from him. He really loves to snipe in this process map, but he needs to get forwards, and he needs to get forwards fast. With one minute left on the clock, he really needs to get himself an entry pick or change back to Soldier. But here comes the Uber onto Tomas and Lucas. Skis does pop off in the turn now as the sentry gun goes down. Trading Uber for a sentry doesn't strike me as a very good deal, unfortunately, and they're well, going to be trying to regress through, through one here for Shudder, seeing if they can uh, win this post Uber fight. Poppy and Jay essentially trade, uh, and, uh, okay, yeah, the, the frags are falling in favor of Sent here. Um, Clancy gets onto skis, though. That's oh. going to give them maybe one last chance to throw Possibly. bodies in, but not much more. Gink being on the sniper just in one throughout that whole fight meant that his team wasn't really having the damage output that they needed. Ascent going to be capping up second straight away again. And with 20 seconds left, it looks like we're going to be going to a golden cap on our first map here. Very much so, very much so. I'd be surprised if they manage to do anything. Well, that's a quite even matchup, actually, so yeah, far. Yeah, very, very close in process here. Happy trying to go for some logs damage, just gets immediately meat shot in the face. Everybody's just, this is, this is the wonderful garbage time that we love to see. Yeah. All right. Very even so far. They're dead even, yeah. Absolutely, and I don't actually know. Usually, after you see an, a matchup with an even scoreline, you at least see one team outperforming the other in, in slight ways that would give you an idea as to who might win the Golden Cup, but I honestly still have no clue after watching that 30 minutes of play which team I favor to take this last round here. I have no clue. They're, they're so evenly matched. I think it's just, it literally just boils down to like a minor thing, a minute chance that one team will get in a Golden Cup and they'll just, they'll just use it. Yeah. Be either one, honestly, at this point. Yeah, after Faint have been able to coast to coast that back to 2 2. Really, from the clutches of defeat, they've managed to at least at least delay this first map, if not win it. So If they win it, that's probably huge for them. Yeah. Absolutely. Like the second map's their pick, so if, yeah. they, if they take if they take process here, that might just be the series, really. If they if they manage to upset Ascent here. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said, that would avoid them from going to Badlands, which is one of their the maps they're less keen on in the pool overall. So if they can get this down in two, obviously that's perfect for them, not only for the fact that they don't have to play Badlands, but obviously they move on fast. They get some time to rest to maybe demo review before their next game. A little bit of downtime, yeah. A yeah, little bit of time to relax is always important as well. Nice. You, gotta, you gotta pace yourself at this uh, this land. Yeah, gotta chill out. Quite the, quite the timetable, especially yesterday, but also today, you know? Especially yeah, playoffs. especially yesterday. It was absolute chaos, as it usually is on the first days of these lands. Everyone needs to get their stuff sorted out. But everyone's settled in quite nicely. Yeah. 
And speaking of getting stuff sorted out on the first day of LAN, Lucas actually had some terrible PC issues with, with my computer. He forgot to rent this year, mm -hmm. so I've brought him mine down, but it wasn't working on the first day of LAN, so he had a huge panic attack, and I had to basically oh, no. rebuild it from the start up. It just turned out I'd put something in the wrong USB port. <laughs> what was it, though? Was it keyboards? Yeah, the mouse and keyboard didn't work, and they were just in the wrong USB ports. Great. Brilliant. Brilliant. You, you, you try Professional everything. PC diagnoser, you, pulling everything out and putting it back in again, and then suddenly it works. <laughs> and you never know what the real issue was Yeah. until the very end. It's wonderful. You try everything except for the solution that actually works, and the solution is always simple. Yeah. It's lovely. I've known that. I've been there. So we have Faint readying up, a bunch of Ascent people, AFK and Spawn maybe having a team huddle. Oh. Obviously, one of the benefits of LAN is that you can show people things on your monitor, show immediately just have responses from your teams on what you think you should be doing, rather than having to sort things out in Mumble, go through like organized map talks on, on an evening or whatever. So uh, Ascent, maybe coming up with some sneaky tactics to pull out in this Golden Cup, because it's only going to take one to win a round. Maybe even, you know, good old Melo? Coach, coachman, coach looking over their shoulders. We, we were speaking to Mailer the other day about how, how much involvement he has in, in the actual strategies of Ascent. And obviously, he hasn't played in a very long time, Mailer. He trusts these players' insights more than his own. He doesn't really coach them as much as manage the team, obviously. He's the Ascent uh, CEO, so he's not actually the, the TF2-related mm guy telling them what to do. I think they'd leave that all to themselves to discuss and come up with the best strategies, but yeah. Even just a pep talk. Yeah, even just, just a pep that, talk That's a good helpful. enough. Offering giving them, giving just them massages. Pints on, pints on me after a game, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. It's going to be good enough for them, probably. Yeah, we'll give, them a, give them a reward for it. Give them a chocolate bar if they win, and then they'll hold, hold suddenly the, Hold the carrot on a stick in front of yeah, their faces. Yeah, you know? absolutely. An unusual on a stick, maybe? No, not these days. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. They're pretty worthless now, so... Maybe maybe a bad idea. I don't know. Well, apparently uh, it's skis they're waiting on. Is it? Seems it? like. Yeah. Hmm. Can't wait to get into this golden cap. God damn. Yeah. Let's let's try and theory craft who's gonna win it. I think it boils down to the mid. Like yeah. the mid, if it, if the mid decisively goes in one way or another, either team is just gonna roll it and snowball off of it, but if the mid's very slow again and doesn't really decisively take it, like only like two people die on a team and yeah. then they back off, it, we could see a very long round and then it's just a war of attrition which team decides to make less mistakes wins. These mids have been very back and forth. We've not seen one team really be dominating every mid fight. Yeah. We've been seeing some mids where it was just one or two kills made a team decide to back out and then uh, they were able to hold on second or get the medic out for last. These things that just keep you in the round, whereas there are some mids, obviously, where you just full wipe and then mm. you basically just have to give up the round unless you can uh, get all your off-classes to, to do something crazy on last. Faint are readying up. We're still still waiting on Ascent by looks things. Shaking my head. Shaking Figuratively. My head. Not literally. Oh. You can do it literally. I, There's a camera. I, 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 I can't move my head more than like an inch. All right. It's Why? Like <laughs> <laughs> Is it because of these gamer chair pillows, they, like keeping you locked in? They kind of are, actually. Not not gonna lie, they kind of are. <laughs> I can I can shake my chair, I guess. This is it's my like first time sitting in a gamer chair. Is it this? Is it really? Time? Yeah, I've just got your your old standard office chair at home. This is really comfy. Comfy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> How are you finding land so far, Cerny? Doing good, going, going honestly. Good yeah. It's chill, it's nice. Always great to have people hang out. Oh, I think they've readied up. Yeah, it looks like the team's already ready. All so right. getting straight into this golden, golden cap. cap here. Let's see what these teams are going to be doing in this golden cap. The one to take the first map of a process. Let's see what these teams try to do. Uh, boat mode a little quicker to the mid here. And uh, he's going to be uh, the one to spam, take more ground. Again, both teams looking like they're going to be pacing themselves, seeing what the enemies are doing first. Uh, actually, Jay going very far forward with a bomb immediately, uh, trying to take some ground. Gink and Poppy immediately responding. The entirety of Sin is just bunched up in that corner there. 
A lot of damage getting laid down into them, but no frags falling either way just yet. Oh, Batman the first. Out of the fight though. Skies has fully oh, just yeah. left his team, and that's going to be what eventually gets all the kills for Faint here. Skies getting caught in in IT. All the rest of his team, obviously, as you said, bunched up in that corner. Just they're not going to be six man sacking onto Skies on last this time, which is probably wise. So he is going to stay alive with his Uber, but. Still faint in control of mid and second. Of mid. That, that was decisive. Like, as soon as Skis was disconnected, you just saw it, the health of all players just drop down, and there's nothing they could do anymore. They were just they were stuck in the meat grinder. That being said, they do have a chance to actually hold last here. Um, Faint, you know, obviously gonna look to control second. Oh, he all the way in behind. He's actually getting the meat shots onto Seeds. Seeds has to use his Uber. Oh, no. That's bad. That's real bad for uh, for Fane here because the center now they're gonna be trying to re uh, re push here, probably. Yeah, that was sneaky from Yite. Just ran all the way through top lobby, gets in behind Seeds and forces him off. Obviously, much easier for Seeds to surf a rocket than it is for him to dodge bullets. Kind of. Even no matter how good you are at medic, that one's always kind of tricky. So Ascent looks like they don't want to use their Uber out here. They're taking it slowly, just making sure they catch everything out. But Classy was hiding in lower IT. They spot him out as well, so he's going to leave. Yeah, that's, uh, that's that. They're giving it up very, very passively. Fane just going to be building on mid, making sure that they can maybe make up this difference. And I see Gink on the bazooka. Very interesting choice of weaponry here. Um, yeah, this is this is Gink's new theory crafting. Obviously, when you can release two rockets at once, it makes it basically impossible for a medic to avoid you if you can sync them up like that. But now we have a scrappy fight going on on mid. Lucas getting taken down. Tomas as well. Pappy is so low. He does get the arrow in time to stay alive. And now he's putting in the work. He's doing some damage, but it's not enough as he gets taken down. Seeds and Classy already way out of there. Yes, and just clean up everybody else. They're just moving forward here, really. Haven't had to use yet either. They're still they're still holding on to their Uber. It's equal now, but they can just hold on to it. And yeah, they, they're not even gonna have to use it for a second as well. Faint are just, they have to back off so much. Slam is just pressuring out uh, Lucas there as well. Just trying to run in, get taken down by the sentry ultimately, but the Gink actually moving very far forward, trying to counter sack. Does not manage to kill anybody though. And you're gonna see ourselves with Faint holding last yet again. Yeah, and we have to remember in this uh, new format of Golden Cup, if you hold mid for long enough, you will win the map as well as if you uh, push into last. So Ascent could theoretically just hold around here with uh, mid under their control, but obviously they would prefer to get all the way into last. That's not how they roll. They're not seven. Yeah, Come on. absolutely. They're not going to make us fall asleep. They're actually going to play the game, which is nice to see sometimes. That being said, Slemish is on the sniper, look, uh, looking to maybe get a little bit of a cheeky headshot there. Thomas is on the counter sniper as well. Everybody's just very far back, though. Slemish trying to peek through roll out there. Nothing he can do, really. Nobody's just nobody there. Gets spotted out and just has to back off again. Yeah, Faint are so good at dealing with these snipers. They are really rigid in how they deal with them. They always have seeds inside here. Uh, Lucas barely peeks anything. He just occasionally pops his head around lobby to spam things out. And then it's mostly Gink and Pappy just jumping around, making sure that uh, Slemnish in this case can't get any angles onto someone where he could cause, cause a disaster for Faint. Thomas is also looking to obviously counter sniper a little bit. Ooh. Does not does not manage to pick up uh, Gink there. And Thomas gets onto Laz though. Ooh. Nice headshot. That's gonna that might be an opening. Yeah. Oh, he gets oh. damage onto Jay as well, forcing him off back to the choke. So he's gonna take another wider angle. Gets the sightline on. More damage. Jay again taking him down. Another one fifty. Ah, this is the one we want against Slemnish though, and that's gonna be an opening now for uh, Sen to actually take the lobby here. No sniper to worry about anymore. Slemnish can peek a little bit wider and see if he can actually get this crucial shot that he's looking for onto something like Lucas or Seeds even. Maybe he can even just, even just copy or something. That would be a crucial pick. Classy doing a lot of damage and getting him taken down by some spams. Good, nice headshot onto, onto Poppy there as well. Thomas back up again looking, oh, nope, can't, can't counter snipe that. And now with two down, Ascent definitely have the opportunity. Slendish goes down to Pappy as well, but with the sentry down, Laz is going to be free to sack in, but it's just a fake bomb. Lucas takes him out with a trap that he was holding in lobby there, so it's two down on Ascent, and they want to roll this forward to Faint. They're going to catch off Jay near the number two position, but he does jump away. 
after Gink goes down, they're also just going to reset back to last. We might see the Dispenser and Sentry back up as Classy switches to Engineer. Slimish on Spy as well. Ooh. He's, he's getting he's getting wacky. He's, he's like opening his, his toolkit here. He's looking at the things he's got, and he's just, he's just choosing whatever he wants, whatever he can. Crossing things off his list, but Faint have spy have checked. Fucked onto it. Yeah, they've uh, disguised as a spy and found out that uh, Slemnish is, in fact, playing that. So Laz also Tomas. getting reflected by Tomas there. Yeah, Tomas is already on Pyro, just looking to fry a spy right now. He's ready. He's ready to check, and they're they're probably just waiting for Laz now. Actually, I, uh, now like I, I think at this point, Asena probably also aware that Faint are aware. Yeah. So yeah. they're gonna they're gonna try to like cause a distraction if they want to send in Slam this year at all. I don't. It's the think only way. Will. Yeah. Laz is holding the or, door yeah, open. He's just gonna Slam go back. Slamish, Slamish yeah. runs back into the forward spawn, changes onto Sniper instead after Faint clocked onto him. But Tomas is gonna stay on Pyro. Tomas doesn't know yet, of course, that uh, the spy has been switched off. So. It could very well be that if, if he doesn't see anything for long enough, maybe he will he will also decide to switch back. Yeah, he's going yeah, he's to try to check for the new classes, while Slemnish is just trying to not stand on stickies in one, trying to get himself an angle. They're really, both teams are really, really careful, really strategic here. Do not want to take any risks at all. Nobody wants to lose this first map, so both teams are playing it extremely carefully. Tomas going for the pixel peak. He's got like a single pixel, a single degree of vision where you can see someone. Slemish getting taken down, peaking a little bit too ambitiously. Tomas now having a little bit more room to work with, potentially. Yeah, I suspect uh, he's going to get someone to open this shutter up for him like Gink did previously. That got them a pick that got them to get all the way out of last. The door is open, and Tomas is trying to take his shots, but bot mode's just hiding in that corner. And yeah, they do take down Jay, actually. Jay was trying to... Uh, go in there on the, on the lobby side. It's taken down Gink immediately in with a response. Oh, Pops him off. nice force from Gink. And Tomas headshot bot mode too. Brought all that. And the, yeah, the banner the, comes the out. The banner oh, popped here. off. This is going to be an easy push out on the second here. Seeds, of course, taking his 100% uber charge with him. We could see another coast to coast from Faint to get this to 3-2. Pappy's going to move back to switch off the battalions, it looks like. So they're going to wait for him to be ready and raring to go. The rest of the respawns coming in with him, of course, so Ascent already far back on middle, ready to just escape as soon as they see players shiny testing players. them. Shiny players. Shiny players. See, it does have that Uber. It wouldn't be unlikely. They obviously, they want to uh, get into mid here without using it, but if they have to, they, uh, their hand might be forced. Uh, slowly making their way forward. They're getting, eating a lot of spam bombing by Laz as well. Does not get much except for a force, and that might be enough to buy them time because Ascent, they're immediately backing out. Lots of damage being dealt by Lucas, but ultimately nobody dies. And Yes, he's already on 100. And people, people running in through IT as we do have six minutes left on the game. Our our players forgot to change the config to Golden Cap, so just letting everyone know whoever does hold the middle point at the end of six minutes from now, when the timer shows 15 minutes at the top of your HUD there, that will be when the round ends. So in the meantime, Lucas slowing down this push by taking Jay down. Sunnish. Just, just pick, picking full of Pokemon a little bit, you know? Just poking around, but a little bit of damage being dealt. Happy trying to jump in, Gink as well, both of them getting taken down though. Yeah, all no soldiers, soldiers, soldiers on the server are down at the moment, and Seeds wants to take this 1v1 here. Both teams using onto a singular scout, but Skis did flash a bit, so his Uber will not be as good. But there's not enough of an advantage for either team to do anything. They're just going to wait for Gink to respawn. We're into, we're into the last five minutes of this golden cap. You know, Faint don't, don't, uh, I mean, if they, obviously if they don't lose, if they, but even if they don't, like, push out and take mid, that might just be the round for Ascent. They, Ascent look to be pretty comfortable trying to just do that. But they're pacing themselves a lot as well. It, again, nobody wants to take any risks. As long as they have mid, they can still win this map. And it, as while well, it would be unfortunate and boring, it might very well just happen. Yeah, Laz, the only person who's in any kind of forwards position, he's just scouting out lobby. The rest of Ascent playing super safe and far back. Both teams just waiting for their Uber charges to come back. Tomas has switched onto Spy. I don't think he's just checking. Yeah, it looks like he's just checking. Papi is very strict about his team going on Spy. He absolutely hates that class. He doesn't think it actually works very well. He thinks it's a lot of a gimmick. And if teams rely on it too much, then they won't get out of these uh, habits of actually breaking stalemates with more you know, 
uh, standard ways that you can... Traditional means. Yeah, traditional means that you can apply to any circumstance rather than having to rely on one person getting lucky and not getting spotted out and things like this. Jade dying, though, opens up a lot of space for Faint here in the lobby, and uh, Ascend Amiga going to back off off of that as well. Um, Faint poking forward now, Tomas in the, the lower lobby, they're just, just changing a little bit of damage. You know, they're, they're yeah, again, pacing themselves. On the other side, Jay has gone on to Spy. He doesn't Ooh. have Pappy to tell him to switch off, so... <laughs> Jay might, might just commit to it, yeah, that's what he's doing. Crab walking over there, seeing if he can sneak in. The old sneaky beaky, that's what spies do apparently. I don't I, I don't really play that class, but apparently they can go invisible. So they can sneak around. That being said, he is he's, he's desperately trying not to get bumped right now, and I believe they have actually spotted him. Yeah. So Tomas shooting the corner that he was in there, definitely checking for a spy right now. And this is exactly why we were we were just talking about that. If as soon as they know that there is a spy, the spy has absolutely no chance of doing anything. So now they're probably going to sack someone else in and get uh, Jay to switch back as they did before. Thomas actually dying, a little bit, a little bit aggressive, a little overextended, and he's going to pay with his life. Obviously, you don't want to lose a player when you're trying to hold last, and yeah, send moving forward here again. They they have a spy, so yeah, unless pretty much a five v five, unless he hits an an astonishing amount of revolver shots, he's not going to be doing much. Yeah, also dying. That being oh, said, which he is doing. Oh my god! Oh no! Jay takes down Seeds with the revolver, just walks in and shoots him. And they're all straight in. The Uber Charge pops off immediately. Four frags already for Ascent NA. Classy getting taken down by bot mode as well. That's the round, that's the map for Ascent NA. What a huge play from Jay Hyunpei. Who needs a knife to spy? You've got a gun. Just shoot people. To kill things. Just, just shoot people. Yeah. Just shoot them. Just shoot them. It's long range. It works. It works every time. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have our analysis, well, yeah. maybe. Let's actually, have our like analysts tell people to just shoot him if we're ready to go to Eckstein, Dumtum, and Alba on the desk. Thanks so much, Cerny and Pom. Great job casting that match. And uh, very exciting gold cap as well. You know, we, we saw it go coast to coast. We also see our teams, um, you know, pulling some, some tricks out of the bag, uh, going for some wacky stuff. Uh, King doing the, the beggar's bazooka. And, and then, of course, also uh, spies and snipers coming out galore. Um, Dom, what, what were your thoughts on that, particularly, like, you know, how these teams were, were trying to break the stranglehold, um, some of the tricks that they were pulling out for this golden cap? It was interesting. I, I think something Ippoli said yesterday, it really applies here, which is that Faint is a team that wants the right line between what is safe and not. And throughout the regular game, they had a little bit more struggle than, it with, uh, than they usually do with most of the top EU teams. They needed to find, like, what works or doesn't for quite a while at the beginning of the game. A lot of the sacks were really impressive at the beginning of the game for the soldiers on Ascent NA. They got so much mileage with them. Seeds got forced so much more than you usually uh -huh. see him have to use in like emergency situations, which is really uncommon to see. As for other stuff that came out, like you said, the more gimmicky stuff. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of sniping on both sides. I think every single scout played sniper at some point in this game. <laughs> and yeah. Gink on top of that as well. So like everybody just played Snipe at some point and it's really hard to say who was the best because all of them did like really good stuff overall. Uh -huh. I still think Fane played with the Sniper better and against it as well. Their counter Sniper aggression was really, really well done. There was a stalemate from mid to second and they just immediately pulled out the aggression on choke the moment the Sniper revealed himself in the choke point. That being said, for the overall gimmicks, uh, I think you can't even just say EU gimmicks. We saw what Ascend NA is capable of, of with yeah. the uh, off classes. However, maybe the real EU gimmick is just the awareness of what is coming. Uh -huh. uh, every time they try to pull out an off class on Ascend NA, somebody was already in spawn, spy checking right, to see yeah. what is coming. Yeah, certainly um, strong team play there of making sure that they were aware of what was coming up because that did shut down a lot of the options. And uh, as the casters were saying as well, you know, we were expecting Jay to, you know, pull back to spawn and switch, but they kind of just rolled with the punches. And I think as well, you know, just the timing of uh, Golden Cap where, you know, they had about five minutes left. They knew that, you know, if they just kept the pressure up, so Jay decided to stay in there. Um, Alba, particularly, uh, what were some of your thoughts on how that Golden Cap went down? Yeah, so it, just before, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the beginning of the regulation time, uh -huh. uh, where it was very, very back and forth. You had, like, uh, Lucas bombing in deep, getting a few picks, and you had Botmo bombing back, and it was a very cool dynamic, very back and forth. Uh, but I think at the end of, of the regulation, it really went down to uh, a series of individual plays that uh -huh. led into rounds. And then same with the golden cap. Uh, it was basically individual plays that really got ascent uh, to the position they were in, and then the revolver play securing the back, uh, the, the golden cap for them. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, let's take a look at the logs as well so that we can kind of pick apart a few more of those individual performances as well. Um, right away, I mean, I know that Dom and I, uh, as well as you, know, you, Alba, were taking a peek at these uh, stats while uh, we were getting into the golden cap. Slemnish at the top with 20 kills and seven deaths. Very impressive stuff. Um, Dom, some other things that stand out to you? I mean, obviously, you have to talk about the Fane combo doing incredible work. Lucas, Thomas, Papi leading in the charges every time they went for a fight. If that doesn't perform, then the rest of them can't do anything either. Classy and Gink are reliant on their combo opening up stuff. And it doesn't matter if your flanks, uh, if your flanks KD or damage looks like worse in comparison to everybody else. Because as long as they do the damage and get the kills when the combo does something where they need them as well, as long as those two things happen at the same time, it's just still working out for them anyway. And for the most part, it did. Obviously, not quite working out until the very end, but it still worked out in the grand scheme of things. Alba, your thoughts on these stats? Yeah, uh, bot mode stats is jumping out a little bit for me. Uh, it was a yeah. He had some, some good plays during regulation time, but most of the time it was quite silent, and it was more focused on uh, off-classes and uh, the scouts, soldiers doing stuff. So a little bit silent from bot mode. Yeah, and his damage taken number was the same as Lucas Tank, um, but uh, bot mode survived a little bit more. We'll get to the medic stats in a second um, as we also check out um, our, um, well, actually, here are our medic stats. Um, and um, some things that stand out to you here? I mean, just a second ago, we saw Seed still died less than Skis, but overall, he got forced so much more. So at the expense of living a lot of situations he might not should have, he lost a lot of the Ubers he could have had. Still a one-drop coming out, and that was obviously a, a crucial one on top of that. So. Logs wise, it doesn't look too bad for Seed, but it, yeah. a lot of the context of the match itself is like really important here to keep in mind. Yeah, I think that's interesting as well that uh, the stats showing us that biggest advantage loss for Ascent was zero. They never had a, a new recharge advantage. Um, does that strike you as uh, odd, Albert? Yeah, that's a little bit odd. Usually you see uh, either team at least losing one mm -hmm. fairly big advantage due to maybe the rest of their player dies and they have to escape with the, with the medic and the scout. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's a little bit strange. Now, um, we didn't get a chance to hear your insights um, before this match kicked off, Dom, but uh, I, I think it's, it's probably accurate to say that, that that played out how you expected it to, right? Yeah, it was, really, it was really interesting because I, I think just from like their plan A, like what they want to play at all times, I think Ascent and A was the better team in this game. Their main play style worked a lot better. It was faint, it had to adapt, but if they were any worse as a team, it wouldn't have been even anywhere as close. But Faint and A, or the Faint, sorry, just Faint, yeah, um, yeah. is good enough a team to be able to adapt. They constantly brought in new threats. We saw the beggars, we saw the sniper plays, yeah. sniper to mid, uh, spy plays as well, and just all of that was like highly necessary to keep this thing as even as it is. Ascent and A's main plays that obviously worked throughout the entire game pretty much to a satisfying degree. And uh, here's the, the stats from the Golden Cap. Um, I guess just one more quick question um, about some of the strategies that you uh, mentioned. Um, uh, does that, does that make you nervous as, you know, like from a coach's perspective, does that make you nervous to see things like the Beggar's Bazooka pulled out in Golden Cap? Or do you feel like that is the time to pull out some of these weirder strategies? No, they certainly practiced them mm -hmm. quite a bit. I mean, they wouldn't trust it if they weren't, if it weren't something they would want to br bring out during a Golden Cap at LAN in the knockout stages. So they have confidence in it. it the Beggar's, for example, was not something that quite worked out, but obviously not everything can just be perfect every time. So. It might happen again. We'll see when the time comes. I am fully prepared for them to just be innovative again, though. Mm, yeah. Uh, Alba, your thoughts on Fank Gaming as we move forward here? Do you think that they should uh, you know, continue to innovate or focus on some of the more fundamental aspects of the game? Yeah, I, th I think they did, did well. Maybe focus a little bit on uh, keeping the coordination up and try to get more done with, with, the, with the soldier bombs. Uh, and I think going into Gully, I think they're, they're going to do do better. I think that map might suit them better, especially the mid. Dom, do you want to give us a score prediction for goalie real quick? I think this is going to be a map that's really good for Fane, so I'm going to just say Fane will win this. Okay. Uh, Alba, I actually got to cut you Fane. off because we're going to have to hop over to our casters as this match about to go live. Back to Cerny and Bum. Yep, we're right into the game immediately, actually. The teams have already rolled out. Lucas is very fast to mid, just spamming the damage down onto Ascent there in the big door, uh, which forced them to essentially walk below, and then the frags immediately fall their way as well. Slemnish, Laz, and Yite already did. Uh, Seeds does go down, though. Jay went up the drop down and manages to flank him. The rest of Fane now moving forward to see if they can get onto Jay and Skis here. Skis caught out kind of in lobby alone, essentially, as Jay's nowhere to oh. be found. Finally, finally comes in to clean up Lucas, but Skis is dead. Yeah, that's great. At least they can 
get skis as well there as the mid. So uh, three down for Faint and just skis down on the side of Ascent NA. They're obviously going to be trying to push into second straight away if they can before the heels get there. So already through the choke, Gink's making some space. Jay trying to uh, force him back down. Tomas and Happy just waddling forwards while Plaz is in behind. Actually gets onto uh, Lucas in the choke. So a oh. demo pick and that's, that's a crumble. more and more. Yeah. Everything is just going down. Everybody's dying and... Uh, Gink and C just have to run for their lives. The Slender is just not letting up the chase at all. He, he really wants to just make sure that these people possibly even die. But at the very least are no longer posing any threat to him immediately. And that's that's exactly what's happening. We have captured the control point. Yeah, so we do see everything equalizing. Tomas is on heavy in the forward spawn for some reason. Not sure what he's uh, doing chilling out there. This could be a new strategy. He's got a very wrinkly brain, okay? Watch this. They're going to pop the stickies, and now he's going to walk out of the door, and he's going to be behind. This okay. could actually be huge if he does walk out behind and on heavy. Or he might just be a kid. Okay, no, he backs yeah, forward. Yeah, backs forward. That's definitely um, the reasonable thing to do in that situation. As right. we see, again, uh -oh. as is the standard at this point, we've got sentries going up on Gully Wash last at basically all times. Just so much easier to have a sentry there to deny bombs rather than have to have your scouts do it manually. You get that auto aim to do it for you. Yikes trying to make a play on the point gets taken down, but Pappy does get taken down in return. They also took down Jay in the... Uh, being a little bit more aggressive in lobby there. Uh, so two players down on the side of a sent here. Uh, I think not taking any risks though at all. They still have the sentry up, so they're probably just going to look to wait for a little bit of a better advantage to push off of or to try to push out. Because Gully isn't easy to push out of, unfortunately, traditionally. So yeah, they have Thomas on the on the power now, just right clicking on the sentry, making sure that nothing can get close to it. And uh, that's probably just what they're going to be confident with sitting for a while as uh, Poppy's back on the battalions again. He's probably going to try to build that for a bit. Yeah, Papi's loving these banners recently, and Battalion's definitely one of the best options. Tomas spy checking as well to see if anyone is uh, trying anything sneaky on Ascent, but both teams just content to sit around for a while. They're not under the time constraints as they were in the Golden Cap anymore, obviously. Jay using that cheeky glitch on the, on the, on the door oh, there, where you can just door. fire through. Fire through the side? I don't think that's legal. Is that not? Oh my god, yeah, it's on the point. It's good distraction. So much time. <laughs> Lars in with the bomb as well, out Behind. off that distraction play. He's just in the spawn door. He's going to get taken down too. So effectively, a double sack from Ascent NA here. Botmo's going to leave a cheeky trap up in lobby, and Lucas he does just about it. spot it out. Just nearly was about to jump into it there, so... Got to be safe for now, but yeah, Faint, again, they're pacing themselves. They're not taking any risks at all, not they, moving yeah. forward. They know the respawn. They've got lobby. Up. They know they don't have the time uh, or the space here. They just want to get back to last. Lucas has put a very cheeky trap up on the roof of lobby. If anyone tries to peek into, uh, into the balcony area, they'll get taken down by that one. Both teams are playing very carefully, very strategically, not, not like taking any risks so far. Not trying to go for any really cheeky peeks. Again, Yike going, looking to go water again, maybe. Uh, seeing if we can push the point again. Uh, we've got, oh, Bala oh. actually goes down to the trap from Lucas. There you go. We've got Guardian Gink as well on the point, making sure that nothing happens there. And that's Yai and Botmo down. I think this might just be what Faint we're looking for to push out here now as they take the, the high ground here uh, with Poppy and his medic rolling forward as well as Lucas taking the lobby. Lots of, lots of spam being exchanged here. The soldier's still bombing in, trying to, trying to just deal damage, trying to slow them down. Classic game. They and the heals, the heals are so far away from the side of oh. Ascent. They're all getting taken down here. You can see Ski's desperately trying to arrow people, but he can't attach the beam to them, which is going to let... Uh, Happy and his team take the first two frags of the fight. Now Skis does have to pop off onto Jay. Seeds uses as well, but he drops all his players. He does manage to find Classy just in time. Does keep Lucas alive with the flash just as well right at the last second there. But that's given a sense, the opportunity to push back in, knowing all these players are low after the Uber, and they do take down Lucas and Classy. So they might be able to rush this into last with no demo alive on the side of Faint. Jay is going to be bombing forwards, but Tomas just denying it really well on the heavy class. He does go down, so now it's all on to Gink defending this point, and he is going to go down, so Ascent take our first round here on Gully Wash. Good round. Good round. They rolled that very nicely. Just, you know, making making sure that 
because Papi, uh, not Papi, Lucas was dead, they could just they could just run onto that point, and that's exactly what they did. Just yeah. eliminating anybody that stood between them and their objective, and AJ took that round very confidently. Let's see if they can repeat that for another four times, or if uh, <laughs> Faint actually tried to respond here. So right into the second round, this time around, Bart Oh, that's straight onto Lucas in that fight, but Lucas manages to pipe him down. Now King in the turn. Bombing into the oh combo of a Samson AJ up onto the faint combo, doing a lot of damage but not getting the kills he needs. And now Skies is just trying to surf around Gink. And Classy going to be taking that one down. Slemnish on a last ditch attempt. He does sneak down, drop down, trying to get into mid here. He is hiding behind everyone. They yeah. don't know he's there, so. No idea. He could go up elbow here and get onto seeds. Maz, is also Maz has already got behind, and that rocket jump might have given their position away. Oh, they're onto Lucas. Lucas. Poor guy. You don't want to. You don't want to see that when you arrive to mid. Two people in your face. That's not nice. I mean, they do kill both of them, but that's gonna slow down Fane a little bit here if they're if they're not having their demo for this last push. Yeah, he's on a pretty quick spawn though. So once they get this uh, forward spawn from Captain Second, they're gonna be rushing in. In fact, they are already even without Lucas in the push. Tomas not gonna be able to take down the sentry gun though. That's why you need a demo man in your Ubers. And Tomas and Papi both losing their lives for it. It immediately flips into Ascent NA's favor. Skis has the Uber Charge advantage. They have the kill advantage. Everyone's going down. Lucas also caught off far forwards onto the point here. He's going down. Seeds just has to run away with Classy. They should have just waited for that respawn. It would have taken another four seconds or something. They were too frantic. They, I don't, and especially like with 20 minutes left. I don't know why they so desperately wanted to go forward that quickly. But obviously it didn't quite work out for them. I was sitting there just rolling forward here with their Uber ad and just making, making sure Fane are having a terrible time. Get, having to just run away and back off from everything. And they're going to be taking mid and just also immediately aggressing into Big Door here, just poking forward. Seeing some more than they can do again. They, they still have a slight ad here. And it's going to be no. Oh, actually, nice trap by Lucas gets patched off Slemish, but. Seeds now has his Uber up, so it's Yeah, but they've situation. already made a lot of space. Laz and Jay bombing through the choke. They do eventually decide to slow down and back out. That's pretty nice what Ascent were trying to do there, just taking as many points for free off their Uber charge advantage. It doesn't matter that they've let Seeds get his in the end. They are still 1-0 up, but if that's anything to go by from the first map, we, uh, we'll see Faint come back pretty, pretty soon. Doesn't necessarily mean anything. Also, we have Slemnish. Oh, oh, yep, there you go. On the sniper in Big Door, he picks up Gink and he's looking for a cheeky peek here. Does not hit the shot onto Lucas. Lucas Baz in with the counter sack. Oh. Super high, gets one oh. rocket on Seeds, but that's just all he will get. Seeds actually does use off onto both scouts now, trying to take this Uber into Big Door. Classy making them flash quite a bit on the side of Ascent NA, but. Uh, Faint have to reconvene in lobby. Looked like they're trying to go up top, but they've decided against it after Lucas and Classy are still waiting in the respawn queue, so they're going to give up second to Ascent NA. Slamnish still on the sniper and Pappy still on his battalion, so we might not see a very long stalemate by any means if both these teams look willing to, to make plays. Yep, depends on how well they can break it. Slamnish is he's playing very far forward. I, I think they're just for some reason they're expecting Faint to push out here, I guess, which is weird, but fair enough. He's probably gonna start moving forward soon and as yeah, Faint are just setting up on last. They're comfortable to hold here for a bit and see what see what the situation has yeah. for them. They're just waiting nice and safe to get their Uber charge, then they can scout out lobby step by step, look for all of Lucas's traps, look for any off classes or hiding players who might try something sneaky, they can just take their time here. They're not under any constraints with one round up after 20 minutes. Now Slemnish peeking in from Riverside. Tomas already has his eye on it as well. It's going to be down to the, the hero shot here. Will Slemnish get it or will he just try to go for the sniper 1v1 first? Ooh. The soldier's immediately aggressing as well. Oh, he goes dangerously low, does not die though. Yeah, he's spammed out of there for a bit. He's going to look down and see if he can just still the night at sightline and Tomas is obviously looking for the counter pick here he really wants to get that Slemnish kill oh Slemnish sneaking around though seeing if he can take down Gink on the flank if he gets this then uh it'll be wide open oh, no, he gets Tomas. but he gets Tomas with the body shot and headshot onto Gink as well actually nice nice shot there Puffy now finally taking down Slemnish to respond with last trying to bomb in immediately denied by the sentry Batman also trying to spam it down a little bit does not manage to do so though and that's two players down for, uh, for Ascent now 
Oh, three down, in fact, as Lucas does catch Yite off guard in lobby. Lucas now immediately wants to be going forwards, putting in damage. Happy oh, and Seeds, yeah, they're taking out up top. It's going to be so easy to take this with the banner. He manages to get Skis to force off first. Seeds isn't using at all. All those players from Ascent are already out. There's no threat to Seeds to have to use here. If they can take uh, middle cleanly, that's going to be another coast to coast from Faint. Not only did, he, did they make uh, Skis pop, they, judged, they nudged him into drop down, so he was completely disconnected from oh, his team. Wow. So, oh no, but Seeds! Oh, no. Seeds just dropped, I think. No! Has got straight onto him from drop down. Now all of the kills going for Ascent and A. Slemnish going to be taking down Pappy in the choke here. Inevitably, Classy has dropped down, drop down. He's behind. He has to make a play here on skis pretty soon. Otherwise, there's going to be a big advantage into last. But it looks like bot mode already expects him to be there as he's stuck up the wall, blocking Classy in choke. He's not letting him get through. He's not. He's, he's, he's not taking. But he's still there to take down Laz at least. Botmo does get his stickies too. So Classy's just being a nuisance on mid. The longer he can delay, the better for. Um, oh! oh! He actually wins against Yite too. Two shots of full health Yite from about 20 health himself. That's very nice from Classy. That's going to be slowing down Ascent a decent amount as Seeds has already amounted himself 60% Uber. He if he can so get, fast. yeah, if he can get up to 100 during this push, then oh. they'll be in perfect position. And Botmo gets his bomb denied in this push, so. Stentry Gun does go down. Slemnish is playing points so well. There's already almost all the time on point. Lucas lives up in and both soldiers have to block this. They're all just throwing their lives onto point to stop it, but it's not enough to stop a sent NA. Looked pretty good for, for Fame for a while there. They were all staying alive for very long, but eventually they just got caught out in the spawn door. Yeah. Didn't do anything. Seeds unfortunately dying with 98% Uber, so if he had lasted literally one more second, that would have been a whole different story for Faint, but he didn't, so here we are at 2-0 into the third mid. And let's see what these teams try to do this time around. Faint immediately very aggressive game, very aggressive on the low ground. Maybe picks up last trades with him, essentially. And uh, Poppy also getting taken down immediately. The uh, thing, uh, thing they're not looking too strong anymore. Sent Jay, uh, they lose Jay, so both soldiers down on either team now. Oh, nice pipe from Lucas to take down bot mode. Now the mid is going back in favor of oh, no. Faint by looks of it. But now, oh, Seeds does manage to defend himself. I think he got a nice saw there. He is, did, yeah. yeah, so his scouts eventually come back to defend him from Yite. That was scary. You just see Yite in, in Seed's face and just shoots down Lucas. And, oh no. At least it worked out because Classy was there to defend him, but that could have gone very poorly. Laz is getting some nice damage and trying to stop him coming through choke, but it is Ascent that uses off their Uber charge first at the end of the day. And now Seeds is going to be keeping everyone alive in choke. They're just going to leave all this space here because Classy's gone down in the Uber. They don't want to get repushed on super quickly after the um after the uber that's when you're most vulnerable when your uber's fading you've lost a kill everyone can just charge in onto the rest of your team who was previously pushing and if they get any more of those frags they can really roll it forwards now it looks like faint have re rotated all the way into big door and laz is causing havoc he gets ginked he gets seeds down low but seeds does finish him off he's with on an arrow four health behind and he's in lobby okay he gets he gets taken down by yite but yeah, he was caught in. Unfortunately, he could not go anywhere either, and that's just, that's a very, very bad, bad loss there on the side of Fane, and they just have to back off. There's nothing they can do. Yeah. So just take mid. Long spawn for Lucas. That means he's not going to get the forward spawn, as Ascent do just cap off now, three seconds before Lucas spawns. So he's going to have to walk all the way from last. They probably aren't going to push off that, though, as the Ubers do even up. Jam bot mode just spamming through the choke, as you'd expect. That goal it goes, we yeah. sit around that choke a lot. Luke is also sticking up uh, very cheeky traps there in, uh, in Big Door, seeing if you can maybe catch somebody off guard with that. I don't know if they see them. And they're coming, uh, Ascent also addressing a lot in Big Door here, looking to push forward maybe. They do spot that trap, and Slim also spots the one in the pallets. So, neither of those really working out, unfortunately. But it's still a lot of fighting happening in that Big Door. Just people changing their stuff left, right, and center. Yeah, Yaiden actually manages to slip fast. through. Yeah, they've opened that basement door for Yite to get all the way behind. I don't know if Faint even know about it yet. Looks like they do as Gink bombs up top onto Yite. He does get taken down very low, but a nice uphill direct from Gink. Does take down Yite. Pressing his P-Rec bookmark bind on that one. That's going in the frag, dude. <laughs>
All right. Well, that's that's uh, Thomas still down as well instead of Painter. He got he got killed by some spam by Bart. Oh, oh Laz up drop down gets the force. That was so sneaky. And now Skis popped off the Uber. A while afterwards, he has about 50% to chase with, but it looks like he's not going to. Faint all rotating around to Big Door, perhaps expecting a Big Door repush, or trying to go for one themselves now that they've seen no resistance here. Both scouts getting spammed back, so okay. it seems like everything's just slowing down. Once staying, a little, staying a little bit more passive, yeah, looking, looking to again pace themselves. They don't want to overcommit to anything. They don't want to take any risks. They want to make sure that... They don't give Ascent too much room to work with. They don't want to give them too many mistakes like they could try to bank off of. It's a it's high stakes. They don't want to mess anything up. So they're just going to be going back to looking through a choke point until you both have Uber and then pressing the right mouse button. As Jay actually tries to tries to just be a little bit too aggressive and goes dangerously low there. Yeah, just usual, usual going wash choke hold. It's getting scary for faint and a uh, for faint and a sorry for faint eu the only faint right now as they have 13 minutes left on the clock they're two nil down they need to find some rounds soon otherwise they are going to be knocked down to the lower bracket and then obviously at risk of elimination if they lose another matchup to anyone the americans looking strong coming into this game laz going to bomb through gets one nice rocket on seeds seeds does hit the surf though gets away to safety and Jay just being very aggressive there as well, gets punished for it though, trying to escape from a drop down, not gonna happen for, for him today. And yeah, yeah, and with two picks, they're definitely gonna move through to Big Door, especially on the soldiers, because this is so hard to lock down without anyone to bomb onto it. Yeah, they it have gone back up to take their inside. They actually make skis use, and now seeds popping off as well. Uber exchange happening on the point of Sento. Looking to back off here a little bit as the, the soldiers finally come back in to re aggress, just doing a lot of damage, but Jay ultimately dying. Oh, yikes, on his one health. Oh, Thomas just about keeps Seeds alive at the end of that fight, and that's really crucial. If Seeds has gone down there, it could have all been a different fight. It wasn't. They kept them alive, and he is going to be able to use, uh, use uh, his, those heals to keep his team alive on a second as well. Potentially even take it into last. We'll have to see. Naturally, the teams are still even Uber, so we'll have to see if there's any openings. Uh, Yite immediately on the NG as well, moving the gear up, making sure that he's defending this last point. It's a staple for Gully Wash, so not a surprise there. Yeah, it's become increasingly common to the point where you rarely see Gully Wash last on the map without a sentry built on it. It makes it so difficult with all this uh, claustrophobic architecture in here, obviously the low ceilings and all the walls. You can't sack in at all without getting seen by that sentry and pinned up against something. So teams just use it all the time. It's a lot easier than having a scout have to aim and take people down. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, it's not even aimbot. It's a server-side aimbot. Yeah. What more could you ask for? Having said, Faint also just peeking, po poking forward a little bit, just seeing what uh, what the situation is. I believe they do know about the sentry, as uh, Ging is now forward in river. We'll have to see if he actually decides to jump in. Jay is peeking a lot and getting some Gets damage Thomas, in. Actually. Yeah, Thomas from Laz uh, on the lower main area, and uh, all the Faint just keep it safe. Leave two second as they usually do after leaving someone in lobby. Jay and Slanish prodding forwards already. Tomas only has three seconds left on the respawn, though. They are uh, going to elect to keep it safe. They're two rounds up. There's ten minutes. They can just afford to hold last and see what park things throw at them. Yeah, park just the bus. Park that bus. Make sure that nobody gets through and faint. They, they have to break the whole... It's, it's, you know, the ball's in their court. They have to do something. They have to make some work. That being said, Lucas is on the quickie bomb launcher. And he's looking to... Ooh. And he's got the lock and load too, by the way. So we could see him lock and load the sentry, and then the delete destroy. the stickies from point, and then have some scouts run in from under the point. Something like that could get a very quick round for faint, which is exactly what they need. Slanish, though, on sniper. Sniper here, looking up river. Oh, Ooh, AFK Lucas gets taken down by staring at his team with a demo pick. They're definitely going to be ramping up the pace here. Ascent Laz already going in deep. He does get air shot by Pappy there, so now it's going to slow down. Slanish just trying to take the peak out of up top here. Everyone's already rotating to big door where they can't get seen from that angle. Very smart from faint to not even give uh, Slendish a chance at seeing their heads. And yeah, they're just going to be resetting here. Ascent again, just going back to the last. 
They have a player down, so they, right. they didn't really have much of a choice. Lucas is still on lock and load quickie bombs. Take notes this time, Lucas. Don't go AFK. Try, Might go better. Still. Somebody went secret there, I think. Yeah, Gink's already in underneath. There's no stickies on point. Classy's playing it as well. Pappy's bombing the point. There's so oh, many point on. plays. Three players going down just to try and pressure that point there. And now Tomas, Lucas, and Seeds, the last men remaining, are going to have to run out to second. And we see maybe if they can slow down a sim here. They're definitely not going to have an easy time holding them, but they might might just be able to wait for their respawns here, as the Uber does come out on the side of Seeds first. So that's going to be a little bit of a worse one, unless Seeds has to flash a lot. Tomas oh, is on Tomas bot gets bot mode behind as well, and that was really good uber charge usage from Faint. They knew that if they used their uber there, they could just keep everyone alive for long enough to delay for the spawners, and that's exactly what's happened. All of Faint now back up and ready to go with bot mode going down as well, and no sentry gun on last. They're peeking in, but Classy is getting taken down. That's yeah, gonna slow them down quite a bunch here, because they, they were hoping to just play that point with no uh, stickies up. I mean, Gink also jumps in trying to see if he can make something happen. Maybe got onto skis, unfortunately does not kill him, and the clock is ticking. The clock's ticking. Faint are throwing a lot of ideas at the wall and nothing's sticking. Yeah, Faint being very proactive. They're trying a lot of different things to try and get this stalemate broken, but none of them working out so far. They're gonna take their way back into lobby. See if they can do another point play with Lucas clearing the stickies off the point once more with the quicker bomb launcher. They're even already on. They're not. They're not even any stickies on the point yet. So they're all in just the, the forwards here in lockers and then the balcony and stuff. But it's gonna be peeking forward. He does take down the sentry actually. So that one's out of the equation yeah. for now. And Gink's already in behind again. He's underwater. He's he's uh, gumming up behind the point. Sticks finally being and put on. has got into secret as well. Classy's taking Ooh. down Slemnish. Pappy's taking down bot mode. And Gink is playing the point. He's gonna just get it. it. And that's it. Just walks on the point, not just people off of it, and there you go. Skis popped off his Uber right at the last second, trying to just jump down onto point. Didn't manage to get on it in time. And they're back in the game. Yeah, really great plays. Coming out with uh, the unique quickie bomb launcher strats there to clear the point, do some point plays. Very good for Faint, and now they have seven minutes to mount this one more round in the comeback, and they could have a chance at winning this map. Let's hope that they can actually do that. They can't really mess up very greatly here, otherwise that could seal their fate. Laz being the first player to go down on the side of a scent, getting sent into the sky box, and having dangerous low on the side of Faint there as well, finally getting healed up. And both teams just now, like, just taking it pretty slow. Ascent is still very aggressive, given the fact that they have lost a player. Nice pipes by bot mode there. Poppy does get taken down eventually, and I believe that is... Uh, yeah, that was Jay behind. He's got, he's got taken down, though, and maybe Faint are going to be moving forward a little bit here now. That was really nice from Faint. They get that one kill, and then they just maintain the player advantage throughout the entire fight. They keep the height advantage. They keep that one extra player over Ascent and Ascent eventually just get the message like, okay, okay, we'll leave through Big Door. We're gonna get out of here, fine. If you don't want us to be here, that's okay. We're going to leave you to it. That being said, Faint, they still they still can't really slow down much. They don't have a lot of time to work with, so they have to, they have to just roll forward here. They have to see if they can make it through Big Door, make it through Choke, take the second point, take the last point, have some sort of opening play, because if they just get themselves in another stalemate here, it's gonna look rough for them. Yeah, and Happy's in trying to break it as we speak. It does not go very well for him at all. His bomb through choke. Laz looking to respond, maybe. He did spot the stickies, though, so it's going to take a little bit more slowly. And actually, the combo moving before for big. Oh, oh Laz is out. Lucas. Oh, he doesn't get him, though. No, Lucas gets taken down by Yike, though, with dead. the scattergun shot from across the map. Now, with a Lucas pick. Ascent would be looking to do something, but they have Jay behind and they have two down as well. So Faint decide this is the perfect time to take a trade. They put Gink in behind as well in the trade. This is really nice. That's something you want to be doing in trades is actually getting an advantage after them with positioning or kills or flashes. And Gink gets exactly that, bombing in from behind. Taking down bot mode. Uh, Yike finding himself uh, kind of alone there for a while before he meets up with his team and just cleans up all of the damage together with Slemnish. And uh, yeah, that's Ascent killing literally everyone. Ooh. Lucas is putting up a fight though. He might be able to get out with his life through Big Door. Oh, he's they know he's behind. on the top. They know he's behind though, don't they? So yeah, they're going to shut him out. Honestly, a demo man behind is probably the least useful class you can have behind. You really want that damage dealing with your team. 
He does manage to recoup with them on mid, but gets immediately taken down. Pot mode, oh my god. Laying a bunch of nice pipes there as well before uh, Thomas gets cleaned up by Jay. And the thing's just crumbling. Yeah. All their players just keep dying. It's very scrappy. Seed somehow lives. Yeah, okay, he's finally dead. And yeah, they're, they're white. Yeah, four minutes left. It looks like Faint are going to have to have another one of their classic coast to coast. We've seen a lot of them already from them this line. It's been very impressive. But they need it right now, or they are going to be knocked down to the lower bracket and at risk. With four minutes left and Ascent with 100% Ubercharge advantage, looks like they're going to be speeding things up. Definitely. I mean, they, they know that they have the big advantage now that they want to just put the final nail in the coffin, essentially, for uh, for Faint here. They're moving forward for River. Thomas um, only has a level one sentry. He's keeping it yeah, secret, and he's ready to switch off when it dies which is right about now as Slemnish already onto the point. Bot mode putting out the damage onto the heavy medic uh, combo in the top corner. But in the meantime, everyone else is dying to faint scout combo. It's just down to bot mode and he gets taken down. Skis running away after getting a sore onto Pappy who was chasing him down. And he's hiding an elbow, waiting for his team to come and help him. If they can, if they get a chance to. But you know what? This is the start of. This is the start of a classic faint coast to coast. Seeds has stayed alive. He's keeping his 100% Ubercharge advantage into mid here. If they don't have to use this, we could see another golden cap. Lucas already putting out the damage, oh. takes down Jay. Laz nice also play. going low, but he does get the force on Seeds, and that's what he needed. Skis now with an Ubercharge advantage, but. Faint want to roll this forwards before they get a chance to use it. They're deep into second. Yeah, they're, they're, they're rolling this forward. They don't want to give Ascent any sort of chances here whatsoever. They know that they're on a timer, and the timer's ticking down very, very fast, so they have to make sure that they actually get something done. But it looks like they're going to recoup for a bit. And uh, Ascent, they, 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 see, they realize, oh, Faint, they're, they're not pushing us. They're not going to pressure us. We have Ad. Why don't we just, like, go forward and stop them? Yeah, and that's what they're going to try and do from up top. Slamnish and Jay taking space. Pappy trying to deny them goes very low and does actually crater. Iatkin is going to crater as well, killing himself with that rocket, trying to save his life. But the Uber does get popped off from Ascent. Jay coming up behind from drop down as Seeds uses Lucas and Tomas going forwards into lobby. Classy fighting off Yite here. Doesn't manage to pick up that kill. And now Seeds caught out of position. Oh, he lets his scout go on the opposite side of him, and that lets him get too sticky by bot mode in lobby. Nice that is to last, and he wins that 1v1 against Laz as well. Oh, he does not get the cap, though. So much time on it, but bot mode. Thomas is under the point. If Thomas can kill Yite here, this could be it as well. He does oh, get the cap. Oh, my God. Faint. They've tied it up 2-2 off of another coast for coast. How do they keep getting away with it? Oh, my God. I didn't even see the point. I thought there was plenty of time for Ascent to be able to stand on that and stop it, but... Apparently not. Apparently not. With one minute left on the clock, it looks like we're going to another golden cap unless someone absolutely rolls from this mid-fight. We'll have to see. Maybe, maybe they'd absolutely destroy either team here, and we're just going to... We're just going to call it quits. We'll have to see. Uh, Jay immediately bombing forward, getting taken down by Lucas. So Lucas is very aware of that. And uh, Laz as well, trying the same, getting taken down too. And two soldiers down on the side of Ascent, and the rest of the team getting mulched and choked by a Gink. He's just in behind. Slamish so the only player alive. Faint actually moving forward very quickly now because they have they have essentially almost wiped Ascent here. 50 seconds on the clock. Faint want to see Badlands on their screens. They want to have this final chance to stay alive in the upper bracket. They're going to recharge on second. Seeds is just getting his Uber up to 100% here. No sentry for the side of Ascent. They've just got the Pyro and Yite on heavy. As Lucas comes in with the bomb, gets reflected by Yite instantly. Everyone's stuck in spawn, but the stickies on point from bot mode get deaded off. Pappy's playing the point now, trying to get the pressure onto it. Luca's going to go down. Pappy's going to go down. It's just Seeds left alive. Unless he can cap this point, it's over, and we're going to Golden Cap. Again. Again. <laughs> On a 2-2 as well. This is, this matchup is unbelievably close. So close. This, Both of these teams won it. So yeah. Close. This LAN is one of the closest we've had in years. Absolutely. Any of the top four teams on their day could be taking this. And Ascent and Faint are both proving that they really want to right now. It's insane. All these players are turning up huge. So many huge plays coming out of all, both teams here. Both teams, like, just taking turns, essentially. Yeah. I think what we want to see here, we want to see Faint throw the mid-fight, 
really catastrophically. So they end up on their last, because that seems to be the only place they can get rounds from, is just wiping off of last and going all the way back to Ascents. It's the momentum theory. Yeah. As soon as, like, they, they take a while, but once they get going, it's a snowball rolling down the hill, they can't stop themselves. And then they're, they're just going hard. Could very well work. Or they can just roll it through mid. They yeah. almost did it on that last they round. They almost did it on that round, yeah. If only they could have had a bit more of a successful Uber. Obviously, the Pyro just holding everyone back with its new mechanics where if you have more momentum going into it you also mm -hmm. take more momentum off in the opposite direction after you get air blasted and it seems the teams are getting ready to go already we might be going into this gone cap pretty speedily do you have a prediction it's almost like last map again you know the teams were extremely evenly matched throughout the match uh and it's just like last map it could be anyone it could be anyone's game I really badly want to see Faint win this because I really want to see another third map where we can scream at them doing some kind of amazing thing at the last second to keep them alive. I really want to see a third map that goes two to two and then we have another golden cap. Yeah, that would be great. And then maybe they can change the format or something so we get a best of five instead. We can get two more maps that do the exact same yeah. thing. That'd be fun. Lots of, lots of wonderful matches. I wouldn't mind seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what these teams are going to be trying to do here though. I, I'm looking forward. It's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. I think if some if just one player goes huge here, and they don't have it last another 15 minutes like the yeah. last golden cap, this could be over very very quickly. And it's it's on it's really on for faint if they want to stay in this series. This is their chance. Yep, everyone joining back up to the server. They're getting the correct config on. So obviously 15 minutes. If a team holds mid at the end of 15 minutes they will be the winner as well as if they manage to cap last, of course, as per usual. Faint readying up. Never mind. Nope, never mind. Okay. <laughs> they like to bait us. It's yeah. Fine. I am very curious about how Badlands would go because Faint have not been keen on it for, for quite a while. But if they've been really practicing Badlands, obviously Badlands one of Seven's favorite maps and Faint look to be the uh, the anti-7 wherever possible. If they've been practicing that, this could be a crazy third map as well. Should we even get to it? Obviously, Ascent NA with the 1-0 map lead right now. If, uh, if this goes their way, they'll be knocking Faint down to the lower bracket. We'll have to find out who, who they'll be facing at a later time. We'll be very unfortunate if they get knocked down, obviously. Everybody wants to see Faint do well. Yeah, but everyone favorite. wants to see Ascent and A do well. Everybody we want to see, see everybody do well. We want to see we want to see a brilliant intercontinental final. Yeah, we want to see a brilliant final in general. We want to see a brilliant land. Yeah, and so far we're definitely having a brilliant land. Both teams readying up. We're getting ready to go into the game. The Golden Cup second map Gully Wash Ascent and A versus Faint Gaming. To all. Let's see how these teams try to take this map immediately. Lots of regression onto bot mode there. Uh, he has to back off for a little bit. And both teams, again, playing it very slowly. No bombs in just yet. Jay uh, taking down Gink. And Lance is actually up drop down. He's going to try to lay a lot of damage to choke. Obviously, Faint are having none of that. Going to shut him down. Lucas gets taken down, though. And that's a demo down. But they were already losing the mid. And uh, losing your demo that late, especially. Not a nice thing. With a commanding mid, just a wave of blue coming across the point, absolutely shutting everyone out in the choke that mid. Pappy's just going to be the last point of call here, jumping backwards as Skis gets all of his team through. Yikes will get dropped down by Gink there on the flank. Oh, he actually comes out of seeds very early. Uh, so yeah, he's, he's responding with his own immediately, obviously. And uh, lots of flashing happening on both sides. Uh, he's caught in. Oh, Jay's in out. behind. Jay was in behind, and Laz actually oh. got out as well. Fuck, yeah. Laz was caught in for sure, but he got caught, uh, he actually got out of there. So seeds using his Uber off there again in a position to delay for Lucas on the respawn. Obviously, after Lucas died so late on mid, that was why Ascent were really trying to capitalize off, but. With that delaying for seven seconds, that let uh, Lucas get back into the fight. Gink now on Spy. Looks like he's just going to be checking if Slemnish is sniping again. Oh, uh, actually, I think he's... Is he moving? No, he's not. He's I doubt staying. he's moving. Yeah, he's going back. Okay. Happy. <laughs> going to get Happy excited. really hates it. Like, I was going to get excited about a Gink Spy play, dude. Yeah, last time I saw someone ask to Spy on Faint, Pavi did have a go at them. He does, he does not think it's, it's the best way to deal with these things, but no one's been watching 
the flank. Gink came over to get a buff, and in the meantime, Slemnish ran through the basement. He's got all the way round up top. I don't so, think they know, they know he's there yet, so... Yeah, they have no clue that he's there, so... Classy's just spotted him out now on top of the point, but while Classy chases him back, Slemnish could call for backup to, uh, to take a kind of 2v1 in the big doorish area. Or maybe just uh, escort him out again. Yeah, that being said, he just walks up into Gink's face and kills him. Oh my god. You can also do that. I'd be annoyed if I was Gink. <laughs> Oh, Jay trying to bomb through the choke. Lucas predicts it with the stickies on the wall. So that's two down for Ascent. Lucas trying to get some damage into mid. Happy going for the counter sack as well. Going to go down. Classy now taking a 1v1 with Laz on the flank. No one's going to come out on top of that one. They're all going back to spawn. Everybody's just resetting again. Neither team really wanting to take any risks here. Ascent don't want to go into a third map. And obviously, Fane don't want to lose this one at all. So, oh, yeah. hello. I've been proven wrong, as Gink has left spawn on the spy class. Slemnish obviously sniping as well. Gink's gonna see what he can do as the sneaky Frenchman. Lucas trying to shoulder peek Slemnish here. What is the CSGO? <laughs> <laughs> trying to bait out his shot before he can maybe uh, maybe actually kill him. Slemnish also just far forward, trying to pace himself. He's not gonna hit that shot though. And uh, Gink, yeah, he's just behind. And yeah. And I, nobody on the center is all aware yet. Mid. He's done the oh. cloak. He's got oh, he the bot mode. Bot mode. That's a very decent pick. That's effectively trading a Roma for a demo man, which is something I'd take any day. Now more trades happening in the uh, flank here. Pappy goes down for Slemnish and Yite also has been taken down. So it's three down for a cent. Oh, Laz and Laz gets golden. taken oh, down. Skeezes is all alone. alone. He does Finally manage to Jay. use. Onto Jay. Jay. But yeah, you have to use, and that's not nice. Seeds uses his only as well to chase this. They catch out skis. Can they actually kill him, though? Nah, Jay's gonna protect him, and the rest of the team are there to back them up. But. That was so close to being crazy with Lucas juggling him with the stickies and the scout trying to body block as well. If they had managed to keep skis in there, that could have been the end of this golden cap. Ten minutes left on the clock. Faint in control at the moment, with both teams on even Ubers. No off classes anymore. No wacky shenanigans, no EU gimmicks just yet, but we'll have to see. So maybe they get desperate, you never know. Maybe they'll suddenly just try to run a pyro for Big Lord. <laughs> yeah, maybe they will. It's unexpected? Maybe they won't expect, maybe it'll work, you never know. Also taking the cone for right there for a bit, I saw that. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think we'll be seeing a, a page out of the Olga playbook from, from these top teams, but... Ascent are really far back. They kind of look like they want to be baiting Faint into them and then just getting the frags. They are. Slemnish, literally the only person far forwards. He's just checking if anything's in choke, and then everyone else skis on top of the point, bot mode on top of the point. Gink, Maz, sniper. at the, a position to very easily jump away. Gink switched on to sniper here. Gonna get buffed up to look through the choke. But he's not going to find anyone, seeing as yeah. how far back they are. All so far back, and he's going to have to go in very far if he wants to get an angle onto anybody. I think Poppy just probably told him that as well. He decided, yeah, you know what, dude, you're not getting anything here. You might as well move over to Big Door CD to do something there, bud. Because he's not going to get anybody for choke. Yeah, Skis smartly gets himself in this corner under the balcony where he can't be seen from either angle unless the sniper goes wandering all the way in very deep. Had to be a very lucky shot to get that, but these players are all certainly capable of it. Oh. It does get bot mode. This could be the start of something. As Lucas walks forward, Tomas looks like he could get into basement as well and go for a flank play. Ascent using off their Uber charge first. Seeds does use just in time to stay alive. And he won't have to flash. They've caught Laz in the no. Uber as well. Not going to be able to take him down off the back of that, though. But all of the rest of Ascent have had to get out. And they're all up top. They're all just huddled up there now while uh, the entirety of Fink is down below them. Lucas standing on a lot of damage. Let's get taken down. But Gink is just hitting another shot onto Laz. Classy taking down Jay as well. Tomas getting taken down though. So is Poppy. And the uh, frags are slowly falling in the favor of Ascent here as Classy also gets cleaned up. And uh, Seize did a connected. good job of knowing when he had to get out there. He's already on the way. Gink trying to hide in the bush and Sniper not getting anything done. But at least Seeds escapes with his life. He's managed to hook up with his pal Lucas over there at Big Door. And Tomas now allowing him to build. It's going to end up about even due to Skeeds getting out. There's a very tiny advantage for Skeeds, seeing as uh, Seeds was alone for a while, wasn't building. Send me moving forward for Choker as well. Very aggressive, taking down Poppy, who's trying to slow them down. And uh, just, you know, healing up now before they, before they, uh, they back out. And Yite and Laz have absolutely oh. got their way in through this flank. They're onto Gink. 
Gink's trying to take this 1v2, though. Laz will eventually take Gink down, and Classy goes around to finish Laz up. So it's all four soldiers dead. Yite also dead on the side of Ascent NA. Faint gonna be trying to take this in through the choke. Tomas getting oh. big meat shots onto bot mode. They have to force the Uber off. Tomas is making them flash. This is absolutely great from Tomas. Classy now in to help him as well. They're gonna take this 2v1 with Slemnish on the ground, but all the sense NA's respawns are coming back in. Trying to help them out, and they're, they're gonna be able to do that. Happy Mike even kills here, okay? You know, he does live. Doesn't meet up with the rest of his team again. Classy in deep as well. Take Tomas is taking down bot mode, but he's lost his own life for it. In the meantime, no scouts versus no demo man. Is that a good trade? I don't know. I'm not too sure. You're down two players. Laz is just walking forward onto second here, taking the high ground now. And the rest of the center coming through big door, seeing if they can, uh, yeah, just push back Fainter even more. Sniper team has an Uber, so they can't really bank off that just yet. And uh, Fainter just backing out. Seven minutes left. If Ascent can hold this mid fight, or hold this mid point, sorry, then they will be winning this round. So Faint all have to push out from up top, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Taking down Jay immediately. Tomas doing a, a, some decent damage. And Slanish, who gets dropped from the Uber skis, uses a little too late to help him out. The second point's going to get capped up here, and all of Faint are blocking uh, bot mode and skis in this corner. Looks like they're going to go down very late yeah. after this fight. These are terrible spawns for them. As seconds getting capped up, Jay, last one left alive against Lucas in the choke. Oh, well, he's got he's got uh, he's got Slemish to help him out, but you know Slemish is just going to try to hide. And Jay's going to try to do a lot of damage. He does not take down anybody oh though. God. <laughs> he's got though. everyone onto less than 50 health between four players, but Seeds not being alive to heal them up will definitely slow them down. All that damage is permanent until Seeds gets to them. So. Faint coming through big door now, trying to scare Ascent out of his midpoint. Just, they're, they're sending their soldiers in for one rocket, just jumping back out again, just trying to do as much as they possibly can. Papi and Lucas both being taken down. Oh. Huge bomb onto Seeds, also taking him down before finally getting cleaned up. Classy now trying to run and see if he can make anything happen. Not going to happen. And that was killed himself somehow. That was all that. really brilliant from Ascent NA. They managed to get Lucas down and then immediately focused Seeds. They got the scouts running at him. Soldier bombed over the top as well. And all these spawns are so late for Faint as well. So they're just going to take this straight in with the Uber charge. But Lucas is up behind us. Oh Seeds! What is going How on is right there? now? Why is Lucas there and why is it working? Laz has to counter sack in. He does get seeds as well. But oh my god, that was crazy from Lucas. He just walks forward and just pipes down skis. How is he there? Jay and Botmo are the only people alive. Jay jumping onto the point does get killed though. Not going to be able to cap that one off. And Botmo is just going to meet up with skis in big door. Trying to slow down uh, the players of Faint here as Classy tries to cap second. What the hell? My heart hell? can't take this. It looks like this could be another Faint coast to coast. They've capped up the second. It's even Ubers. Neither team has it. They could easily dry push into mid here if they wanted to. Four minutes, 45 left on the clock. If Ascent NA can hold it here stalemated for that remaining four minutes, they will take the map and the match. So knocking down Faint into the lower bracket. Faint have to do something here. They're against the clock. They don't want to let that happen. It looks like they're going to be waiting on their Uber before they do make something happen. They have that much time. They have that much time, but it's going to be it's going to be rough. It's going to be a close one here. Let's see how Faint try to break break this because it's their it's their it's their thing to do. I reckon Faint will break this by putting Lucas down drop down. He'll somehow find himself against Skeezer's back and just double pipe him. Yeah, point blank. Yeah. Obviously. I reckon they uh, might do something like that. It worked the last time. Might as well switch them all to Spy. <laughs> <laughs> That's essentially what he is at this point. Right, let's see if they can actually uh, break this though. Both teams are playing close on their Ubers. Uh, again, bot mode. Just very Slamnish oh, sacking in. Oh, they use immediately after Slamnish's sack. It looks like they were prepared for that as a play. They get the trade off. They might even now repush with Slamnish still down after the Uber. This is very clever from Faint, taking it all the way round to Big Door. 
they can uh, just put the equipment to send players. Thomas just getting sent in. Was that? Yeah, no, no, it was classic. Just getting sent in by that uh, sticky trap. Both soldiers onto Lucas. They do take him down, but they both go down themselves. So no soldiers versus no demo man. Once again, Pappy gets taken down as well. Classy and Gink running oh. into the medic. They get skis. If Seeds can get out, this would be excellent. But he has Yite and Bot Mode on his tail and Slemnish cutting him off from ahead. He gets the damage into oh my Seeds. God. Seeds has got the pack. How does he live? Thomas, please get he this lives. kill. Oh, Thomas, that's embarrassing. At least Seeds can get out with his life, but you really need to be taking down those scouts earlier than that. Now, Seeds does stay alive. He has the Uber Charge advantage. And Ascent aren't even capping up second. Faint are going to be rushing out of here immediately with three minutes left on the clock. We're trying to take at least that middle point, if not the entire round. They really, they want it now. They have that big ad. Jay getting taken down for being in for a little bit too long. And Faint immediately going to be trying to move forward through the choke here. Not even going to, not even going to try to rotate. Would, would probably see the mover in as well, maybe. Ascent being very far back, Vaz gets taken down for being a little bit too Yeah, Lucas control. doing some nice damage and even finishing off the kill onto Laz. Now both soldiers go straight ahead onto bot mode. This could be another coast to coast we've been talking about, Cerny. Faint already capping up the second point. They have the frags advantage. Skis doesn't have his uber charge yet. They are just all up top getting spammed down. Ascent and A, it's only a matter of time before they get forced out by this bomb from Pappy. That might not just come yet. Okay, well, Faint, they do have the mid, actually, now, so... Yeah, with two minutes gonna left, Faint, Faint can hang around here, or they can try and push last. Suddenly, they can take their time. They've they've swapped the tides here, and they can just take uh, take it a little bit more slowly now. Slimish is up on the sniper, trying to get a shot. Ooh, body blocked by Lucas. Unfortunately, cannot get the shot onto Seed. Seed's now well aware. Uh, just hiding. Slendish so very frantically looking to put his curse He's going in for a big him. bomb onto Seeds. Gets one rocket. It's not enough to take Seeds down. Oh, oh no! Oh Eek. my god! Oh my oh. god! Slendish doesn't miss. For once, he doesn't miss. It just cleans oh up Oh my as well. god, and Pappy has fell to a clumsy, painful death. All these guys need to do is cap the midpoint and they can win. There's a minute to do it, and they are already halfway through capping second. Classy hiding in the bush on mid, or in elbow even, has to block this cap somehow. And I just don't see there's a way that he can do it without his respawns, which are all flooding in through Big Door now. Plus, he's biding his time. He's going to make the play now. He's on to skis, gets one shot, he goes down. Faint just frantically trying to hold on to this point here. They're ch choving everything in. It's like a last hold at this point. See it's on oh, the Thomas. Thomas. He's making up for it with these two frags. Lucas needs to keep Seeds alive and needs to block this point. Bot mode goes down oh. super low. Skis on, on top, top of the, of the point. point. He's just chilling up there. He's, He's going to get one solid, Lucas. Slemnish takes down Lucas eventually as well. Classy now needs to run in. Ascent have got the middle point during that exchange. So if... This 30 seconds runs out without another capture. It's going to be a sense game, and Faint will be knocked down into the other bracket. And it looks like, uh, looks like Faint really, they just have to shove everything on. There's eight, uh, seven seconds left on the timer. And yeah, everyone on Ascent is just going to stand on the point at this point. Skis, Ubers on it, so there's no chance. That That's is it. that. Ladies and gentlemen, Ascent NA have knocked Faint Gaming down into the lower bracket off the back of a 2-2 stalemate. They've kept their control of the middle point, so they will be granted that extra round in the Golden Cup. Two extremely tight Golden Cups there, Cerny. So close. Like, the, store, the score line wouldn't suggest, oh, you know, oh, sent, they, they wiped faint, they won in two maps. But th these matches were so incredibly close. It, yeah. it could have really gone either way. If, like, if they meet again in the, in the lower bracket, it could go either way again. Yeah. Or even, even like in the finals, you never know. Yeah, could go either way. It's incredibly, incredibly close. We'll have our analyst desk actually show you how close that was because they have big brains. They know how to uh, do stuff like that. So we're going to hand it over to good old Eckstein, Alba, and Dom. Thanks, Cerny and Bum. Great job with the cast there. As uh, That was just absolute insanity. Uh, I mean, two maps going to the golden cap. And, uh, you know, a lot of times there's that fear of like 15 minutes that things are just going to drag on. But... I don't know if you could ask for a, a more exciting golden cap than that. Uh, initial thoughts, Dom? Yeah, you could already tell, like, with about, like, five minutes left in the game, everybody was already in the mindset of, at least we need to take mid. There were so many yeah. exchanges just that, that ended in really messy mid fights, and yeah. in a lot of those, Ascent and A was just constantly in possession of the high ground, and Faint couldn't do much about it, and uh -huh. it just makes t t dealing damage so much easier for them. 
Uh, Alba, your first thoughts on that? I just feel kind of bad for Seeds, honestly. Uh, taking yeah. that step out, getting body shot, that's kind of what led to, to Asante and A getting the mid back uh, with just two minutes uh, remaining on the golden cap. Uh, I do not entirely agree with the positioning that they had at that point. I would yeah. much rather see them try to deny the sniper from peeking at all. Uh -huh. They just uh, kind of hid behind the fence and hoped the sniper wouldn't hit anything. Uh, but the dangerous part then is that soldiers can bomb in and last try that. Uh, and then Seeds took a step out and that was it. Yeah, certainly Slemnish uh, really swung things there with that 3K, very clutch. Uh, I think another key moment uh, that I noticed was um, that uh, Fane had the opportunity to retake, uh, and then it seemed like they got kind of split up. They were all very low on health, and, and they took the risk there. The clock was still, you know, fairly large. There was about five minutes or so, uh, and you had Seeds and company, or, or two of his players, go through big door while the other players were trying to fight through choke and just so weak. Uh, we're going to get into the logs here in a, in a second. Um, Dom, do you just kind of have some general thoughts before we really break down the numbers about how uh, regulation time went, as these are the stats from regulation? I think when we were talking before the game, or well, before the analysis section here, Alba said that, again, like, Fane needs these big plays to keep up a lot of the times. And again, you see just Lucas, like, all the way at the top here, out damaging Jay, who already has incredible numbers to his name uh -huh. himself. So it's it always comes down to just these incredibly like clutch moments by one team or another we had the lucas behind moment we had slamlish popping off in the last second on sniper so if these teams stay this close then we're in for a hell of a rest of the tournament yeah definitely definitely um any uh, uh stats here that uh, pop out to you alba yeah i mean uh, looking at the core of faint uh, see puppy dropping off there a little bit uh, if you compare to the last map mm -hmm. and uh, thomas as well finding himself a little bit lower down on the scoreboard uh, Slemnish doing incredibly well that game, with the, yeah. especially with the 3k and the golden cap, which we'll get into in a bit. Uh, yeah, the snipes there were crazy, um, and uh, at least statistically speaking, did seem like Ascent had the edge here. Um, Slemnish, um, poss possibly the MVP of that matchup. Do you guys think that the, that's fair, Dom? Yeah, even on the first map, he already yeah. did incredibly well, and in this case, it was very specifically him that brought like the last little bit to the victory here, so for sure. If you have your scouts, or in this case also sniper, perform like this, then it makes a big difference. But Thomas last game had a really, really good game. Still not doing bad by any means, but you just need to keep up with performances like this, and it's never easy. Yeah, and, and we knew that this was going to be a, a really close match. Um, you know, all of the top teams here. Uh, what, what does Faint Gaming have to do to, to recover from this? I mean, uh, that's <laughs> that's a tough loss. Uh, what do you what do you think, Alba? I think uh, since they're not knocked out of the tournament, they still have, they can use this as a learning experience, look through the demo of these close games yeah. and figure out where they went wrong and try to work on those fundamentals. Uh, so I, I think it's a great learning experience. Yeah, and they will have a little bit of a break here as, um, you know, coming from the upper bracket semifinals, uh, we have some lower bracket matches uh, to take care of. Uh, also, we did get our results over in um, the, the other match in this upper bracket semifinals. Seven having a pretty dominant performance against the other uh, team from Ascent. It was 7-3, uh, 4-7 on Pro Lands, and then 5-1 for 7 on Sunshine. Of course, we were watching this map, but uh, Tom, do you have any thoughts on those score lines? A good Badlands performance isn't necessarily surprising. I think we talked about yeah. it a little bit beforehand today. That that's a map that Seven is very comfortable on, one that Ascent doesn't feel too great on. So that's not necessi necessarily too surprising. It was a pick in the Grand Finals already in etf 2 So Sunshine is a little bit more the outstanding one, because that's a map that Ascent, th this weekend, like yesterday, against Ascent NA, did really good on already. And Seven just coming back, just one-upping them yet again, like they had somehow always managed to do, is really impressive and a good precedence going into the winners' finals later today. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Alba, just give you a, a chance right now to offer some thoughts on that matchup. The seven. Uh, seven versus uh, Ascent NA. Yeah, it just seems like Seven always uh, gets the better of Ascent EU, and I think it's uh, at this point Seven just has has uh, Ascent EU on lockdown. They know how Ascent EU plays, and uh, they just get a better of Ascent EU. It seems uh, every time they play. All right, well, uh, we're going to be uh, interested in seeing how some of the lower bracket matches uh, wind up. That will be our next segment that we go to. Uh, we did have uh, top five sons. Uh, y you were looking at the stats. Um, you want to say anything about their matchup against the bus crew? Yeah, I am uh, impressed by the bus crew bouncing back after that loss to the Frenchies. They uh -huh. lost both maps to top five 2-1. Uh, I uh -huh. think it was Gallium process, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but very close games. Yeah, so that will uh, most likely be our next matchup. It's going to be top five Suns who survived against the bus crew up against Aura Electro. Uh, I do believe we have a little bit of a, a break here scheduled uh, to accommodate a possible third map, which was so close. 
Um, this last match was insane. Um, certainly, you guys should make sure to share those VODs once they're posted up. I uh, want to give quick shout outs to uh, Marketplace.tf, uh, Insomnia for hosting us at this land. It's just a fantastic event overall, uh, as well as our fundraiser, which continues over at Match Arena. Please check that out, uh, land.tf slash fundraiser. But uh, we're going to take a, a little bit of a break here, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back with the action in about 30 minutes or so. Going to be lower bracket um, or electro versus top five sons. So stick around for that coming up in a little bit.
Welcome back. Welcome back to the analyst desk, and it's your boy Turbo. Yep, it is dark. It's time for old man Eckstein to go to bed, and I'm here to take over. And uh, yeah, I'm back with two familiar faces. I've got Dum Tum, I've got Alba, and Alba, welcome to the desk. And are the pineapples still fresh, as I can see? Yeah, so far. I think uh, when I go home from land, they were rot. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a progression. Uh, and uh, Dum Tom, you didn't get the memo. We were supposed to wear the most like noisiest shirts you could possibly wear, and yet you've come with that. That's too sensible. Too sensible. Anyway, boys, we're here. We've made it. We've made it to the most exciting part. This is where nerds start crying, where nerds start feeling depressed because it's the lower bracket. Oh boy. So we're going to be dipping our toes into it. It's not going to be any high-level teams. We're not going to see your sevens. We're not going to see your faints. We're going to start off with Aura Electro versus top five sons and immediately straight out of the gate has anyone got anything to say about these two teams are you like you know any sort of big mentions anything you kind of just want to get out there i mean it's uh, the top five and slash six team uh, predicted before going into this LAN. Uh, it's going to be a brawl hmm. how about you dum tum anything interesting about this little matchup here it's going to be really interesting both of them had some really good and some really weak results yesterday so this is the best of threes this is where consistency gets rewarded let's see who has like the longest breath here mm. now throughout our yesterday talking it seemed like it seemed like a multi-man race with aura electro in the lineup but nobody was giving the same sort of pedigree or the pats on the head to top five sons why have they been disappointing people a little bit more in the least in the first day compared to top five sons I mean, the match that stands out is probably the one we've seen them play against the Sand NA, which was a complete slaughter on product. The only outstanding player was probably Kuno and Sniper, who did a really consistent performance. But other than that, the, the lack of team cohesion was very apparent compared to a team like a Sand NA, which is at the very least comparable to everything else in the like top four seeding wise. So that's like the main thing that's missing, the like experience with each other. Obviously not in, in general. These players have played for a long time. But with each other, it's a whole different story. It's um, more or less a mix of like two teams plus Oryx coming together for LAN, and that definitely always makes a difference. Mm. Now, Albert, does it ever come into the fact that a mixed team should always lose, or is there times where a mixed team should actually be taking over t uh, established teams like Oro Electro? I mean, it always comes down to how fast you get your gameplay together. Like, uh, a mixed team can come together and immediately shine and just have the best coordination ever, or it can be very a big struggle for the team. It, it really depends on the players and how well they click together. Okay, now uh, I like to play the little game, you know, the old coach game and stuff like that. So I'll let you, you guys can even fight over the scraps. Who wants to be the coach for, like, say, you know, top five sons? Anybody? Anyone? No? Okay, that's it, Dom Tom. You're going to be top five <laughs> sons uh, coach. Okay, if you're top five sons coach, what would you be telling them? What would you say is their win condition? How are they going to perform this game if they want to win overall Electro? They have a bunch of talented players. It's all about getting those people in the right positions at any point. Is there any like stalemate that you can't break? Try to make Kunu not just be the sniper, but also try to play in situations that he can shine in. Try to open up the flank to the point where Sorix can just do the Sorix thing of just walking in, taking over the game, like we're used to seeing from him in the past. Just let War do his thing if the situation requires it. Just have him like jump spire if it takes, if if that's what it takes, and like have everybody play around whatever like is the main play you have. They need concise calls. They need to have the coordination work out quickly on the fly with a team that doesn't have the luxury of having a lot of experience and this sort of um, playing with each other beforehand. Mm. Quick, Coach Alba, you've heard everything that Coach uh, has had to say. What are you going to tell your team, or Electro, to do to counter that? Maybe even just like downright win. So looking at the past games Aura have had, I feel like their main problem has been, uh, because Aura is a team that try to stay very close to the fundamentals. They don't really run a lot of sniper or off classes. Uh, so just uh, making sure they get the coordination running, especially around Eames. Eames is leading the team. Uh, and sometimes he just gets disconnected from his team. So I think they need to work on uh, really following up on what Eames is doing. Mm. Now, boys, I, c I can't help but just deviate from the teams for just a moment and talk about lower bracket itself. Like, this isn't upper bracket. This isn't group stage. This is lower bracket. There's no more second chances now. What sort of effects are these players going to be have had from this lower bracket pressure or any pressure? Or is there going to be no effect? I'll 
point of view? It's still? highly player dependent, but the most optimal is obviously, and I think Albert can agree with this, is that everybody becomes motivated to like feel like the pressure of the last chance to just give it your best for this like potentially final game to not have it be that, and just go all in at least one more time. How about you, Albert? Do you think there'll be any sort of pulling of strats here slightly, maybe even some pocket strats at all, or do you still save onto these just in case you know you go into that next round? No, I think for these two teams, this is where you bring the, the strats out because if you go out, you don't get to use them at all. Mm. Uh, so I think this is the time where you you really try your best, do do it all to, to get through. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure how closely you two have been watching both of these teams or how their maps and whatnot have been picked, but is there any maps you're feeling strong about these two teams at all? Like, oh, that I'm likely going to believe that they're going to pick out this map, they're going to ban out this map. Any sort of information you can give me, you know, I haven't been paying attention. Well, I guess top five won't be feeling very comfortable on product, seeing as they had a rough time against the Center uh, Maybe they still feel confident on it, I don't, but I would expect them to be banning it. How about you, Dum Tom? You got any sort of in insider information there? Just want to spill the beans on any of these teams? For all, it depends on where they've done, done the homework. They had a really tough game and eventual loss against Big Block Land earlier, so that could be something that they are a bit concerned about. They, in the past, were not too big fans of Gallywash. Maybe they've done the work to make it better for them, so they can surprise people with like, being better than expected. Other than that, Sunshine's a decent map for them, as always, and otherwise the map would be fairly solid. So we'll see, as you said before, Alba, that uh, product is a uh, concerning pick, not just necessarily because of the performance against Incent and A, but also, like I mentioned yesterday, that it's just like the odd one out, right? You practice 5CP the majority of the time, there's just less time for you to prepare for product, and it, you, uh, against a team like ours that has been fairly consistent with their rosters for the longest time now, it's going to stand out immensely. Now, uh, this game is of immense importance for both of these teams, so they're taking every sweet little moment they can to kind of just prepare things. So I'd like to dip into some kind of hot topics right now. I think the hottest topic is golden caps. Golden caps have been happening left, right and center. Last minute golden cap, last minute capping. Just just something about like this sheer pressure to the last second and uh, just making everyone sweat. Like, let's talk about just the strategy of it. What is the best method? What is the best method uh, methodology that you like a believe a golden cap should be played because keep in mind the golden caps are played differently at land it's not about the first one to win the round it's about the first one to win the round or hold on to the midpoint do you guys believe you should just hold on to the midpoint never push or should you still push Le leave me for it tell me about how what you think teams are doing wrong or right with golden caps so me personally i like to play golden caps like it's any round because i think as soon as you play into the let's hold mid uh, if you hold for too long on a point, it's very easy for you to get caught off by something you don't expect. I think the best way is just to continue playing. Uh, for Golden Cap mids, I personally like to play them quite aggressive, but to make sure that if everything goes bad, you have a scout who can run the medic out, so you still have something to fall back on, on last. Does that sound about right, Dum Tom? Yeah, I would agree. In the grand scheme of things, you can't like just think about mid. Maybe at some point way late on, like we saw in the game with Ascent and Fane, that it, at some point it has to be a concern and you just have to like think about realistically like that, that's something that can definitely happen that we do by mid possession. In the grand scheme of things though, you can't let that get to you. You need to play your game as much as possible and in the last like under five minutes you need to start thinking about it. And at that point the really interesting stuff comes out because then is when people have to shift their mentality about we need to push from here to here to here and it just suddenly becomes a lot more like king of the hill on the midpoint, mm -hmm. which is some dynamic that you don't usually see too much, which forces people to play in really interesting styles. We saw it between Ascent and Feint. There were a lot of like fights you would normally probably never see on Gullywash mid that people were forced to take, and it just created an even more intense game between the two. All right, boys, I'm going to make you look like geniuses right now. I'm going to get you to get your crystal balls out and predict some things that are going to happen in this upcoming game. Like, yeah, you can even visualize the ball if you're up one. So tell me, what sort of things can we expect to definitely see or maybe see or likely see in this game of top five Suns versus uh, Aura Electro? Uh, cough snipes. Uh, we're going to see war with some uh, odd play that you don't expect. Uh, we're going to see Aura uh, sticking to the fundamentals, not running many off-classes except for defense. Yep. 
Dum Dum, anything to throw on the fire? I mean, I've already brought up pretty much the entire bingo you would expect for this game, so... Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah it's going to be interesting if there's anything else that's like highly expected in this game. Obviously, War will try to do his sort of things. Sorry, I'm going to be interested to see how aggressive or not top five Suns will be. They, they have potential to be really aggressive at the place they have, but they also have the strong main call that like, made the play fairly passive, so we'll see how it goes. All right, quick one-word answers. Who's going to win? Aura. Aura. All right, okay. So you've heard it here from the panel. You've even heard the digest of what's going to happen. You don't even know, need to watch the match, but you will watch the match because it's going to be amazing. We're going to throw it over to our casters. That's a Disky and Eepley. All right, yep, this is me. I am Eepley joined with a Disky. We're going to be going into this game. Aura Electra versus Top 5 and Sons here on Snakewater. This is the first of our elimination games. Everything's on the line of Disky, and it's going to be a big one. I'm excited for this game, Eepley. Are you? I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think all the teams are going to be kind of uh, pulling out all the stops here. And I think we're basically going to be going live just about any second, I believe. I'm not even certain if perhaps we've missed a mid. Nope. Oh, I think we're perfectly be... fine, actually. Looks like they're just uh, getting themselves sorted as per usual. Standard kind of a little, little player delays and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we've got the predictions from the desk. How are you feeling? I'm feeling opposite of what I was saying. Uh, I, I still feel like the combination of Sorex and Kuno on Scout, it's just something that you have to respect. It, yeah, 100%. 100%. I mean, I mean Yeehaw and Evo, you know, uh, old-timers, they've played Prem for a couple of seasons now, and they're just overall great scouts, but Sorex, he's a vintage gamer by now. Yeah. He, he's been playing with Lego for basically ages now, and then we've got Kunu, Notorious for being, you know, the, the beam scout. The, the up and coming, he's the beam scout. Well, I guess we'll find out, see exactly what's going on here. So, we're going to be going live here. Or Electro versus Top 5 and Sons running out to this first mid on Snake Water. All important, getting a nice early good start after the mid. Ideally, an early round. We see Ward has put up some sticky zoning more than anything. No real initiation from either team yet. This is just going to peek and prod. No one's jumping over just yet. It does look like we're going to see some bombs just over. Ever actually jumps in deep, gets a decent amount of damage, but ends up killing himself. Trades on each side. Opti now going down as well. So a little bit difficult for top five and sons. They don't really have the height to deal with no soldiers. And back they go. Very, very passive mid. It felt like top five sons soldiers were very disconnected from their team. We saw Everex jumping in as first and then not really getting anything. And then Opti jumped after him and just, just got clean up as well. And now it's just going to be maybe easy transition for Aura going into second, and they get a force off of Ombrak. That's really, really nice for Aura. They jump their soldiers in yet, get that super easy force, and Demos is like, right, boys, all the way out. I'm going, keeping hold of my Uber. Not a single player was even lost there for Aura. That's really, really clean. Now, though, they have an opportunity towards Saw. They can go fast all the way into lobby if they really want. Demos taking it just a little bit slow, playing with both his scouts really, really close to the beam. Every we do see a soldier jumping in. Oh, one rocket! Does force off the Uber here, so demos. It would have been a drop otherwise. Completely understandable use, but they do, they're starting moving through left. They can take the space. It looks like they're taking over this left area. They, they got forced really far back, but they're still taking over. Uh, and now this fight's getting really scrappy, and Aura players are just going down left and right. And maybe top five sounds can repush this into the into the second. Yeah. It looks like they're going to be falling all the way back. I mean, there's no reason why not top five, you know, looking to take control of the second point. Three players were down. Only two spawners coming up now on top five and Sun, so should be, uh, sorry, on or Electro. Should be pretty solid to keep on moving. Obviously, Uber still in the hands of Ombrak, so they're going to start moving through Saw. Looks like they want to start taking some of this height. Azunas is going to jump in, but the perfect body block from Zorax. That's super, super nice. Yeah, pick it up, Nemo and Azunis. Ombrak not having to use his Uber at all. This is basically the ideal situation, and War's calling for his boys. Keep on moving through grass. This Uber advantage, it is starting to dwindle, but they can keep on moving forward. Demo's on just about getting 100% of his own, but they're so far back with these two players down. Can they really contest on second? I mean, Aura, I don't think they can contest at this point. I mean, they got the Uber in time, but they had two players down, and there is nothing you can do going 4v6. Just holding that second point of Snakewater once. Top five sons cut onto the second point itself. It's very difficult to push them away once they get that high ground. Yeah. Now they're just gonna get set up and lobby very nicely. Probably gonna send a sack of some sort. I really want to see Kuna sniping at this point. 
Yeah, I mean, there's no reason why not. They can take some kind of opportunity, maybe just go for a little peek or a sack, and, you know, really, I would imagine a double sack would probably make the most sense. We do see a sniper in the hands of Nevo, so we do see, see these long angles being watched, make it, gonna make it just a little bit more difficult for a super deep sack. But that being said, we do know that Demos is in this classic little sniper hiding spot, so we're taking a little peek here, not really hitting anything just yet. He has been spotted, so everyone's going to be playing very much around this fact. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what people want to do here on the side of Pop 5 and Suns. They are actually trying to bust through. Uber does get used. This is a super, super early use. Looks like they will be getting the gun, but not really getting anything else here at all. Pretty disastrous, actually. And they're just going to back all the way out to seven. I mean, trading Uber for a gun is not something that you want to do. I, I don't think that was very intentional. And Opti gets caught out in the lower as well. And it, this just looks like an easy push out for Aura. Uh, if they get all of the entrances covered, there is no way that they're going to get back up. And that's exactly what they're doing. They have a soldier up lower down lower even <laughs> and they're just swarming this point and keeping their uber intact they're just probably just going to be pushing into mid with this yeah well cold calm and clinical walking all the way exactly as you say we do just about see azunas getting picked up with a sticky trap so a little bit more difficult still 30 percent uber advantage i mean there's arguments to be made either way if aura wants to continue playing a little bit slow which it looks like they're going to be and looks like that one pick's going to be everything that top five and sons need to just make this a nice equal uber situation. Eames playing towards Francis, getting some stickies towards the choke point, but I feel like top five and sons, the way that they're doing things, they want to be a little bit more aggressive. They want to be a bit more proactive and try and make something happen here. Sometimes you just really want to get aggro with the uber. I mean, the uber advantage lost here was around 38 seconds. And you, once you have that big of an uber advantage, you, you want to get it used at some point. Otherwise it just gets wasted. And uh, now it looks like Eho just got bombed by Opti and gets out alive as well. That's a pick from the defending side and that opens up so much of the screen area. There is only one scout that can deny these soldiers. Everex is jumping in as well. Yeah, they're walking so far in through grass. Everex does get a little bit weak and it will be causing Ombrak to use his Uber now. Demo is just only using his own about 40% better on his Uber and they can look to chase on grass. These really good juggles from Eames, but unfortunately just juggling them too far into the choke point. So it's actually going to be the only player going down is on the Aura Electra side. So Big Daddy Wars is like, right boys, one player advantage is all we need. I'm going to start walking through, get some decent damage towards bound. We might even be able to lock out some of these players. Eames wants to commit in that crucial pipe going to get taken down himself. Players being traded absolutely everywhere, but it does look like things in terms of positioning are just about going the way of top five and sons. Oh, it's a good bomb, but Kunu's absolutely on it now. He's trying to get forward onto this flag to try and get Nevo now. Zunis going down, just Nevo alive, and there's three players. This is full chariot right now going straight to last. The spawns are going to be so, so difficult. Nevo has an absolute mountain to climb, and he won't be doing it. Top five and sons securing this first round. There is absolutely nothing you can do there. I, I mean, it was a very smart play from top five sons because even though they were trap pushing grass, they kept two players on their flank, and Azunis, he thought that he can just, you know, go into Sol and get some cheeky plays through window, maybe going back to mid. But he got a picked out by the top five sons bank and then it's an instantly you know a 5v6 situation pushing into second makes it way easier definitely makes things a little bit nicer and it's secured them this good round advantage so going into the second mid now they don't have to worry quite as much they've already got themselves a little bit of a buffer everex on this top left getting a little bit of info he knows exactly how to counter jump here if he wants to but he's actually just playing nice and passive it's like they want to try and deal with some of these initial players but you see opti and everex now both jumping in really getting anything, not really position or damage being dealt. So once again, the soldiers from top five are dying. The rest of the team is just backing out. No one's over committing. That was a brutal top control from Aura. They literally at one point, they had four players up top. And when you see all of the rockets, you know, stickies and scouts scattering you from up top, spamming you down at that point, when you lose that top control that much, especially on Snake Water, man, there's just nothing you can do. You, you, you just have to get out at that point. But it looks like War is kind of getting caught out in the lobby and makes it out for the lower. But it's definitely going to be a stalemate now on the last. And Aura has to make something happen as they're one round down coming into this match. Yeah, they are. So they have some options available. We do see Kunu sniping now. Obviously, defensive playing just a little bit around his heels, just. I'm still kind of preempting possibly a sniper on the other side. We might have the opportunity for a bit of a forward hold for top five and sons. We're kind of seeing war play pretty aggressive, but it doesn't look like anyone else is quite feeling it at the moment. Importantly, the only, uh, actually, I was going to say the only off is is um, it was the sniper up until Kunu decided to remain on scout. They've got a gun going up, but 
I don't know, I feel like top five and Suns are gonna keep kind of peaking and prodding as much as it's probably in the effort. Oh my god! Soon as just sneaks what? in and gets Ombrak. I mean, Poison was jumping in at the same time and he was drawing the attention from the sentry gun and as soon as just walks through drop down and gets an easy entry on Ombrak. Just that easy to look at. Very crisp. Super crisp, even getting set into the skybox for some, uh, some star points as well, so. That's going to be really good now. Ombrak just only spawning, so they've waited for their spawns. Nice and patient from Aura Electro. They're going to be buffing up all their remaining little boys. Kunu going on this deep peak on lower, but he's been spotted. Surely there's nothing he can get. Nope. All the way back he goes. Eames looks like he's calling for his boys to start moving through top right. They don't have ages to mess around with, but at the same time, it is still about a 60% advantage. Looks like Shutter's where they're going. Yep, Uber's getting used. Eames just about not able to jump through, but they force a lot of players into spawn. But they can start playing towards Poison, which they're doing exactly now. They're just standing directly on it. So many top five players now trying to jump towards it, but the damage from Poison is so, so good. Important pipes from War, but it will be too little too late. Or Electro getting on point and immediately equalizing this. That was a very questionable sentry gun position. I, I mean, it works when you're forward holding there, but when you're holding whilst on Uber disadvantage, you really want to put it as far as you want and as he can, rather, because once that gun goes down, there's not much, you know, holding the enemy team pushing in from basically just swarming into last. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe it's a lesson they can learn from even just this game, really make things a little bit better for next time. But this is third mid, and nice and equal soldiers dropping everywhere entirely throughout the map. Once again, though, it looks like it's all Electra getting the better end of this. Do you see these soldiers jumping in? Poison getting cleaned up. Sarx hitting these all-important meat shots, but oh, it's so, so difficult to get back in. He's hitting a lot of damage right now. Looks like he wants to play just a little bit solo, but we do have the entirety of the top five in the combo. Once again, they've backed up all the way to back. This time, though, they've got their Uber. They've got enough players to contest grass. They really shouldn't be letting uh, letting too many of the electric players in. The mid was so fast, I couldn't imagine what happened. It was literally just two solids bombing over and then everyone gets bullied out. But Azunis gets an Ombra out of nowhere. Did he flank to cheese? I, I'm not even sure. I think he might have just jumped in and just somehow people weren't quite there to deny. I think it might have been while Ombrak was in the middle of a transition, but I mean, a nice clean force once again. Temo's nowhere near to take even a single point of damage, so... I mean, it's, it's going to be looking pretty good. Realistically speaking, Aura's the kind of team where they're just going to want to play this slow and take second for free. They know someone will bomb them at some point. They must be spawning where Everett's and Ophi are playing, and I feel like this little bit of stance, this little bit of kind of knowledge, yeah, it's going to be forcing both these soldiers back. So now they have this opportunity to move all the way through lower. Ophi as well getting cleaned up nice and easy. That's good stuff. Eames now jumping in once again, not quite getting his jump in. He's getting some decent damage towards right, but point is wide open. There's no reason why I can't stand in it. Yeehaw hitting some crucial shots now onto war but somehow somehow they're not quite getting the point uber's getting used now by ombrak and this should be everything they need is only poison alive above point and that's going to be it demos pretty sure it. ombrak just served a rocket and whipped out his uber so and uber sold someone and got the uber <laughs> i just see him flying through us i think that's ha that's what happened i didn't see him actually get it but uh, he went from like 80 percent to 100 so 90 percent sure that that's what happened so Pretty big play from Ombrak to, you know, save his team from basically losing the second round in a row. Yeah, it's crucial, crucial stuff. Or Electro now, they're actually just drive pushing. They've already taken down Everex. Looks like War's trying to commit as much as he physically can towards point. Not, we are now seeing a frag get traded, so it might be a case that Aura doesn't quite want to fully commit here. Even slightly late getting the memory. We do have a flank, actually, from Opti, but nice. he's going to get cleaned up a little bit too quickly by the scout class, so... I mean, it does open up an opportunity again. Keep on peeking and prodding on grass. Neither team wants to fully commit too much right now. Wars hit so much damage towards these scouts. So they can just secure just one of these frags. Oh, and the pipe onto Demo. So, so good. <laughs> Ombrak's got his Uber. He's used now. And this should just be an absolute farm Uber. I mean, when you're Ombrak and you see... No! Oh, the flank! The front flank poison! Poison and Azunas just combined two rockets. Gets a 4k. I was about to say... Like, there is no point to not use your Uber when you are seeing the enemy medic just dying in front of your eyes and you have two scouts on you. I mean, that's an easy cleanup. You're just gonna push, you know, for free to mid and secure that. But it looks like just as soon as in poison, hiding in a corner, getting two rockets of each, can wipe an entire team. Yeah, I mean, turns out soldier class is, it, it is still pretty good. It has its days, you know, it's not too bad. So that's gonna be leading them in a pretty decent moments. situation. <laughs> Soldier class can Yeah, do now they, they can do stuff, you know, shoot the floor, kill the guys. It's, it, it isn't too bad. I know it feels like it sometimes. So we do have 
or Electro. They're knocking on the door of top five's last, but their uber advantage is like 7%, you know? I feel like even the most aggressive Russian team out there, they don't think that's really quite enough. So I yeah. think we will be stalemating, finding some opportunities to peek and prod a little bit. But you know what, a Russian team would be on crit speed right now. They would, quite probably. Deep, like five minutes in, into crit speed, probably. Already. So they're just peeking as far left hand side, see what they can do. It's probably just gonna end up in a sack. Yeah, you'd think so. Kuno, he's not playing on this right-hand side. He's not watching those long angles in the same way. He's kind of expecting them to commit a little bit further and trusting War to hold the close angles in. So far, it's working pretty well. He's now starting to peek a little bit deeper. He's getting some opportunities, but us characters... He's deep on Umbro. Oh, yeah, he gets one rocket. Nice little surf. Of course, Umbro, of course, no! Enough. Oh, again! These soldier combos! They're so, so good, so coordinated again. Ombrak, I feel like every force and drop's been Ombrak so far. How many times we've seen just Poison and Azum is just doing something together and it just works. They're so in sync this game. It feels incredible. Like we are only 14 minutes into this game and I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen like five plays where these guys combined, absolute mayhem. Yeah, they're really, really pulling it out for their team, and it's once again putting Aura Electra in a big, advantageous position. No reason why they can't just start looking to move through lower, and it's actually going to be far left they're going for. They have no fear of any kind of sniper. Now using that Uber, even starting to walk forward. There's so many of these players towards the left-hand side. Gun's been dealt with. Pyro's going super, super with. No one's really able to get to point, and no one's really able to get the hype too much. It's going to be all about securing these first few frags. They're getting traded every which way right now. It does look like Top 5 and Sunset remaining in. I don't know, they're on some kind of high ground, but they're just about one player down now. Oh my god, Everex has to hit some really, really crucial stuff right now. Good damage on the scout. Take picking up one, the second scout. Oh, oh. The air shot! Everex beasting both scouts. Goodbye, get out of here. That was such a nice rocket as well. I was about to say that Kuno, I mean, they had Pyro for just holding glass in general with the sentry gun, but once that gun goes down, Pyro is pretty much useless, especially on open glass like Snake Water. And that's exactly what happened. Kunu went down instantly to, you know, combination of two scouts. But Everex absolutely, you know, just 1v2 against two scouts, just hitting all of those directs. Soldier class, man. Soldier class. Uh, this is the day for any of you American folks who may not know of Everex. This is his introduction to you guys. But in all of that, Demo's managed to live. He's got an uber advantage, so we get yet another shot for Aura Electro to start moving in. Kunu still snapping towards his left-hand side, so it will be using straight through this shutter. Once again, no one playing super close. Eames starting to deal with this gun a little bit. Both soldiers on the high ground get some decent damage, but the point time is absolutely spectacular. Both scouts straight on the Aura Electro in a winning position now. They were so focused on taking the ground on the right-hand side from the top five. Sons, they were taking over the truck and, and, and the hut as well, but they completely forgot about the point. And once you have two scouts on the point, you instantly need someone to block that because that point comes really fast. It really does. It's not quite as bad as Badlands, but times four is enough to make anyone kind of, you know, second guess exactly how secure your hold is. So, fourth mid of the game, still 15 minutes left to go, everything to play for. Once again, we might be seeing a slightly more passive mid up until these soldiers find their big opportunities. War, though, he wants to kind of initiate things himself. He's moving just a little bit far forward. As soon as he gets the opportunity, oh, he doesn't quite hit the air shot, I don't think. He is trading with Everex Poison. He tries to get a bit of a chance, but he's just taking too much damage as well. It's finally a five and sons opportunity to surge forward. War's getting this nice damage out. Yep, Poison's getting cleaned up. The rest of War Electra have no choice but to leave right now. And the opportunity to chase is there. War, he's really feeling it. He's starting to move towards grass, just delaying slightly for his team. He wants to keep on moving forward along with Kunu now. Oh, but Ombrak's getting super weak now. 40 health on him. This might actually be really, really scary to possibly drop, especially with this jumper who's just about, I'm not even sure where he went. Actually, really nice holding from Ombrak. How are they just walking all the way in here? Uh, it doesn't really make sense to me. There are just people from our design get random places and now they have two picks pushing into last. They're just getting far left hand side for free. That's they have two solis trying to go for the side, but Demos deep in spawn. They're just standing on point at Disky. They just stood on point. They just stood on point and won the round. What's going on? I, I, I'm pretty sure Aura was so afraid of two solis trying to get a force off off of demos that they were just all completely like standing still and in, in the spawn just waiting for the solis to basically just die off but you know scout class can stand on a point equal uber over. walk from mid onto the last point cap it right whatever okay equal once again you know nothing that happens really matters too far because we got ourselves another mid 
This time, Adeski, tell me what you're seeing on this mid. Um, I was waiting the last mid from uh, the Aura Electro Soldiers to come in, you know, be their sync box. But right now, we saw the Red Soldiers jumping in, but everyone's dying from Aura. They, they couldn't jump. They basically couldn't get their jumps off because they just got instantly denied. And now it's a huge chase. Demos is running for his life to lower with Yeeho. Yeah, it but does look that like... That was a very dominant mid from top five songs. I, I, I mean, these bombs from Aura are just getting more and more delayed. At the start, it was working. They were going straight away, getting this top control. Now they're just waiting and waiting, and it's just getting too late. They're just stand, standing on low ground, and nothing is happening. It definitely seems like top five and Sons are, are working things out just a little bit. I mean, you know, you can always say uh, it is, you know, just as well. Demos did manage to get up with his life, so... We are at least in an equal group of situations. Not quite as disastrous as it could have been. I did think at one point that chase might have been, you know, kind of one of those go all the way, but it is equal. We do have Nevo sniping now, peeking towards the lobby, taking his time in terms of picking his targets. Does it really matter if he gets a scout or a soldier? From his point of view, perhaps not, but I think it's going to be Opti. He's going to be trying to speed shot in. Actually, I don't think he's even been seen. Okay, he has been spotted now. He's going to try and get a bit of damage, and alongside Everex, he's going to get taken down. So, no soldiers on the side of top five. They have to back on outside. And Aura Electro is already towards the lobby. They are ready to go. They're ready to start trying to at least make some kind of big Nevo. Oh, he gets his opportunity. Not quite hitting the shot. Oh, he's getting so well spammed down. Ombrax now in his fourth hole position. Nevo, though, he's so cheeky. He doesn't care. He wants to take one opportunity after another, but it's so, so difficult. Getting into that angle is surely nearly impossible from this position. Nevo was fully aware that both of the soldiers from top 5 rocket are down and there is no one that can contest him, you know, to spam the angles and, and the doors. So he was just free to basically peek any angle that he wanted, but it's very unfortunate that the Ombrak was just holding so close to the wall that he couldn't get in. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate, but I mean, you know, we can also say, say it was uh, it was some good play from Ombrak, you know, he knew his positions, but it does look like it's going to be the Nevo show continuing. Not really hit a shot yet, I mean... He's getting different opportunities, but at least for the time being, nothing's really stuck out of something he, you know, really wants too much. He's, oh, he's getting the peak really deep into left. You've got to feel like top five and seven shouldn't be so happy about this. Eventually, he's just going to walk in and possibly his body shot Ombrak, you know. He's got to be screaming at his team. Ombrak's going to be like, guys, come on, keep control of the left-hand side. You can't keep putting me at risk like this. You really need protection as a sniper there on the, on the far right-hand side of your aura. I mean, if you are, if you want to peek into lobby like that and you just get swarmed by, let's say, two soldiers or a scout Russiany, you really need that. We can see that they are pretty well set up. They have a sticky trap. They have Azunis there. Azunis actually jumped. Oh, 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 oh. Once again, the soldiers from Aura Electric perfectly aligning themselves to get a nice, easy and poison. poison. Oh, following up after poison. Everyone was so weak because they were pushing in. They, they got forced off, so they wanted to get something done with the Uber. But the only thing that's done is that everyone after the Uber was so weak because they were all rushing in and boys are just following up after the Uber play. Just gonna... That's absolutely insane. Grok Mikoy is going to be absolutely ecstatic because Poison is owning. And we're going all the way to second now. Two more clean frags for Aura Electro. Goodbye, Kuno and Everex. We don't want you around here anymore. Still 30% advantage. Eames wants to keep on pushing this advantage as well. They might even be able to keep looking at take this forward. Yeah. Once again, picking up Opti one by one by one. They're just batting top five and sons to the side. And they could maybe, if they deny this Ford spawn, no, Everex would just about get it. So it will be equal Ubers and it will be just a one player advantage. But it's possible Aura might want to keep moving here, at least get some opportunity for a bit of a sack. As all five players, I believe. Yeah, this sword is going in deep again, but as soon as he can't make the magic happen every time. And Ombrak's going to be keeping a hold of his Uber. What I'm seeing repeating from the top five's perspective is that they are not fully decided as a team which point they want to hold. Like, they're on the mid. They had two Sully's basically holding top just way, way ahead of the rest of their team. And they really need to decide on which point they want to hold. Because once you have your team split into basically two groups, like doing different things, you're just going to get picked one by one and you're just going to get a leapfrog from... Basically what's happening now, they were pushing into last and they got pushed into their second. It was very lucky that they could at least stabilize in their second. Yeah, well, it does look like stabilization is where we're going to continue to be for the minute. No significant uh, off classes on the side of Aura Electro, but we do see Kuni once again picking up the sniper rifle. So getting a bit of an opportunity, oh, not quite hitting it on poison. 
and he's, uh, you know, they always say that first shot on Sniper is the most important one, you know. The second they hear that shot ring out, they're like, okay, we're going to play just a little bit differently. Yeah, exactly. We're going to change our positions. Like, that first shot was good. Oh! Never mind. Apparently <laughs> not. Yeah, Eames is just going to be AFK, and they're actually going to pick up a Zunis as well. Overstaying is welcome towards Saw Kunu. Keeping up this aggression. Oh, need that opportunity for a shot there. Even Damos is peeking forward now. Sorex is a little bit too passive now. It's a little bit different now for top five and sevens. They're going to be trading, but they don't really have a scout to follow up with this. Everex, more than competent here, but it's actually pretty good. He was forcing a lot of flashes right now and even getting a bit of height here. Yeah, picking up Everex. At least there will be a trade for Nevo, but the rest of top five and sevens. They can't really get an Opti though on the flank. Oh, two crispy rockets cleaning demos up oh so easily. And it's going to be top five and sevens. Very happy with that. Just chilling a little bit further back on second, gonna be playing their advantage. The fact that they're completely content to give up second least for the time being, if they want to block, they kind of have to do it now, but they might have actually left it a little bit too late. We did see at least one moving on lower, so this might be a potential backup opportunity. Yes, we actually have Azunas on last. He's gonna be getting decimated by Octi, so. Ooh, a little bit scary there, a little bit scary. A little bit scary. That was way too close for top five's comfort, but that's something you really want to do when the enemy medic goes down and you're fighting these players just to play the point and have to play aggro without heals, then at the end of the fight, you can just pick them one by one, but it almost cost them a round there. Uh, but now they're securing the midpoint, you know, full uber advantage. They're put actually 40% advantage, but they're ready to move into the slower grass area, maybe they can get on second in time before Demos gets his uber, but Aura is looking strong. They, they really want to hold on to this point. Yeah, I mean, doesn't think Demos going to be uh, going to be getting so close to his. Taking down Everett's going to make this more difficult. 95% on Demos. Actually, Ward's going to be jumping in, doing so much damage. Taking down Demos, old man War with the stickies. My god, Demos was so, so close. And actually, they might just be able to roll this to last. They don't have soldiers, but only three players up on Aura Electro. Maybe they want to, maybe not. I feel like the brain place to play the Uber, but you know, every now and then you gotta follow your heart. However, I think top five and sons are heartless. Brain that will was, prevail. That was absolutely huge from war. Uh, Demos was at 97% there, literally a second away from his Uber. That would have changed everything. If Demos got the Uber there and managed to pop off and save his demo man, they would be holding on to mid right now. Uh, yeah. But now they're holding glass on Uber disadvantage. They don't have time to set up a gun. They only have Nevo with the heavy weapons guy and his minigun on this track area. And we see Ombrak using the Zebra on far left hand side on War. And yeah. not many kills are getting traded. Nothing really is happening. We see War bumping forward. I mean, they're getting some frags now. Yeah, there's a bit of a collapse and. I don't even know quite how this is happening. Somehow Demos is on point, and that's actually just going to be that. How did that happen? The entire During the entire Uber, no one was dying. And then once the Uber was done, I, I was just literally spotting the health bars of the red team just going down one by one. And at the end of the day, it was just Demos alone trying to get Sauce. Almost got the Uber with his Uber saw, but didn't quite manage to do so. So it's going to be free 2 for top 5. Four minutes left. Yeah, that's going to be it. So going into yet another mid. It's been a pretty fast-paced game. Or maybe wanting to keep up this pace. Getting a little aggressive early. Opti this time. He's going to be jumping deep. Azunis, though, not quite hitting those all-important rockets. Poison as well. Getting cleaned up these Aura soldiers. Always in sync and dying, apparently, that way as well. We do see War actually jumping in nice and deep onto Ombrak. Oh, doesn't... Doesn't... Uh, sorry, not onto Ombrak. What am I talking about? That was the easiest jump in the jump right. That was the one. Forgive me, you just Actually, that was very well played on mid from, from top five songs because they, they knew that the time is pushing onto the aura guys, so they had to play something aggro on mid. So they were awaiting the double solid aggression, and that's exactly what happened. They just clean up the soldiers and then move forward once they are dealt with, and it was just clean cut mid, and now they're gonna be feeling safe. Holding onto this second point, three minutes left, one round up. They could have literally built a sentry gun on the second point. Just be happy with that. They could, it looks like they didn't quite want to. I believe they had an opportunity to get some weirder off classes if they want, but I think they're quite happy just to stay here. Eames, though, he knows that clock is ticking down and they need at least one round of forces to yet another golden cap today. They're peeking and prodding in lobby, but you see War on his angles getting some really, really good spam. The place where Ombrak's positioned makes it really difficult, but actually picking up War, that really opens up opportunities. Now, Opti's actually jumped straight to last. He's got the pain train. 
He will get taken down by some swift rockets from Poison and Mizuna, so this is two players down now for top five. This is about as good of an opportunity as you're really going to get, but Eames gets taken down before anyone can really get through the doorway, so... I mean, an opportunity basically lost there. Demos as well getting really weak. I feel like you're nearly getting to the position where you just have to trade, and yet looks like they think the exact same. Demos using just that little bit earlier, so only about 15%, and Yeehaw just keeping them from getting too far into this doorway, but ultimately they will have to back up. Eames is up in one second, and the refresh has to be pretty soon, because one minute 50, you don't have a lot of time to wait around. Yet again, it felt like Opti, he was going for a solo play again, just trying to back up on last, but it doesn't seem like he's that connected. It's happened a couple of times this game where he's done his own thing, and the end, it, it, it's clear that top five... They have no idea about Azunas. They have absolutely no idea. He's jumping, he's getting one rocket, but it's not enough. It just isn't. And again, but there's someone poison. last. Oh my god, this is fighting. Opti just stands on a pain train, wins the game, and it's just like... Oh, that was so disastrous for Electro. Okay, I was in the middle of the sentence where I was talking about Opti, you know, just going for his own plays and uh, they them not working because it's not very synchronized with what their team's goal is. But then he gets around, so I guess scratch that, you know. <laughs> Joke's on you, basically. What do you know? What do you know? So this is going to be at one minute left in the game. It's 4-2, so this is technically and mathematically going to be a win for top five and something, but there's still a few moments to get some more frags in for the logs to make sure our analysts think that you're good at the game. So it does look like Aura Electro is going to be securing one more mid here. Yep, shot after shot after shot. Nevo's just hitting meat shots everywhere, even combining with Yuho to pick up Ombrak. So crispy little wipe here, but it's not really going to be enough here to secure things. And it looks like, um, looks like it's going to be an early lead in terms of maps for top five and sons. And that's a score one that I was actually expecting, but the game didn't look like from what uh, for what I was you know looking for. It, I really wanted to see top five just dominate the entire map because uh, it feels like they're gonna be really strong on Snake Water. But Aura seemed to have way better coordination on mids, and it was just the transitions between the points that didn't really work out for them. It really did feel like there was a lot of times where, I mean, Azunas and Poison would do well, they'd kind of get onto Ombrak and then, I don't know, like somehow things would kind of just collapse a bit after, or maybe it's just a case of, you know, it kind of worked for a bit and then just kind of stopped working and then, I don't know, before you knew it, it was just kind of top five taking a bit of control. But, I mean, that being said, I feel like you can kind of consider it as a 3-2 with an asterisk, right? It was only a 4-2 because, you know, Eames and his merry gang of gamers kind of felt obligated to have to move forward. They with really about. had to push out. They, exactly. they were being pushed by the clock, and that's usually what happens, right? He, you are one round down or a couple of rounds down, yeah. and the clock is ticking on you, and you absolutely have to do something, even though you're pushing out of last, you know? And Snakewater being notorious of being one of the hardest maps to push out of last. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you're going to be in that position. You've got to push. You've got to do something. So, you know, realistically, I have no doubt that Aura could have kept that as a 3-2 loss, but doesn't really mean anything. Sco uh, the scoreline doesn't really factor into anything. It's all about the big W or the big L. And at least for the minute, they're going to be taking a big old lose on this first map. So I do believe, yeah, I believe we've got some analyst boys who are ready to break it down a little bit here. We've got Turbo Tabs. We've got Alba and we've got Dumtum. Um, boys, that was exciting and really, really equal. What are you thinking? Thank you, Epili. Thank you. Uh, yep, it is I. Big T. We've got Big A. And we've also... <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So, anyway, welcome back to the desk, boys. And sadly, you failed me. Like, uh, And I don't appreciate failure. So... You predicted that Aura Electro were going to win this out, and it seems it hasn't. So you're going to have to redeem yourselves and just tell me wh what went wrong. What went wrong for Aura Electro in this game? All right, so starting off in the beginning of the game, where Aura had like a little bit of control, uh, top five every mid, they would send their two solids in, and uh, Aura would just clean them up. This happened the first three mids. Uh, after that, top five changed up their mid and just were a lot more passive, and Aura sent their solids in, and they got picked off instead. So it was almost like reverse roles uh, towards the, the later mids. Okay, now I know production are absolutely you know, itching to use those logs, so we'll get them on the screen, but Dum Tum, you know, carry on, carry on with the, the good word. Why, why did Aura Electro lose this? It felt like there were so many situations where they felt, where it felt like they played way too afraid almost, not just even passive, but afraid of what is coming forward, the, the wall of uh, top five Suns players coming towards them. They 
backed out of points fairly. There was a second point where they clearly had a chance to contest. Nothing happened. There were last pushes as well, where everybody was just let onto the point by top five suns way too easily. Something that happens a few times during the regular ETFL season as well in uh, in this recent one. So it seems to be a recurring problem for them to just respect, maybe re just respect their opponents too much and let them take space too easily. That just leads to a team like top five suns to just take those opportunities and go all the way with them. Oh, boys, daddy's home. Look at Wall. He's towering above everybody. Not only, well, he's got a decent amount of kills, but his deaths are pretty low. His damage is pretty high. I mean, Eames is trying to snap him at the ankles there, but uh, he's not doing the same job in the death department. Is it, you know, is, do you see a reason of why Wall is such a force in this game? Like, is it all down to the war factor? Could any other Demo man pull off what he did today? I mean, uh, if you're looking at this top five roster, there's a lot of DM capability on this roster, and they really did well in the scrappy scrappy fights. And I, I feel like they were very good at forcing the scrappy fights onto Aura, and which in the end led to the scoreline being 4-2 for, for top five. Mm. Anything jumping out at you, Dum Tum? I mean, you, you look at the bottom, you see the Frenchies, Nevo and Azunas not performing to the standard we're used to, especially from a flank combo that is like well known for being one of the ones that played for among the longest times at the moment. So. The cohesion between the two is not quite there, whereas, surprisingly, Poison and Azunas, the soldier combo on Electro had, like, impeccable timing amongst each other. They That were, like, the standout moments for them when these double bombs happened, especially when Kuno was sniping and they had the opportunity to just only have to contest a single scout. Maybe not even that if the gun was down at last and they had NG and Sniper on the field on top five suns. The, the soldier timing was incredible in those situations, but outside of that, like, flank play-wise, it was very quiet from our Electro. All right, boys, I'll address the pastor in the room. These scouts are popping off over at Top 5 Suns. Like, did it reflect that in the gameplay, or was it these sort of those logs that just sneak up on you? Well, I think uh, we saw some good stuff, like, in-game from them. Uh, but, yeah, it was a little bit sneak up. There was a lot of scrappy fights that are hard to, like, um, to uh, follow. Uh, yeah. And, I, you know, in the end of the day, you have two capable scouts to clean up the damage from, from War and Everex. Dum Tom, usually scouts suffer at LAN just because of those LAN rockets, those LAN pipes. What? Uh, we have switched to LAN servers, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, it's still the scout class, and as long as you're playing well yourself, uh, if you're just hitting your shots, you can win out situations most other classes shouldn't be able to win. And if you're Kuno, if you're Sorix, then it's a little bit easier than if you're just your average ETFL playing scout. All right, well, I know, I know we've got some additional stats back there. Come on. Come on, let's see them. I also want to throw There we go. Thing. Oh, now these are the stats we always ignore. Let's, anything <laughs> jumping out about you about these stats in particular? 11 air shots, Everex. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. Uh, as soon as health pack stats is very nice. And yeah. And I, I guess it's just in general, like they need to just rely on health packs a lot more on, on Electro, I would say. It goes to show why we ignore these stats 90% of the time when we've got all the stats there, but once you're kind of forced to address them, it does kind of point out... Th nice. This does raise a question that I don't think I ever got answers, which is, uh, on, on Granary, the pipe, like, inflates as uh, airshot counts because it's oh. some weird bug. Does the pipe on Snakewater actually act the same way on second? Oof. I'm not sure about that, and... Did anyone else hear the X-Files, like, <laughs> <laughs> sound just play in the background there? But, uh, you might never know. Otherwise, you know... Either Everx is just really that good, or he just really likes shooting people on the pipe, and yeah, he knows yeah. something we don't. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. Anyway, let's head on over to our final screen. We've got those medic stats, because we've been quiet about the medics all, all stat long. So this is where the men's get separated from the boys here. So the only thing I see is like, maybe a, oh, what the hell? Biggest advantage loss, 198 seconds. What the, what the hell? What the, what's going on with that? That doesn't seem... Very good. <laughs> Did he disconnect from the server? Did he walk away? Bathroom break? <laughs> but if you like, just take that number and then look at deaths with 95 to 99, it's just so many opportunities lost as well, and it's hard to make up for that in so little time at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe it reveals a bit more about how these score lines kind of came about, because, again, those drops on top of those 99 to 95% things that have dropped. Hey, where are you? Okay, so with that, that means our stats are over. We're probably going to be heading back to our casters, who are going to be casting into the second game, which is a map I completely Gully. forget. Gully. Well done. This is why we keep you analysts. All right. I've been Toro Tabs. With me has been Alba. Dum Tom. We'll still be here once the game is finished. We'll head on over to Ipoli and Adiski.
Hello again, we are back. I'm Silly Philly. This is still a disky, and yeah, we're going to be going into this second map here on Gully. Now, it's pretty close first map, it's pretty exciting stuff, but top five and stone's just that little bit better. You think, uh, you think Gully's going to make a big difference here for side of War Electro? I mean, it's Gully Wash. This is the demo man map, and who was dominating the last map? It was War. It he was, was quite war. good, wasn't he? He was quite good. I did, I, very I, good. I picked up on that. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, well, it's, it's pretty good stuff along with his scouts, but I actually think we're just going to be going straight live. Yeah, players just wasting no time at all. So here we go. This is going to be, like we said, Gullywash. This is top five and sons versus Aura Electro. This is going to be for the all-important, potentially for the life of Aura Electro in this competition. War coming to mid, getting a decent bit of damage, but forced back just a little bit. We do have lovely little soldiers trading uh, damage right now. No one quite going down. Everett's super weak, though, but the first two frags go the way of or Electro, and once again, same as we've seen so many times, but no disaster! As War's gonna get picked up now, only two scouts and one medic remaining, while all six players on Or Electro are gonna surge forward, take at least control a second, and they, I mean, there's no reason why they can't look to sack at least onto last right now. I'm pretty sure every single soldier that's connected to the server right now was playing Crown on, on that mid. I mean, the lower Crown is, is pretty fine, but it really wanna be bomb with the enemy team, but it looks like we just have Aura just pushing into last straight away, just being really aggro, trying to take over, uh, control over this last area already without even having second cap. Yeah, it looks like they really wanted to peek deep and try and get something towards Ombrak, you know, any kind of opportunity. But I mean, your boy is just standing in spawn, so what really can you do? Ultimately, nothing's going to matter too much. It was just frags being traded. Uber's now completely equal, but Aura Electro's in that comfortable position of knocking on the door of Top 5 and Sun, so... They're going to be a little bit in the driving seat here as they're peeking and prodding. You know, he was just getting some info towards main. He wants to see exactly what's going on. What's happening with the gun of Sorax? You know, can we take it down nice and easy? Any kind of point plays we can start to think of? You know, you've always got to be wondering where are War's traps? Because he's an absolute giga brain when it comes to the traps. So they're never going to be quite where you expect it. You do actually see, yeah, even sticking the front side of point, even actually just getting a scout on the point now. Nevo somehow living far, far longer than you'd expect. And as soon as he's set up with paint train behind the point, no one knows about him. No, he's just walking in again, and he's actually standing on it! Azunis! That was such a nice play. I mean, first off, they spammed Opti out of the point, then just easily peeking and killing him, you know, just taking his damage one by one, eventually killing him. And then we had a scout, I think it was Nevo, just playing from behind the point, getting some of the cap time. And while that was happening, Azunis just sneaks in through lower and just gets on a point. No one was accept expecting that. Nope, I mean, that's the raw power of the pain train. It's so, so crucial, and it's getting Aura Electro just a solid two-minute round there. So, easy stuff for them, looking good. And Top Farmer Sons are going to be looking for a much, much better mid. You do see soldiers jumping in. Poison getting the first frag, but trading out and trading out again. Aura Electro looking pretty good so far this mid. Opti gets that all important frag towards Eames, but really everything was coming the way of them. Other than that one little crispy frag by Everex picking up demo, so it's not all the way of Aura Electro, but just mostly. I really want to say that Aura soldiers that mid were perfectly in sync, and that was one of the best mids I've ever seen. We so, but I don't think you guys saw there, but Azunis was playing from drop down, and Poison was bombing at the same time, so both of the scouts were looking at Azunis, and Poison had free and uh -huh. basically. But they can't really contest the second point right now because they didn't have their heals up. They got a cap off, but it's not really gonna matter in the kind of speed. Oh, they're brave, they're brave, boys. They actually sort of just wanna bust all the way through. Nebo committing through now, getting some good damage towards War. Yeah, combining with Yeehaw to actually pick up two now, and all of a sudden, this is terrifying for top five. They're all about point, they're getting picked up one after another after another, and suddenly, it's just Opti and Lobby. Yeah, he's dead as well. There's surely no spawns at all. This might just be a second easy round for Aura Electro with a perfect repush. Does Nevo have like an invisibility cloak? He, he literally just walked through the cloak full of sticky bones and just. He was just hiding behind the rock and no one was shooting him, but everyone saw him go there. It, it, and then he just comes out, kills War, and his team pushes in. What was that? I, I, I don't get it, right? I, I don't get it. You know, they've got to be able to lock down these choke points. You can't just let people repush in for free, but it just seemed like. And maybe top five and sons were just a little bit too kind of interested in playing the Uber. They forgot about the rest of the game, but the answer or Electro looking good and Everett is getting aggressive, gets some decent damage. And the follow-up from Opti is looking good now as well. Picks up Azunas and Poison. So this is good. And even with Opti all the way behind, this is looking absolutely acceptable for top five and sons. And Opti, absolute perfect job. 
takes down demos and they're just following up one after another after another the only saving grace really I mean, Yeehaw has picked up a couple of frags and he actually might even want some more. He's got two scouts to do. Surely, surely he doesn't get it and he won't. Yeehaw actually just walked into that team full of players. But it looks like Top 5 is pretty good at starting to adapt to, to mids that Aura is whipping out of the textbooks. And, you know, being two rounds down five minutes into the game, it really hits you hard. You really have to change something about your gameplay. And now pushing into last with full uber advantage, I feel... I think they're just going to regroup and put straight away. Yeah, I feel like it makes a lot of sense. You know, you don't want to wait too long. This Uber is being built on the side of demos, you know. They're going to be set up in, in, a, in a fairly solid way, you know. These, these teams, they, they know how to hold last. They know exactly kind of what their idea will be. So, we are seeing the Uber come in now. A lot of damage taken down this gun. Not quite picking up this Pyro, but we are getting the scout jumping all the way behind point. All importantly, trying to get onto this demo. Uno doing really, really good work. He picks up Azunas and actually Eames is getting super weak now. And Sorx is on the follow up, but Poison getting some decent damage in again. Kunu just trying to play for this repush a little bit. We have players from top five and sons on each side. It's the scout who should be in such a such a good position here. Oh, this is so, so close to being perfect. Kunu now going in super deep, but the Uber is getting used. Demos saving his heavy and Kunu and just Ombrak have to scarper away. I mean, they might just about make it out here. Yeah, it looks like the soldier can really follow up. So, I mean, worst case scenario, they've still got themselves a nice sizable advantage. That was a very nice start of a push. I mean, just getting the top right control area, getting the gun down and then rushing the scout underneath, killing the, you know, soldier and demo, or at least scaring them off from holding that water area. But something went wrong. Uh, I feel like the heavy didn't get focused down, but now we see an, another uber advantage push up on the top right side, and exactly the same thing is happening. Kunu is clearing out the water with Opti, and they are just playing on point with two scouts, and it's gonna be a round. Yep, just like that, all they gotta do is stand up point, clear those stickies, and that's all that she wrote. So, top five and Suns getting back into it now. 2-1 still lead for Aura Electro, but, I mean, they can just get a couple more mids like that. It really seems like this game, it's a case of uh, if one team can have a dominating mid, they can just kind of roll from there. It, the last holds are not looking very strong uh, at this point. We, we've seen three really fast rounds, but what's going on on mid, equally? Well, we're going to see some soldiers just jumping around, not doing a great deal, just trying to take a little bit of position. No one's fully willing to commit just yet. Opti he will be the first frag. Poison and Eames getting immediately traded, though, so that's good stuff. Everett with a really, really nice bomb. Oh, picking up Azunas, getting so much damage towards, once again, a medic and both scouts trying to get charited away. And there's five players from top five and sons. They want to chase. They really want to, but they're just not quite fast enough. It's actually really interesting because the, uh, the Aura Electro scouts, they... I don't want to peek a little bit towards second. They've not really got the spam to do anything too much. Poison's actually all the way towards last picking up Everex, so it's going to be good. They're going to deny that little bit of a flank, and yeah, they will have to give up second for the time being, but the repush could potentially be on here towards top war. They don't really have any sticky towards shutter now. It looks like they've been peeking probably just a little bit too much, but the Ash is going all the way main. Uber's getting used two frags, super easy. War's just jumping straight to point, sticking front side. It should be so, so good. Uber's got used now on Electra, and they're just getting to point in time. They're going to be picking up War and Kuni, possibly another now. Yep, Sarks will be down. We actually see Opti behind point once again. So Aura Electro is going to be pretty scared about pushing, but he'll get cleaned up. Really, really good effort from Top 5 and Sons, but Aura Electro, they're just too quick. You know, when you're holding that second point and you see a blob of red players up on top, you, you really want to push that shutter door and Uber in and just run to last, but the timing ne almost never works. You have to be super precise with your timings. You have to have two scouts ready to just to go straight for the point. And it barely ever works. I mean, that was a really nice try because I don't think Imis wasn't ready to, sh you know, sticky up the shutter because he was actually up top with his team when they were pushing out. But it was very unlucky for top five sons. And now they're holding with equal Ubers got teleported back from second to middle. So it makes their life a little bit harder. Just, just a little bit, yeah, but you know, it isn't too bad. There wasn't anything super, super disastrous. We do see Top 5 and Suns just getting a little bit aggressive towards the flank. Sarx, he does try and run in, but he's going to get cleaned up. Looks like he wasn't quite welcome where he was. Poison, though, jumping from underneath. He's actually getting up immediately. Oh, he just doesn't get the angle, though. Just jumped a little bit too fast, wasn't quite aware of what was going on. And, you know, sometimes geometry is just your enemy. So 
One player down, E3 FC. Yeah, Everex is jumping in. So, so clean. Getting this nice force onto Demos. And even the juggle from some of these stickies, just keeping Demos away from committing to this choke point. Giho as well, having to back up. So now we've got, you know, it's it's an equal player situation, but there's a huge Uber advantage on Ombrak. And I think they're just going to look to try and walk in for free here. Top five sounds is just so good at, at that, uh, you know, and instantly when Demos uses his Uber, all of top five sounds just instantly goes into this bunker mode where they're all grouped up around their medic and just running it down. And that, that's so good because now they're taking second for free and they're pushing into us with 50% add. It's probably just going to be a... They're going to main with War and Kunu. Guns only level 2 with the Pyro on top of it. Pyro is not going down but the sentry gun goes down and now the heavy comes out of the spawn. That's the one thing that you want to be able to focus down before your Uber fades. But it's, it's of really the Aura soldiers going down, if anything can happen, so... Yeah, it's really, really scary. I mean, those soldiers have gone down. There's so many actually towards spawn now. They're going to have to deal with these stickies on point. They still have a scout behind in the form of Yeehaw, but... Demos is going to be getting his Ubi. He's going to be using now. There's going to clean up a couple quick frags. I mean, it's not kind of a... everything said and done just yet, but... It does look like that will be a hold from Aura Electra, but... Same situation again, top five and subs. They've got this uber advantage. They're about 70% now. If Aura want to do something based off this one pick, they kind of need to go right now. They're picking almost as if they want to, but the second they recognize the top fives is set up too well, they're just like, guys, we got a backup. We can't really afford to do this. We can't afford to walk into an uber. We need to just chill. Eames just only setting up on point, so maybe if top five and subs were just a little bit faster, they could have caught him just a little bit unawares and. You know, maybe, maybe on another day, but he was going to get used now. War walking in right-hand side along with Everex getting some decent damage and decent time towards point. Stick's going to get dead and the combined power of Poison the Eames going to be taking out these guys towards point. Opti once again with his Pain Train. That's a lot of cap time, but it's not going to be enough. Looks like this hold's just going to keep on going. War and Ombrak backing all the way out to second and just trying to keep away from these jumping soldiers. War was just barely basically robbed out of two frags on the top right. Pyro gets out with like 10 health. The heavy is just getting pumped with arrows as he's shooting. You know, sometimes you just see a heavy and you're like, I'm just gonna kill this guy. But then he eats like three arrows in a row and that's not happening. But we see Uber coming out into mid from Orc. Victor, not really much. No, it's nothing too not crazy. Too much with that. Yes, it seemed like Eames kind of wanted to jump once again and Sticky gets shot away from him. So, you know, at least they managed to keep them outside the choke point. They managed to take down Opti. So if there's an immediately uh, an, an immediate repush in the uh, hands of War and Everex, it's going to have to be without their second soldier just for the moment. But they're rotating Victor with the beat. Ah, so it might be a case of War's just feeling like a little bit of a jump. They have kind of telegraphed this. They've just been a bit like, hello, boys, right? We're going to jump in in a second if you want. But he's actually just going to be even more patient than that, just kind of slowly walking up. He's now going to keep walking this. Really greedy, actually. They want to walk all the way through without using it. Actually, it does look like Aura's almost a little bit content to let them have that, not even jumping anyone that deep. I think they were just as confused as I was. That, that was actually a pretty smart play from top five, uh, because they were just faking, you know, using their uber aggro, because that's what you usually do when you go to victory. You want to just jump in your demo. And or I got so scared that they just instantly built into their choke and then this their choke area is just free for, for taken and now we see an Uber trade. Kunu gets unluckily dropped so they have to retreat to mid. Uh, not exactly great and honestly if they can't lock this choke point now it's gonna be pretty scary. War towards his elbow. It's almost a good situation, but it's going to get cleaned up along with Everex now. So this is really, really scary if you're top five and sons. Opti's all the way behind the rest of the combo. No one's able to help you, buddy. Absolutely nothing that can really be done there. And that's just kind of, yeah. That trade went all the way of Aura Electra, and they can kind of start looking to move towards second now. No reason why they couldn't cap that and maybe start peeking towards, uh, towards last a little bit. What that looked like was... That just top five sons didn't really count their Ubers really well because it, it just looked like a you know usual double scout Uber into basically a chase mode. But they ended up hitting a brick wall called the enemy Uber and they just ah. got completely rolled and War was also completely out of position in the elbow area, just getting absolutely mulched by by the Aura players. And now Aura one round up, sixteen minutes left, they are more than confident in, you know, holding this second and lobby area. And uh, top five sons just have to retreat all the way back to us and, and set up there. But Kunu's up on the sniper, so you know how that's gonna go. Yeah, well, you know, he was he was saying earlier that in the uh, the game versus a set NA, he was he was kind of popping off, you know. People didn't always see it, and it didn't always lead to frags, but he was hitting some shots. So I mean, you know, here you go, buddy. Here's an opportunity. Show us exactly 
for why you're known as the Sniper Main. He's going to be just playing pretty defensive towards last right now, just kind of peeking between River and Main and top right, and, you know, he's different angles. We do see a soldier jumping in, Azunis, though, not really able to deal any damage before getting taken down by that sentry, so, you know. He gave it a go, and I feel like we might be seeing some kind of off-class on the side of Aura Electro, possibly a Spy or something along those lines. It's, it's, it's really difficult to deal with getting onto this last when you've got this kind of position where the medic's holding forward, you've got this gun set up, you've got everyone kind of playing forward, especially with stickies towards river. It's, it's really hard to get in. So the first thing you definitely want to do is get rid of the gun. That opens up so many possibilities where you can start point point, you can start point river aggressively, you can start point shadow more aggressively, but there are really no spam angles other than river and if you peek river there's that sniper danger right from top left yeah. area so it's very very difficult to do anything without doing any of classes so we'll, we'll see how aura is gonna take this but from the looks of it they just they're just looking for an opening with their soldiers where they can spam the gun potentially but i really want to see some of classes from aura maybe with how the spy you know at the people don't really have Years. <laughs> there, there is a lot of <laughs> no background. Ways. There, there is a lot of background noise. Let, let me tell you that. Yeah, exactly. But it doesn't look like Aura is going to be in a position to really want to do that. Kunu actually did go to Spire a second ago just to check some classes just in case. But you know, looks like a uh, you know credit to top five. They're kind of keeping an eye on the situation. But Aura Electro is just perfectly happy to kind of keep poking and prodding with some of their soldiers. And I mean, in fairness to them. They are round up. They don't technically have to do anything at this point. They could just wait around forever. As much as that wouldn't be the most exciting thing, that is an option. Really, you almost want to think Top 5 and Sons might want to get a bit more aggressive with their sniper or actually Cooney's back to scout. So possibly he might just go for one of these kind of, you know, run out through main and try and wing a jump up top. But it's going to be Nevo peeking towards lower. All picking up Opti now with Poison. Getting aggressive now. Getting a little bit of cap time. They're forcing all these top five players to look in every which direction. Uber's actually getting used now by Ombra. And once again, Eames and Demos, they're so, so far back. There's no reason why they should have to use it. Only really, Everex is jumping in now, but he's going to get easily piped by Eames. Really, really nice coordinated play from Aura Electro. And they might just be able to walk in all the way from River now. It looks like they're just perfectly happy to. The headshot, though, from Kunu, ripping the head off of Eames. That's really, really nice. Is it going to be too little, though? The three shots from Yeehaw to War hitting every single one is going to be everything they need. Standing on point and securing a third round. And it, as I was saying, that this last push is really, really tough to break. Aura seem to have, you know, kind of broke it themselves in a different way. They're really good at getting Opti off of the high ground, even killing him twice now. And that's what got him two rounds, where they just kill Opti somehow from River, and then they just play super aggressively onto the point with everything. The first round, they just got the cap straight away, and the second round, they, they got the force off. Definitely looks like it's working. I, I really feel like Opti's getting the most out of his pain train, but in terms of this mid, Azunas, the first casualty, all of it, like, a few seconds in, and it might just be a case that Aura Electra is like, Nah, we've not really got any initiation now. I feel like I feel like that's an issue. Whenever you use a soldier really early, especially on Gully, it can be so powerful for a soldier, but when you lose that source of initiation, it can be really, really hard. If you lose any class before basically the rest of your entire team can actually get to us, uh, I mean mid, what am I going to say? <laughs> if you lose a person before you get to mid, that's basically mid done because you really don't want to take that 5v6, you know, just coming into your fresh game. And especially if we are two rounds up, uh, you really don't want to play risky. I think Aura is just going to be really happy just holding onto the second point with the usual hold where I like to call it a seven hold, you know, where Eames is playing big door with his nice little track, watching the big door. Just down to there, ready to spam anyone who dares come into his territory. And it looks like many people dare. Uh, so they're going to be trying to walk a little bit. Everex and Opti both trying to sync up some rockets. We do have Nevo sniping this time from Big Door. He has been spotted. Uber's actually coming all the way through. Joke and actually catching out Poison. The headshot ringing out on Zarks is going to make this just a little bit more palatable for the side of Aura Electro. But my god, there's just so many scrappy fights. It looks like Everex versus Azunis. Azunis just about winning here. But actually, it's the fight on Choke right now, which is the scary one. Kunu gets taken down though, and it's going to be Opti, War, and Omrak trying to back out now. It's only really about four versus uh, four versus three at this point. Actually, no, there's more spawners coming up now, and the deep bombs from the soldiers. They might be looking pretty good. Not really securing these frags though. A little bit aware of how weak some of these Aura players are. It's quite scary, but ultimately. Barely arrowed, but 
they're just playing so aggressively. <laughs> they just keep on walking forward and they don't care. They're just pushing on low health. Absolutely doesn't matter at all. I feel like there was a world there where really they could have just got absolutely kind of nuked in that choke point. But I mean, War gets taken down, then another one, another one. And now there's two seconds left to go before any of these first spawners are up. So really, Aura Electra has every right to start moving to a second. But the solo Uber, oh my lord, we're seeing an arms Uber, but this time it's Kunu. So gonna be forcing off that bit of a trade. Flashes from each side. Opti, he's staying in just a little bit, buddy. There's Uber boys everywhere. You can't really afford to do that. So he's losing his life. Azunis is getting, trying to get onto War. Just about might escape with his life. Oh, it's almost a crispy little escape, but it's not really going to happen. And Sorax has no interest in letting these Aura players get towards the second point. He's actually just going to keep on going. The Beam just about getting disconnected from him, but he's just going to single-handedly force the rest of this team out. Like, no, get out. We have no interest in letting you in here. They can possibly keep on moving forward. The stacking of mid, it's not going to be enough. Azunis will spawn, so it will be a 6v6. It is going to be an equal Uber, but a nice hold from top five. Yeah, that, that second hold there, I mean, it was a really smart play too, because top five calculated the spawners better than Aura did. Basically, they uber traded, fell back, and then by the time that the uber was over, they had all six ready to basically go. Now we see Everex and Op Ooh. just jumping to get it to choke force off, but really? the players to get it force off. Oh my god, War's actually just trying to full commit here. He's trying to get these stickies towards, but they're dodging. Oh, Demo's not quite able to dodge hard enough. And actually, there's actually going to be a flank now. There's so many players. Or is actually crushing the entirety of top five and sons. That was an absolute disaster. They were so, so aggressive in that choke point. Thinking, yeah, we'll 4v6. We got the Uber. Turns out the flank just came in, and Aura Electric just completely wipes them. That's a disaster. That's a one thing you don't want to do when you suck into when you suck into players. You really don't want to stay forward and take a you know the four v six fight because you might get the medic kill if you focus him down. You might get like maybe two frags, but your players are definitely gonna be weak at the end of at the end of the uber trade, and then you're just gonna end up in a disadvantageous hey, fight, and that's exactly what happened. They got wiped. Yeah. It's eight minutes, thirty seconds left. Two rounds up for for Aura, and they're holding on to mid. It seems like we might end up in a similar situation to last game, where this time it's going to be top five and so on. Starting to think a little bit about that clock, maybe letting that dictate the pace of things a bit. Everex, he will be under point. He's going to be jumping up, getting a nice rocket towards the demo here, but not quite cleaning him up. Wars going to be taking down four and no so trading frags, and actually just going to be fighting directly on the mid. The damage from Azunas' bomb, really, really Christmas. Actually just... Oh my god, this is so, so bad that Uber's just a bit of a disaster. And Gihor, he doesn't even want to let them get out right now. Surely that's too aggressive. Surely Scout Class is not quite that good. Not today. War might even be getting cleaned up here. Yeah, the sticky is perfectly positioned by Eames. Oh, this is really, really scary right now for your top five and sons. They've got players down really... I mean, War's down for another 10 seconds. Or could possibly go for a point play here. I think they're a little bit too slow. And I think exactly what you said earlier, Disky, I feel like maybe in another world where it was equal they would try and go a bit more aggressive but at this point i think they're happy just to let their round advantage kind of you know keep allowing them to play just that little bit slower definitely and from what i noticed three times in a row now that ombrak uh, and just top five sons in general they they drop three players before they use their uber and then the after uber fight is what basically matters when you're against team fights it's not about how long you can milk your uber it's about how how many players you can save but top five sons seem to be just pushing out like that but aura is not giving up yet no absolutely not at all so everx has already gone down the uber has been used much earlier by on this demos uber might be a little bit able to chase right now all the way towards lobby it looks like they're gonna try and focus on but actually he's managed to get out relatively safely it looks like or Electra is happy to pick up just a couple frags there. Opti's going to be down for a little bit. And again, they could go last if they wanted to, but I don't think they do. They're just going to keep on building this Uber. And this is technically an opportunity now. There's no Ubers, so an off Uber push can be on the cards for the side of top five and sons. They're trying to move towards top. They're taking so much damage from the soldier in the drag spot. It's already hard, though. Kuna and Everett are just getting taken down. They're going to have to back all the way out to last now, top five and sons, and they've got so many players down. It's going to be Nevo just running straight to point now. He's going to distract the entirety of the combo, trying to get some shots towards Opti, and the rest of the team's just absolutely flooding through. There's no, no, no way that top five and sons going to hold this. And it's going to be 4-1 now for Aura Electro, and it's really, really scary if you're top five and sons. I mean, I definitely get it that we are really being pushed by the clock, but six minutes for two rounds, it's still, there is still room 
room to basically work with. You don't need to be rushing, pushing out of last without even having Uber in on the 6v6 situation. It's it's just something very difficult, and it's maybe 10% that it's actually going to work out. I mean, definitely, uh, yeah, 10% is not really something worth committing to, but now they've got to commit to even less than that, really. 12 5 percent kind of need to just win everything from now on. Opti getting these two rockets towards Demos. That's going to be a good start to this mid, but as soon as he takes him down, Omrax dying as well. FRX and Opti as well. Nothing really they can do. There's so many weak players. War and Sorax just about managing to escape. I mean, they pick up Poison now, and, you know, in all of that kind of catastrophic fighting here and there, Demos did die, but really at this point, I feel like if you're Aura, you're fine to have equal Ubers. You don't really want Uber advantage. You don't really care about pushing last anymore. You just want to keep on delaying the clock till these five minutes are over and you secure this map. And now Aura knows that top five Suns are going to be pushing into mid, and they're perfectly set up for that. You have sticky traps everywhere uh, in Choke. You have people watching Big Door. And I feel like this is just going to be mulching in the blue truck. I mean, in the blue big door. And we see both of these blue soldiers jump in and just get it instantly denied. Yeah, that's going to get pounded a little bit now. And Kunu just a little bit away from the rest of his team. War as well. They're getting some decent damage, actually. They've turned this somehow into a three versus three. It might be just about a chance if War can get some big old damage. But he's actually looking behind, not quite sure of where some of these Aura Electra players are. And maybe. Maybe there was a bit of a chance there, miss just from a bit of miscoordination. But I mean, you know, War doesn't have time to think about that. He's kind of just got to keep on moving forward. The Uber advantage doesn't really matter. You can see him physically calling for his team, guys. We've got to keep on going. If this is the trade, so be it. It doesn't really matter. Uber's not getting used. Demos just a little bit better. This is about 30% better. Uber and War's gonna be jumping up top. He's gonna provide at least bare minimum a distraction. But how quickly is he gonna get cleaned up? It looks like it's gonna be too, too much for his team. Opti does jump in. He manages to pick up demos, but the rest of the players, they're not really able to do anything. It's just Kunu all by himself. He's getting cleaned up as well. And this is just, this is going to be so, so difficult now for top five sons to get into this. It's it's very difficult for top five sons. And you're basically just, you, you could be praising, yeah, you could be asking way too much if you wanted to do a Uber trade through Big Door and actually looking for a success, right? I mean, War jumping behind trying to do a distraction for his team, that was very smart, but it's very difficult to go through that big door area if you're not Ubered. You're just gonna instantly eat like 200 damage. But what can they do? At three minutes left, it's three rounds, so they keep pushing forward into mid as well. Yeah. Everett's gonna take by the trap, but they're, it looks like Aura is just ready that they're just gonna get caught. Absolutely, the meat grinder is in full swing. They're like, yeah, we'll have you, we'll have the next one, we'll have the next one, whatever. Once again, we're only in a chariot position. I mean, I feel like at this point, the only real opportunity Top 5 and Sons have is to just build their Uber like madmen and then just do like a chariot Uber all the way through main and hope to God somehow you can like double meat shot demos or something along those lines. With 2 minutes 40, it is just absolute desperation. You've got to go for it though, right? You've always got to go for it. We've, we've seen like the TCM games. Everyone's seen the old games back in the day. You know it should technically be possible somewhere in some world, so you've just got to go for it. That's exactly what they're doing. They're going for the trade on Everex, who will be an actually the first rocket did like 500 damage. The, the Aura guys were so grouped up, and the trade is looking so good, but you know, we are getting towards the uh, end of the Uber trade, and it looks Ooh. like the five suns are actually getting on top of that. Yeah, a lot of success actually. It's actually, it's only demos getting out all the way towards drop down. Ooh, oh, he just about manages not to surf that pipe up, and Wars is gonna two pipe him. Thankfully, Yeehaw's gonna be doing pretty good work picking up War, but before he gets taken down himself. So, this is gonna be just Nebo on the side of Aura Electro. Top five and sons at least maybe able to get some kind of sympathy round. The spawners are coming in. Ebrex has done some decent damage, at least getting a little bit for his logs. But the rest of his team's already in the I believe he has a scout point, but ooh, these directs, they're starting to work. I mean, why, you've gotta keep on going anyway. Why not just keep it? Yeah. Off you I go. Mean, by this time, it's, different. it's definitely garbage time, but maybe Top 5 Sons still want to prove that they can get a couple of rounds towards the end of the, end of the game. At least make the score line, you know. 4-2, four 4-2. Two, four two. There's yeah, a certain symmetry two, to it. 4-2 sounds better than 4-1, you know. Exactly so. We have this Uber again, looking towards River. Eames just by staying up on point once again. We see this Pyro gun, same position as we were in last time. Gun's not quite going down. These Sticky's picking up Kunu nice and easy. He's going to make things a little bit more difficult. Top 5. Not really finding a way in. Only now are they taking down Eames, and it is a very much five versus four at this point. War 
He's trying to get some stickies down, but not really hitting that one important damage. Getting a nice little bit on that soldier and trading with poison. Azunis. Oh my god, actually, somehow, it looks like they might possibly just commit. Yeah, come on, boys, you just got to go in. It doesn't matter if it's a heavy, just go through, commit, try and Perfect. focus down these heavy. players. Just do it. The candidate would do about it, but Ombra gets in through water. He's on a solo mission on the soul. The brain play. <laughs> nah, it's not going to work at all. Uber's going to get used, and the heavy main Nevos is going to be taken down one after another. So. 30 seconds left in the game, you know, usually I'm I'm the first guy to say it's going to be a TCM, but I think at this point even I must concede, not actually possible for Top 5 and Sons to get back into this one. I don't think they can get three rounds in 15 seconds. I don't think so either, right? And yet, no, 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 that, that's going to be it. So, this will be Aura Electro tying it up in terms of maps, and it looks like we're going to be going to, of all things, a product. A decider. I Woo! Oh, that was a oh, nice air shot. That was a nice air shot. That's a classy way to end the game. I'm liking that one. Good old Everex. Everett's getting airshot towards the logs. You know, he got 11 airshots last game. He wanted to show off on, on a screen for the one last time on this map as well. Yeah. And product coming up next, you know. Many snipers on these teams. That's going to be interesting. Snipers. And I'm so looking forward to people basically sniping left and right. Yeah, I mean, we did see in the game versus Ascent and A, um, I believe we saw Everex play a lot of scout when uh, Kunu's been sniping. So we might see the same kind of situation. Obviously, they were just fractionally outclassed in that game, I feel. However, against these kind of opponents, it's a very different kind of team. Maybe they'll be able to find just a little bit more success in it. It's definitely going to be interesting. I feel like uh, I feel like product on LAN is always really exciting, right? Because, like, obviously it's COD, so you can't really afford to, like, have a break at any point, right? It's, like, all go all the time. And then at the LAN environment, it kind of brings up the energy even more. Right. But what I'm looking forward to as well, other than the snipers, are definitely going to be the duo of Azunis and Poison. Mm. Um, it's just going to be my call that they're going to be doing some great things together on that map. Well, or, I think it's going to be interesting. Definitely looking forward to going to a third map in this best of three. But I mean, for the time being, we've got to take a moment just to, uh, just to talk over a little bit what happened on Gullywatch here and how we've seen basically a mirror of what just happened. So... We're going to be throwing it back to our desk, boys. We've still got Dumptum, still got Alba looking classy, and uh, Turbo giving me tinnitus with his shirt. Uh, boys, over to you. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Anyway, welcome back to the analyst desk here. We're going to talk about that Gully Wash game, because, boys, what happened at that Gully Wash game? I, it's, we've actually been pushed to a third map. Hey, that's pretty exciting, but that means it's going to Prodoc, which isn't good for top five sons. Oh, boo, oh, boo, oh. <laughs> Yeah, it was like almost an upgrade in every way for our Electro. They were stepped up in almost every way. There was still a mild issue of them being like too passive in situations where maybe they shouldn't. Especially in the mid fights, they were like forced into corners very, very early on and had to like fight out of the corner a lot of the time on mid. But in the grand scheme of things, they were much improved in all regards. Top five harness back to something I heard MX describe his team as at the beginning of last ETF 12 season, which is always trying to create fights, always trying to keep up fights as long as possible and never have situations die down where you could be doing something instead. A lot of aggressive play came out here, a lot of like, surprise pushes and stuff like that coming out of top five suns, and Aura has been handling it a lot better than last map. They still obviously got away with quite a few of those, but they always were able to bounce back on Aura. All right, Albert, before I get any sort of lovely honeyed word from you, let's get those logs on the screen, because that's what we're really here for. We're here to list off numbers on a stream. So. Have you got any sort of opinions before we go into these logs that allow Dumtum to kind of print off the information into his head? I mean, uh, I was just, uh, after watching that game, you could really see that uh, Eames, Yeehaw, and Nevo were doing well. Uh, I mean, even though uh, Nevo is in the bottom of the damage uh, spectrum, he's still like 19 for 8, which is a really good KD. Mm. Uh, Yeehaw with 28, 7, also really good KD. So it, Feels like Eames and uh, Yeehaw specifically really stepped up, and you see as soon as some poison also doing really well in this match. Yeah, is it just uh, players stepping up here, Dom, or is it a case of these scouts over on top five Suns kind of being neutralised a little bit? They were having a great game that first map, but now going into this gully wash, they really had a bad game. It looks like. Yeah, not even just Kunu and Sorex were a lot more quiet on this map. Also Opti, who had like a really aggressive presence last map, just didn't nearly get as much done as his counterparts and compared to himself just one map ago. So a stark contrast here with, with their performance from one map to another. And going to product, that will be interesting because as far as I remember, uh, Warren Suns, the team that is this like original incarnation of Top 5 Suns and Aura Electro played against each other on product 
during the regular season. Uh, the first map was Sunshine, which was a little bit of a weird game, but uh, Warm Suns came up on top. Or Electro, but on the other hand, took product and ran, ran away with it completely. We saw top five Suns play product already. It wasn't too pretty. Granted, opposition might have been stronger, arguably, but at the end of the day, Aura is still really good over the time, uh, has gotten really good over time on product. It's going to be a tough one, I think, for top five Suns here. All right, boys. There's no doubt in my mind that top five Suns have been doing their homework. Looking back at the... Uh, the logs and also the uh, STVs to make sure what they were doing wrong on Podor. I'm going to let you digest that information and think about it for your next prediction going into this match. Who's going to win this Podor map? Aura. Aura. I said it web one, I'm saying it again, Aura. Aura. Okay, boys, we're going to Podor and it's going to be an Aura match. Do you agree, Ipoli, Adiski? Ah. Uh I don't know. I think it's really difficult to say. Like, we've seen really good stuff from the scouts on both sides. And obviously, this is such a scout-centric map. Like, kind of first map to second, it seems kind of, you know, like a mirror image. It, it feels difficult. It feels difficult to predict, right? Like, I, I don't know if I'd be confident saying, like, Aura. What are you thinking? Uh, I'm exactly not sure either. I mean, you've got a, par you've got a powerhouse of Storax and Kunu on one side, and... Yeah. Then you have the DM God, the absolute DM God, the Eho on the other team. But Sorex was very dominant the first map, I feel like. He was. I mean, it is weird, right? I think, was that like 28 for 7 with Yeehaw second year? That's like, that's crazy. We have seen Yeehaw. I'm pretty sure he dropped about 40 frags in one of the Viaduct games this season. You know, he's incredibly, incredibly good. But I mean, we're kind of living in a world where like all the scouts in Prem are like actually really good. So I feel like you can't really base things just on that. So I don't know. Let's get scouts out of the equation then. Who's gonna be, you know, pulling their t uh, their team above the enemy team, other than the scouts? So, what do you reckon on on the soldiers on both ends? We have Opti and Everex. You know, Everex has been hitting massive air shots all the way yeah. around. He's got 11 air shots first map. Then he got a couple nice ones on on Gully Wash as well. But on the other side, we have the fearful combo of Poison and Azunis. Yeah, it's so much. It's really stuff interesting. Together. Like Azunis and Poison, they've been super, super well coordinated. But at the same time, it's like I, I, I feel like some of I feel like a lot of their success has been like kind of timing and coordination. Whereas I feel like uh, like the top five soldiers might just be able to DM it a little bit more, right? We've we've seen crazy shots being hit, like you said, kind of by Everex and by Opti as well, and. Honestly, they kind of don't really even need to play with two soldiers on the side of top five. I think one of the biggest things is going to be the fact that top five, you know, they kind of got mulched on the stream, um, you know, playing this map just yesterday. They might just be kind of, you know, thinking more than anything. We want to show people that actually we are really good at this map, you know. We, we had one um, bad game against a really good opponent, but actually we have every ability to play this map with some of the best teams out there. So... It might just be a case of, uh, you know, the, the more thinking along those lines. And I, I did hear some story somewhere that apparently War really, really likes, um, he really likes Viaduct and he kind of, you know, really thinks he has a firm understanding of how you play it. Yeah, that's another thing I was about to say. I, I, I'm pretty sure that, at least in my opinion, War is going to come out on top for me. So we've seen it on map number one. I'm pretty sure we've seen it on num map number two. I mean, they lost the second map, but War was still doing a, a lot of good damage for, for his team. Uh, but yeah, it, it can be anyone's map. I, okay. fe I feel like it's it's anything can happen. Like it's gonna come down to these flashy plays from from either of the teams. It's it's definitely gonna be or us or us soldiers or it's gonna be Kunu scout. But it looks like we'll will be going live in a second, equally. Yeah, I'm going to make a bold prediction and say, you know, I'm going to ignore the desk entirely. I think this will be a top five in science. Just to keep it interesting, that's going to be my prediction here on King of the Hill product. This is, like we said, Koth map, all important. You can't afford to waste any time here at all. Literally every second counts, and it's very easy to make mistakes in that regards. Yeah. And yeah. it looks like we're still... Still waiting on someone to ready up. Yes. No, I believe uh, all, all the players, you know, they're just taking a little moment. I feel like, you know, they might just be like a little bit shaky. They're just taking a second, you know, just to get like a little drink, you know, just to make sure everything is like happy, you know, use the facilities every now and then. It, it should be fine. So I'm going to say top five and sons. Uh, is he, are you going to say Aura Electra just to like, you know, go against me just to make this interesting? I, I was with top five sons at the start, and oh, I feel yeah. like they're going to take it away on this map as well. Unless Azunis and Poison are going to do something absolutely incredible, I think they're going to take it away. Okay, for, so what I'm going to say is, 
the casting desk says top five. The analyst desk over there says uh, aura. So we're going to see you smarter. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm excited for this game to get started. I'm not quite and sure. If we end up being the smarter duo, then we are going to swap over to the analyst. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll actually <laughs> steal their desk. We'll steal their headsets and everything. They'll, they'll be like banished into like the crowd or something, you know? I mean, I'm comfy in this chair. Yeah. Um, we'll move the chairs over, mate. Don't there. worry. Don't worry. We'll be, we'll be absolutely fine. It'll be all good. Sure. Okay, so we've talked about, I think, really everyone, apart from uh, the medic situation. Um, I mean, you know, just as they're reading up, maybe some quick thoughts about Ombrak compared to Demos. It feels like overall today, it's been just a little bit easier to get a force down to Ombrak. It feels like Demos has been really well positioned by his team. You know, medic class, you can't really judge medic's individual performance because it all it's all about what how the team plays together, right? Like, your medic is uh, being left alone, and you can't really help that as a medic. If, if you're just alone on by yourself, then of course you're gonna f gonna get forced if there are yeah. people not playing around yeah. you and stuff. Uh, I feel like mechanically both of the medics are very equal to each other. Um, but in terms of team play and stuff, I mean, Aura has been together for, for ages. Yeah, you would, you would expect a little bit more that they kind of know each other's play styles a bit, but actually, right, well, we're going to find out now. This is going to be the last game of our best of three. Top five and sons versus or Electra, I believe we're just about to start here on this game. We're going to see them start rolling out here on Viaduct. First thing we see, Azunis jumping nice and high and all the way behind, but the rest of Top 5 and Sons, they don't really care. They're going to try and move forward, but they're getting forced so far back now by Poison. A real significant frags. Really, a couple of these Top 5 players have gone down. Poison now jumping nice and deep, getting some rockets. Not quite actually connecting, and now it's Top 5 and Sons able just to walk forward and forward and forward. Yeehaw! And Eames and Demo is going to be backing all the way. Actually, no. Eames was even a spawner, so nowhere near. First mid from the top five and sons. Poison was just so... He was literally staring at Ombrak through the wall the entire mid, and he really didn't want to push that tunnel. I don't know. It, it felt like there was a field, like a force field in front of him. It, it, it was giving me a little bit of anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I want to. I want to, but just not yet. No. Not yet. Not yet. But, but the Uber comes out from both of the teams. Yeah, it's going to be a cheeky little trade now, but the follow-up, oh, perfectly timed damage here. Actually taking down War and Everex as soon as these Ubers are fading. Really, really nice. Opti now is going to be on the back line, trying to make the best out of a bad situation. Aura has just about recapped here, but Opti's going to be against two scouts now, and he's not really going to be able to keep on trucking through there. So you see Aura Electra in a kind of quasi foothold at this point. You see Azunas close towards main. Looks like the rest of Aura Electra might just about be getting forward now, so... They're going to be in a decent middle position. It was, it, it's nice to see them kind of go aggressive when they're not quite ready just to, you know, buy them some of that time. Kunu, though, he's smart. He knows how this works. You always get a pyro. You try and go through. And these rockets now from Everex. Oh, just about not getting a demo. And oh, just about goes down to Opti. So this is going to be really, really crucial. Ombrak did live through all of that. It was basically a four-man sack, but on Viaduct, you can afford to do that. You really just have to play around the... Uh, the respawn waves, but they were so smart from Opti because the rest of his team was, you know, drawing all of the attention on the far left hand side. It just looked like they are going to try pushing to them with with the pyro, just trying to air blast it their way through. But then Opti turned it into a great sack on, on demos, and now they are pushing into mid with full uber advantage. Yeah, obviously the best case scenario now for War and his gang of gamers would be not having to use here, but already losing Kunu. It's not a great start to things. It might be because he just have to jump forward and yep, Wars recognize that, but no, he's gonna get completely denied by the air shot from the soldier there. And actually he might even be able to get out. That's so crazy. Azunas now on a bit of a follow-up. He goes for the shot, he hits it! What a huge air shot from Azunas! That was absolutely massive. But also no kills. Absolutely no kills for top five songs and the entire Uber there. That's that that's gotta hurt. Yeah, it's really not a great Uber when you lose a player and then you try and go for don't really achieve anything. Or Electro is going to be ticking down the clock now. They have their own Uber. One minute, ten left on the clock. It's pretty scary. We might see a bit of a sack wave. Yep, everyone's going to be jumping in. Actually, the Uber's going to get used. Eames jumping forward just about doesn't catch out the meta here. So it's going to be people just backing out towards last on the side of top five and suddenly building up their own Uber. 80% now. Nothing too bad. Only poison went down for Aura Electro. So it's not the worst thing ever, and it seems like they do want to commit just a little bit further forward, at least get some info for where 
top five and the Suns are going to be going for Walk is going so fast. dire for uh, for the guys over at top five Suns. They're pushing now with another take with this Uber advantage push, and they really don't want to use their Uber, but they can't really be affording to use the players. But it looks like they're going to be given the point for free now. So. That's a good thing. Now, I really want to see them play a really aggro with the Zebra, and that's exactly what they are doing. They are Uber and Kuno right into spawn. They are, might be getting aims, they actually get aims, but that's everything they're going to do with that Uber. Yeah, it's, it's really, really hard. Like you said, so much is being played around Ubers right now. And Demos, unfortunately, just a little bit too far away. He went straight into spawn. He's going to be getting his own Uber up now. And realistically speaking, if they can somehow free take this, I mean, Warren Everex is still actually dead at this point. If Aura can keep on moving forward before these spawners just might get in and they take the point for free, it might just kind of smell curtains for this round, really, for top five and sons. It's going to be so, so hard. Eames taking this position towards point. Opti getting taken down on the flank. It's such a good start here. And you see top five and sons, they, they feel like they can't really contest this, you know? It looks like they're trying to build up their own Uber as quickly as they physically can. Then they got to go from those dirty trades, send the guy behind it, just kind of hope for the best, really. That's why you can't be doing this. I mean, you kind of have to when you're being pushed by the bot, but that's why you can't really be doing these aggressive pushes into basically the enemy spawn, because then once you start losing players with your Uber, the respawn timer is going to hit you hard in respawn waves. Yeah, it's going to hit you like a brick, and just like this Uber trade right now, looks like it's going well for or Electro, three seconds left on clock. They've got to start getting on point now. Top five says they have no choice, and Eames is perfectly happy to let that happen because that means free damage for him and his soldier brothers. Or Electro is going to command this first round here. So far, it's just been a very clean game for, for the guys in, in the red shirts, you know. I, I still feel like the soldiers are doing so much work for them. Uh, Top five songs doesn't seem to be that coordinated. We just see Opti solo jumping behind, getting cleaned up by scouts, but Poison and Azunas are instantly, you know, they're going in together at the same time. They're just doing so much work. And we see it again on this map. Azunas just jumping behind straight away and then getting straight back into Ombra and actually getting him. Yeah, that's super, super important, but unfortunately, every other frag went the way of top five and sun, so Demo will still be alive. But actually, this flank is going to be directly behind. Oh, so much damage. Demo's just about living on 20 HP. Sorax, a little bit of beef there, and super good dodging from Demo. So actually, they can just keep on pushing now. They can repush all the way onto point. They've got the heals. They've got the Uber just a few seconds' time. They can keep control of this point, get the Uber, and then play in another bit of a commanding situation. you got to give some credits to Nevo as well. I mean, he had like three shots on, on Opti and then basically two shots Sorax as well. But it looks like it's going to be another sack play from top five sounds. But yeah, they're going to be jumping young. in. Oh! Oh, oh, it looked on my screen like, like Demos is dying, but that was actually Poison doing the get down, Mr. President <laughs> movement maneuver. Get down! No, didn't happen at all. Not a force, not really any significant damage toward Demos, so he's going to be keeping a hold of his Uber on Brack now. 80% as they start trying to move forward a little bit. It's going to be 6 versus 6. It does look like top five and sons will have to go for some kind of a trade exact same situation as before might be a case that he just wants to take things a little bit aggressive he was up now and the sticky is taken down whoa that's significant the air shots again coming out onto azunas players getting traded and ubers actually not even ubers getting traded how did that go so disastrously demos once again he just never has to use his uber it, from what i was seeing ombrak just used on kunu and just instantly bailed out of there i don't what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't exactly know what happened, but now Aura is sitting on a point with full Uber advantage again, with the more favorable time on the clock as well. It's looking good for them, you know, taking the first round, and now the second one is still looking in so much favor for them. Yeah, it's looking really, really good. I'm. A, I'll be honest. It is, I'm a little bit worried about our prediction. I think we're being made to look stupid, but Everex is going to try and make us look good as he jumps in, gets this one rocket, and nearly the air shot. So. Forcing off this Uber, he's actually, yeah, just about going to get taken down. And it was basically a four-man sack once again. Ombrax going to be getting his Uber up, and we do see another opportunity to try and start racking down the time on the clock. We kind of need just really everything Top 5 and Sons are doing. It's it's kind of working, but just like eventually. Everything they need to do, they need to do like cleaner. Uh, I really want to see them just using this Uber really aggressive now and then turn it into maybe a forward hold because the clock is not looking very pretty. 
but let's be honest. No, not at all. At least they do manage to pick up Azunas, who did bomb in. A little bit aggressive, trying to force off this Uber, but it seems like once again, Top 5 and Sons, they're so, so committed to trying to take this point for free each time. It does look like it's working now, so Demos is going to be getting his very, very soon, and this is going to be the real trial now for Top 5 and Sons. They need a really, really good trade here. Undoubtedly, All Electra is going to go in, and they're going to try and take some kind of trade, send someone behind, the same kind of things you always do on Viaduct. They absolutely need to make sure that they keep control of this point and keep their players alive. Thinking about it, I've yet to see an aggressive Uber from Top 5 Sons. It always felt like they are either trading, or they get forced, or they're just taking the points for free when they have an advantage. And what you sometimes have to do on product, you really just have to do aggro, but gorgeous. Oh, there's actually Eames hitting insane pipes there. Yeah, didn't even kill the scout though, because it's 2019, he was 185, but it was a nice little display anyway. But, I mean, exactly what I said, top five and sons, they needed a good trade, and it was really good, actually. They managed to take down Eames and not lose a single player when you have those... Everex with the heal! Oh, <laughs> the flank! Demos. Oh, that's so, so good from Everex now. So now there's no heals on Aura Electro. Now they can play just a little bit more chill on the side of top five and sons, play together. We might just see a, a you know, four, five-man sack, whatever, but they need to be aware this Ombra cannot die here. Everyone's flying in directly in the house, and it's just going to be... Oh my... No! Oh, I thought he was going to get out then. I thought it was going to be so easy for him to escape, but no. The five men will eventually get it. They will trade for that one singular medic. But it's kind of all they need, but... I mean, it's not really going to be all that bad. Demos is alive, but he only gets about six seconds of building Uber, and it is only going to amount to about a 16% Uber advantage. About, about 20, let's say. Oh, but see Sniper being... He's now doing yeah. stuff on the sniper. It's definitely going to be interesting to see whether he can find some real success with that. You know, Orlacto, they're just trying to dry push on the point. Oh, the one headshot. That's Kunu hitting it already, being like, all right, boys, this is what you were all missing last time. The flank as well from Opti. Getting some decent damage. So, so weak on the demo. He's picking him up as well. Opti is absolutely playing so well, taking up these all important things. But as always, the clock is the biggest worry. And as a result, you see Kunu, he goes back to spawn. He has to change on the scout. You can't play sniper levels of slow right now. You need to start moving straight towards point. While these hills aren't up, Demo's just only spawning. They need to take point right now. When the clock is so far down for both of them, you have to be very, you know, you have to be cooking cutter. You have to be adapting to what's going on on the battlefield as we speak. But now we are just seeing trades left and right. Poison is going down to Sorex. Sorex on 4 HP getting cleaned up by Eames as well. So it's we see an Uber coming off of Ombrak and Demos is holding on to his own 50%. So after this bit, Demos is going to be on a 60% app and they might just in time be able to build it and do less one push. Yeah, I think quite possibly. They actually just want to start trying to walk up just based on the fact that they have more players. And it looks like top five feel fairly content to give it to them. I'm you know, not sure that's the best idea. Only 16 seconds left on the clock. That clock is ticking down. Demo is just getting his Uber now, and it's going to be so, so hard. Aggressive Ubers is going to be the name of the game. Ombrak goes down instantly. We see War on point, surrounded by Invincible Men. He's not going to be long for this world, and it's just going to be the rest of War Electro just playing nice and patient. Azunis, oh, he does hit the Astro. Not the big one, but the nice crispy little one, so it's not going to be too bad. We do see top five sons trying to get on point. They have a lot of cap time, which actually means they can afford to keep playing this just based on their spawners. But if they delay their spawners by capping... And that's exactly what happens. Oh, that's that's exactly what they don't want to do. You just have to keep getting the overtime in. And now, once they cap the point, Aura is going to get better spawn wave and they're just going to recap and win the round. Yeah, I mean... I feel like you've really got to kind of tickle the edge of that point, not quite fully cap it, just to let it kind of, you know, keep on going through overtime. Because you just have to go against your, you know, uh, yeah. muscle memory of capping a point. You, you, sometimes you just have to do the half. Sometimes. Sometimes it has to be, you know, this slightly weird play. But we are seeing Aura Electro two rounds to zero, looking to maybe secure this in a swift 3-0 and take this series. But... Not if Top 5 and Sons have anything to say about it. So, going into the third possible final mid, we have soldiers jumping all over each other. Rockets being hit all over the shop, but Everex will be the first casualty. The follow-up, though, from Sorex getting a couple. Very nice bombs. Yeah, really crucial picking up on as well. We do have scrappy fights going everywhere. Damage being taken on to Demos. But he's getting that nice little surf, but maybe... Oh, important little meat shot there from Yeeho, and he wants more now. War recognizes it. War's just like, nah, man, I ain't playing this game. I ain't playing this game. So that's going to be a one mid by Aura Electro. That's going to be significant Uber advantage. And maybe it's time to take it down that clock again. 
I really want to see an aggro push right here from Aura. I, I mean, oh, they're just getting jumped by everyone right now, but oh, they end up getting forced. If they didn't get up getting forced, I, I would really want to see a forward hold at least once this game, you know? We haven't seen a single one so far. It, it's just a really back and forth game so far. It, it has been, but ultimately it's been, you know, kind of back and forth, but with Aura keeping control of the point, it's just sometimes the way the Vira goes, you know? You can be fighting wherever on the map, but whoever controls the point really is going to be the one ultimately the getting closer to winning <laughs> or controlling the universe, I'll be honest with you. So, Ombrak, he does have this sizable uber advantage because, like you said, we did get that force on the side of top five. So, War's going to be walking on through 90%. Again, looks like they want to try and take this for free. This time, just before they're getting that uber, they want to kind of min-max this time. They know they can't really afford to wait around forever, so they're going to be walking straight forward on the point. Ombrak does now have his uber. Poison's going to be jumping a little bit, but... Bit of a fake now. He might have actually ran out of ammo, so he's definitely not staying in too long. But Kuni getting picked up by this trap. I don't think it's the same trap again, the one on the rock. I, I didn't even see the trap, really, to be quite honest with you. But it looks like Aura is just going to take this trade in. Very scrappy. You know, it's product. There are going to be people flying left and right when the Uber trades are coming in. But it looks like Aura is going to be coming on top of this exchange and capping out the point. Oh my god, yeah, it's gonna be. I feel like Ehor's really just owning right now. Eames as well, jumping just to get some damage and important poison. poison. Comes in and cleans up Ombrak. Yeah, the follow up. Uh, it was just. Just caps, jumps in, cleans up Ombrak because he was staying in. He saw the opportunity and absolutely took it. And there you go, another 50% out for, for the Aura boys. Yeah, but it's going to be really, really hard. Kunu once again on Sniper. Everex not opting to go on the scout. He's going to be staying on Soldier, maybe. He just thinks it's the best opportunity here. You know, best way to get fast. A headshot ringing out on that Soldier. Not really going to be able to happen. And Sorex again dying. Eames with his, like, 300 IQ sticky traps. They're just absolutely picking these players apart. They do manage to cap on the side of Top 5 and Sons, but really, how much does it mean? This one pup's going to be nice. Ombrak with a little follow-up. It's good stuff, but Eames just crushing alongside Poison and Azunis. They're taking them all down. No one's really alive on the side of Top 5 and Sons. Only just two spawners. We have a full 100% Uber advantage. I mean, it's going to be difficult. We have once again, such a struggle for them. That's a disaster about to happen. When you are running a sniper and you only have one scout, and the, the one scout that you have is going to get picked by a sticky trap, that's... Your medic's basically dead. <laughs> <laughs> You're basically done for. There's nothing you can do. Well, they're going to have to just keep on going forward, regardless of whether Aura has Uber or not. The Aura Uber is going to get used. They did manage to cap this a little bit under them. Eames once again jumping in deep, but he doesn't really want to fully commit. Looks like they want to try and secure some of these frags. Eames did actually get picked off. Even that not full commit was just a little bit too much. Yeeho, though, still con uh, continuing to get one frag after another. So Aura's going to be recapping. Ombra getting pretty close to his own Uber. 55 seconds left on the clock. Kuni's going to be up, though. It, 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 it's still very, very possible for top five and six. It, it really is, but they have to be really smart about the Super, right? Uh, the, the second that they see demos being able to, you know, take it down with the Uber, you know, just jump war and flash them in. And that's exactly what they're doing. They see demos, you know, exposed, and they're just jumping really forward and Ooh. demos going down. Yeah, that's really, really good, actually. These stickies from War. Very, very important. Take it down, this medic. So... Eames jumping in on the pipes. Oh, pipes every Ombrak. time. Every time they're in a good position, they somehow manage to just lose track of these players. They lose Ombrak again, and now it's basically going to be... It's, it's not even going to be equal because of how the spawns work. Demos is already up. He's going to have a 20-plus percent advantage. They're going to have heals to repush. Yeah. Oh, uh, God. That, that was actually the first time I saw Top 5 Suns using their Uber aggressively, and it actually worked, but towards the end of the Uber, it was very, very nice play from me, you know, resetting that. And again, we see Kuno on Sniper, so only one scout on, uh, on the side of Top 5 Suns, and that means that these soldiers are pretty much invited to jump <laughs> Umbrak. <laughs> Just keep on doing it well. I mean, Kuno's taking down Eames, and Sarks is still putting in the work right now. We have managed to get the Sniper towards the position on point, and it's about... I mean, the clock is ticking down at this point. You know, there might be an opportunity. Really, though, I feel like Kunu kind of has to hit something pretty clutch here, something really, really important, but he's just kind of backing up. Demos, he's getting his Uber to 100%, 80% on Ombrak. Ombrak really, really needs to get this Uber now. Any aggressive play that's just about going to catch him will be a little bit disastrous. They kind of can't really let them take over the point either. They need to kind of play these little lines. The body!
body shot missing from Kunu. That might be so, so disastrous. We do see these Ubers getting traded now. They're all over the point. We have a lot of cap time on the side of Aura Electro. FX is going down as well. There's no soldiers on the side of Top 5 and Sons. And it looks like Aura Electro is going to surge forward. They have no interest in capping just yet. We're just about to do it. Poison, once again, hitting two really important rockets. I mean, Ombrek just about doesn't die, but they've got to really kind of keep on moving here. There's really weak health on Sarx as well. They kind of don't have much of a choice, so that body shot on Kunu does open things up. Azuna's not going to be there. They know exactly where the second soldier is. Everex will be jumping in, getting some good damage. Yeah, cleaning up Nevo now. Two frags down. They should be looking to recap this. They should be looking to take this to another round. Absolutely no reason why not. How did that push even work? I mean, sure, they did get the opening pick, but then they just flooded the point, and Aura was just bailing automatically, like they just given up on the point completely for free. Yeah, this is going to be Poison jumping in. We see Azunis as well, he'll be jumping it in, trying to get onto things, but he will be going down in top five and Sons, just securing the round by the time. Yeah, that, that, that round seemed so dominant from Aura, but towards the end, it just stuff and, like sequence that didn't make sense just giving up on the point completely you know playing against sniper very very passively is another thing that you want to avoid especially on product you always want to be in the enemy faces in enemy team's face basically yeah you, you can't let them get comfortable and we are going to see kuni snapping once again azun is trying to get aggressive trying to at least distract him a little bit but He's going to get taken down by Everex. Now Everex is feeling free. He's like, hey, I can jump in deep as well. He's going straight in. Along with Opti, I believe. They're taking down Nevo. The body shot's coming out as well. So this is looking like maybe, maybe Top 5 and Sons have found their stride a little bit. Yeah, even picking up Yeehaw. That's not too bad. I mean, neither of the medics went down, but it is still a pretty decent position here. As long as Sorx can stay with the beam and Kudu can get himself into some nice little sniping positions. But I feel like this is going to be a, an easy repush because they have Opti on a, on a respawn clock still and they are running that sniper. So if Aura decide to do a really aggressive trade right now, then they'll be so good for them. And that's probably exactly what they're about to do now. Oh my lord, both soldiers just land on Kudu, take him down while there's this little trade going on. Everex, so he does pick up poison, makes this just a little bit easier for his team in the post Uber fight, so. That hits an insane air shot on Azunas, makes an Azunas crater as well. Oh, these pipes from war, one, two, goodbye, scouts. That's actually gonna save this for his team. And Sorex has fallen past the mode, he's walking all the way in, one shot, two shot. Takes down Ebzy, oh my god, even picks up poison. Trading with poison. That was a crazy play from Sorex. That's vintage Sorex right there. Linguini himself. Genuine vintage Sorex. Professional kill streak, unusual. <laughs> all, 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 all of the All of those guys. things. All of that and more, but we will just about be spawning still the only scout on his team. Uni still continuing to be sniping here, so maybe a lot more Electro is going to want to try and move forward based off that back, but maybe they haven't been able to kind of work out the sniper too much in the body shot from Kunu. Demos gets taken down. Absolutely no heals again. The complete collapse is going to be on the on but he's just going to use his Uber. He doesn't care. Doesn't really matter. The rest of Aura Electro is going to get taken down one after another. It's only Yeeho here. He's just about behind. Surely someone knows. Yeah, you have to be very mindful about the sniper sidelines when you're playing, especially against Kunu, right? Like, Ku Kunu's also playing, you know, a little oh, bit. Oh, onto Demos again. And onto Demos again. You, How did that even happen? You, you really have to know your sidelines <laughs> when, when you're playing product against a, a sniper that is very notorious for playing sniper. And it looks like Aura is just going to be sucking onto Ombrak and eventually get them as well. So it's going to be pretty equal Ubers on both ends. Well, I mean, it's going to be about an eight second advantage for Demos. Again, the way it works when you don't have the point, you just spawn so, so much quicker. So Demos is going to be getting about a 25% advantage. But I mean... But look at a clock, uh, people. You know, you can you can very easily kind of uh, make that a 0% and it's only 40 but seconds. Demos going down to a sticky trap from war. How is this what happening? Is that? This is a complete polar opposite of what we just saw again. People are going to jump in deep onto Omrak. Does it really matter? No one's tapping the point. The body shots are still ringing out. Omrak's nowhere to be seen. He's all the way gone. He doesn't care. This just looks like a completely clean round from... from That's incredible. Is it literally just going to be three minutes now? I mean, they've been running Sniper for the entire round, and it's just a very unlucky place for for the Aura guys. I mean, their medic has just died like three times in a row to like Sticky Trap or a Sniper Body Shot. You know? Yeah, that's absolutely wild. But I mean, you know, the Electro Repush is on. They know the Ombrak won't have his Uber yet. They're going to be killing two, and they're going to be taking control of this point. So, I mean, okay. 
Right, or Electra have cap. They do have an opportunity to do something, but the Uber Advantage is about to be ready for Ombrak. His spawners are coming in as well, and all they have to do is cap, right? They can jump deep with this Uber. All they need is people off the point. They cap it, GG. Yeah, I mean, there are points of Rocky on a point right now. They know that they can Uber at any point, and that's exactly what they did. They faded out the Soldier Aggression. Kuno getting the mid air headshot on Poison as well. And Demos Except. gets the U Uber, and, but that's not in time, and they pop it off. But Aura Electro seems to be losing two rounds in a row now, so it's this is literally map free and last round. This is yeah. it's whoever, whoever loses this round is out of the tournament. This is so, so important now. Every single second counts. Every frag counts. As the Medic, as Ombrak and Demos right now, the weight of expectation on your shoulders is absolutely huge. You need to be aware of everything. Kulu still sniping. He trusts himself to hit those shots, but Azunis is getting that first frag point of war. pick on Demos. Again, Kulu hitting these incredible shots. He's getting one after another after another. The Ombrak real. still alive. This is well. I mean, Kunu's just been hitting like every shot that he took like the past few rounds. Oh, He's been doing crazy. so much work for his team. It's incredible. I've never seen a situation, right? I've never seen a situation where you're running two soldiers permanently and you're looking at that sniper like, oh, thank God we have one sniper and not scout. That's crazy. He might even get him again. Kunu, what one a... after another. Demos, please, for God's sake, check the sidelines. Let's check the sidelines. Someone will link demos to like a TF2 comp thing. <laughs> Oh my god, we will be getting Azunis in onto Ombrak. Uber will get you, so it's not a complete disaster for the side of Aura Electro. But they're going to be killing every single one of them. Demos! Demos is on crits. Yes, he is, and I love to see that, right? That is a sign of not only desperation, but I mean a real commitment to being like, right, boys, we're going to shake things up. Something's wrong, but we're going to fix it. I don't think that's even desperation. It's just they really need a major change because they lost the two rounds. And... This is literally a decider round, so they need a major change in their gameplay. So definitely, the it's it, it's a pretty smart pick. But War getting a random sticky trap kill again on Eames. They, they just keep getting these picks that make these fights so much easier for them. It's so crazy. Every single time Aura Electro wants to move forward, they're just losing another player and another player. And look at how this crit is being built. It's being built abysmally. Ombrak has his Uber first, for God's sake. This is going to be so, so comfortable. All they need to do is recognize when that crit is up. Recognize, firstly, that there's crits at all. Just use their Uber. Crit does come out. He does shoot his, but he's just not really getting anything at all. Sorax does go down. Uber does get used. Very nearly got a second one there, but it is going to be hopefully nothing too bad really on the side of Top 5 and Sons. Losing this one player, though, it does force them back. They don't have that scout. Body shot still coming out, and War's big old pipe onto Zunis might open up an opportunity for them to repush. Yeah, I mean, top five suns are just looking way too solid for Aura right now. They're just getting picks left and right, but Aura is like, yep, we are not giving up yet. We are still trying to pressure you guys, but eventually they have to fall back. Ooh, has been up basically the entire round as well. Oh my god, Sarx is just going for takes down Eames. He does just about get traded there by Yeeho, but Kunu's still in the position. They're dealing so much damage constantly to these Aura players. It's looking pretty comfortable, but ultimately, I think the spawn is just about not their way. This crit is up now, so there is a bit of an opportunity. On back, only on 70%. It's going to be causing jumping over. Oh, the crit scout! The meat shots are coming out. He takes down one, but is that going to be it? No, but Demos goes down to an incredible bomb from Everex. Oh, it's just... I don't know about this crit. I don't know if it's going to be enough at this point. And now Ombrak has some a full Uber advantage as well, and Kunu is just... He doesn't die. He's not dying. He's not dying. No one's really shooting him. As far as I'm aware of, I don't think I've seen him die this round so far. I don't I don't really get it. He just seems to be able to do whatever he wants. A sticky trap. Now Hombrak's checking himself. He's like, no, 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 no. If we can keep control of this point, if we can take it for free, which it looks like they should be able to, they might just be able to kind of win it just from here. The damage being dealt. Soldiers jumping in. They need to get on Ombrak. They have now forced his Uber. Eames has got taken down. Yeehaw's trying to run away with his medic, and it looks like they will be escaping. Back on Medigun was a decision that Demos has now made. The crits, I mean, it might work sometimes, but at this point, it's going really down to the wire. It's such a judgment call, and he's just decided, look, guys, we can't rely on it. We do now have a 25%-ish Uber advantage. If we can build that, we might be able to do this, but it's 32 seconds on the clock and ticking. This is all or nothing situation for our right oh, now. If this no. push is not going to end up happening, but Sticky Traps, again, War just picking up players before the push has even happened. Picks up both soldiers with a sticky trap and a pipe and then Nevo as well. Demos hasn't even got his Uber. 98% behind the point. Oh, he's in! 
What an easy force, and now it's going to be all about keeping Ombrak alive all the way. It's fine, you can lose war, you can lose off D. Everex doesn't really matter at this point. Four seconds left on the clock. It's actually going to be overtime. By the time that there's even going to be an Uber up on the side of Ombrak, all they need is one singular cap. And we do actually see or Electro delaying the cap a second to get demos up earlier. That's smart move. They made that mistake before. We've seen it before in this game, but... It's going to be working this time. They're going to be playing it smart, but still, they have a full Uber disadvantage. Kuna Vegas. recognizes that this is the last Uber that they need to, you know, you have, they have to have success with them. So he switches the over to Scout. And we see them now pushing over the far left-hand side of this point with the Uber. Not really getting much. Yeah, all they need to do is cap at this point, but actually, they're not really able to do a great deal. Sox goes down, but Everex with the follow-up. Those two frags are going to be Ooh, really, really what clean. an air shot from Poison. Oh, it's Jesus. looking good. Everyone's hitting such crazy shots. Opti takes down demos, so the heals aren't really in the fight. They're just capping me on point, though. Poison, you have to get to point. Yeeho desperately trying to, but that's going to be it. it. Top five and Sons with an incredible comeback. Well, it, it was literally 2-0 for, for the guys over at Hora. <laughs> and then Kunu takes out a sniper, and it's day and night different yeah. for top five. It, it looks like a different team. It, it, it didn't even seem like Kunu is getting forced out of his positions where he was staying or like his sidelines. It, it was like Oras never played against a sniper on Vyadak before. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like all these different angles, like surely, surely Demos has to know better than that. It's crazy, you know, one body shot after another. And, you know, Kunu was hitting some like, you know, big, oppressive, flashy headshots, but it was more he was just hitting those shots that you need to hit, right? Those and important body shots. Angles, it's like, you know, sometimes what you, you just have to hold an angle and, you know, you just have to press the left mouse button at the exact same time as yeah, that someone every now and then. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I you mean, don't have to go for the flashy headshots sometimes. You just have to hit the important shots and that's what wins games. And But that comeback, man, that was yeah. that was absolutely incredible. That was absolutely crazy. But we will be handing it over to the guys over at the analyst desk. What a game, Evoli. What, yep, what a game. What a game. What do you guys think? I know I'm live production, I'm just speechless, okay? I'm speechless. What the hell, boys? What on earth is going on? That was just, oh my God, what a game, boys. What a game. What, what are your emotions after watching a game like that? I mean, in the beginning, it really looked like Aura was gonna, gonna take it. They were really confident and they got two rounds up really quickly. Uh, and in the second round, uh, Kuno brought out the sniper and it didn't really work. Then in the third round, he just started popping off and they mounted the comeback. Yeah, it was like a dying dying man's last wish. Kunu just, he was too out down. They were looking utterly defeated at the beginning of the game as well. Like, the difference was night and day. Aura was just playing king of the hill better than top five Suns was for the first two rounds entirely. And then they decided, well, if you guys play better with your six classes, we're just going to play better with the sniper. And they never really got to Kunu properly to shut him down ever again afterwards. Boys, let's look at the logs. I want to see the mathematical breakdown. I want to see a comeback, you know, breaking down to its formula. Let's see it. All right, guys. I mean, whew, I just want to look at one player, one player only. Where is he? Where is he? He's got to be here somewhere. I can't find him. Kunu. Sitting on 24 kills, 11 deaths. He's not even marked a sniper on this. He's marked a scout, but I feel like that boy was all, always going to be remembered as sniper from this game. I mean, it really did better in the end that he played scout at the beginning because they really only started showing up once the sniper was on the field and it started clicking for everybody how to play around the sniper and that same click to play around the sniper never really happened for our Electro. On top of that, everybody else obviously played incredibly well as on top of that. You see war stats just incredible damage and everybody else cleaning up f uh, for that matter as well really really well done there and that's all you need really well done executed bombs as well by the soldier duo opti and everx on the side of top five suns just catching demos maybe just as much at the beginning at least to keep it close in the first two rounds uh, as kuno did on sniper later on anything else jumping at you alba is it just all about that sniper or i mean like dom tom says everx was popping off as well i noticed yeah, I think in order to mount a good comeback, you need one player to, to do a really big play. Because then you s start to get the momentum back and you get the feeling that we can actually do this. And that's kind of what happened. You, 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 you know, uh, Koff started to pop off and then the rest of the players just 
followed up and started playing well as well. Wow, I think this is going to be one of the rare moments where I want to see the alternative stats. I want to see those little min, uh, mini stats that we don't really get to pay attention to much. Headshots. There's only five on there, but I mean, it felt like a lot more. He did do, he was like a body shot warrior. I bet yeah. Denia would be proud, Albert. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of very important body shots, especially on demos, but also on Eames. You know, getting the, the key players out. Uh, yeah, we also see a lot of air shots, actually, this game. Mm. Anything kind of jumping at you, Dum Tum? I know there's not too much to work. Yeah, I mean, every, no one likes getting body shot, right? At least with a headshot, you know, he at least aimed very precisely. But at the end of the day, those consistent body shots are really important. I think it is good to describe as well. Sometimes you just need to hold the angle and basically be like a long range soldier to spamming a doorway, right? You just need to not have anything go through that door. And suddenly you have so much more map control in your favor with just a single player dedicated to that single area. And sometimes that's making all the difference here. All right. Let's cap off our little uh, things with some medic stats. Now, this is usually where you kind of diagnose the game overall, because medic's such a pivotal role that, you know, little tiny fluctuations in that kind of dictate whether or not the, uh, the entire, how the entire game was paced. And we actually saw a bit of crit screen coming out from Aura Electro there, Albert. You know, are you a fan of switching up to the crit screen when things start going dire? I mean, it was kind of a desperation move, and I, I understand it. Uh, I'm not particularly a fan of Critzkrieg on product, but uh, I mean, they tried. They, they, they were having the momentum against them, and they just tried to get something going for them. And the good crits could definitely have uh, switched the momentum back, uh, but unfortunately, they didn't have much luck in those two crits. You notice the philosophy in like heal targets here, Dum Tum, between the two teams. One prioritizing war with the majority of them, the other prioritizing uh, Yeehaw. Yeah, you could also tell, like, if you take this into account with the stats we've seen beforehand with the damage and kill stats, war obviously leading the charge, also taking uh, high amounts of damage and obviously all the heals for leading the, cha uh, the charge for the team, dealing all the initial damage for everybody else to be able to play off. On Aura, it's more the scout meta coming into fruition, they pump all the heals into Yeehaw, he definitely did perform well given, you know, those expectations, but in the end of the day, it still wasn't quite enough, and I can't even say it's necessarily that, that these two playstyles, like, clash in a way where top five suns comes up on top, because in the end, the biggest difference made was still the sniper. Yeah. Now, boys, I can't help but feel after we put the, lot, these logs away that We've paid a great price for this. I mean, sure, it was a wonderful game to watch. I mean, it got me out of my seat. I mean, I didn't have a seat, but I, I got, it got me out of my seat, and it was really great to watch, but we are going to lose a team for this. We're going to have to say goodbye to Aura Electro, and they're not a bad team by any stroke of the imagination, are they? Yeah, it's surprisingly, like, this is going out as, like, fifth slash sixth place, and somehow, after, like, all the lands they've been to, that's the worst land performance. That's nothing you can really complain about too much. Sure, they might have had great ambitions, but at the end, it just shows how great the competition is here, and they can't be too bitter about it, I think. Albert, how do you feel that top five sons have actually thrown their hat in the ring and think like, yeah, we could actually make a decent go of this? I mean, everyone counted them out from day one, but it goes to show that comeback's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great for them. You know, they had a really str a hard struggle uh, through the invite group, and now getting a really close game and actually mounting a very nice comeback, it's going to get them, make them feel very good and also give them a lot of momentum going into the next game. Yeah, and uh, so we will say goodbye and at least, you know, congrats to uh, Aura Electro for just doing as well and putting on a great show just throughout the entire LAN. But we will say goodbye to the boys and I'm sure we'll see them out in the crowd talking to things. Who knows, we might even get some of them on the panel. But either way, uh, big, uh, I guess, hard luck for them and a big congratulations to Top 5 Sons. They're going to proceed in the lower bracket going into the next round and... Sadly, this is where we put down the lower bracket. We're going to head on over to the upper bracket now because we've got some big names, boys. Very big names. I'm going to just tease you with the details. It's going to be a Cent NA versus Seven. <sighs> it's NA versus EU. It's, a, I guess, a story as old as I-Series. So, <laughs> excited? Excited? Very excited. I think it's the match that everyone is waiting for. You know, see the, the best uh, NA team and arguably the best EU team as well. I mean, proven best EU team. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in a best of three fashion, it's going to be it's going to be a very good game. Yeah. Tom, Tom, excited. Yeah, I think regardless of if Seven wins or not, this will show how much potential they really have to win it all in the end. Seven is a really adaptable team. They will take every opportunity to see what Ascend and A is made of. They played in the group zones. I'm fairly confident they lost 3-1, I think, was the scoreline. So not like a huge role either way. And 
let's see if seven already like did that step that ne is necessary to just draw this gap closer if not then surely you have to take every chance to just learn as much as possible about this na team all right well that sounds like a great tagline to kind of end it there after all those nice little words of how exciting our next game is going to be we're going to get the preparations ready for that to do that though we're going to have to take it to a short break and then we'll be back with our upper bracket grand final ascent na dot uh, well ascent <laughs> dot na versus seven <laughs>
Couple steps back as you hear me start to howl. Take a couple steps back when I lose all control. Watch me turn into a werewolf, and I will hold to the break of dawn. Don't you dare to try to stop me. This is the heart.